Yes, sir. This is Franklin County Sheriff's Department, Kansas. Yes. And one of our cities... Hang on a minute, please. Who's this? Uh, they have a UFO probably east and north, north now, changing light patterns this time. Yeah, well, uh, it's going to be a big light. That's unknown to me. Still probably five hours. stationary object? Uh, no, sir. It's mobile. Okay. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Bye-bye. Deputy Buck, Miami County Sheriff's Department. Yes, sir. we got problems. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, uh, I've got a Franklin County Police Department officer, which is in Wellsville, Kansas. Uh-huh. Okay, they've been tracking that thing. They, we've called FAA for confirmation on radar. Radar can't pick it up, but it's still up there. I've got officers now calling in from my department, uh, confirming that they also see the object. It's located directly, oh, let me see here, give you some mileage maybe. I would say 35 miles southwest of Kansas City. 104. Uh, 
they all exactly here at the it's uh, Disney Brown, sort of like a star, it's much, much brighter. Okay, and that's the one that you were talking about, Mike? Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, I guess I'll walk out over here and see what I see. I think I know what I'm going to see. I've seen it seen that bright star several times, Venus. Uh -huh. I've already seen that several times. I've been out on special assignments, so I know what I'm looking at anyway. Okay, if we find out what this thing is, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, we appreciate it. Thank you. Uh-huh, thank you. Yes, sir, is this the UFO Reporting Center? Yes, sir. The only thing we can come up with in the eastern sky that they've been describing is uh, the morning star, the planet Venus. Hmm. Unless this thing, uh, unless they're looking at something else, it's on the move. Hmm. Well, must be. <laughs> I don't know. As it went to the northern sky, I had no idea. They would contact me back. I said it was, at one time it was hovering and descending, and then it really picked up speed and moved out like it was going towards the Kansas City area. Uh -huh. And then they still said they it was at a high, higher level than what it was, and uh, some uh, real high dissipating clouds. So I don't know. Okay, well, if, this, if, the, if there's a cloud cover of any kind, <clears throat> it can play tricks with them uh, in relation to appearing to move. Mm -hmm. and uh, But that's the only thing that we can get out in that part of the sky unless they've got a true UFO. Yeah. That's the only thing, you know. The only thing I ever read up on, usually you had some type of radar confirmation someplace, which I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. Well, this is true. Of course, there have been cases where they haven't been picked up on radar, but mm -hmm. then in most cases they have. Yeah. I'd but uh, Venus is extremely bright out there this morning. Mm -hmm. well, that's what most everybody has called me, the, just personal people, uh, called in here wanting to know, you know, if we've had any. I said, well, now I looked outside and I said, the, the bright thing that you're seeing there in the east is uh, the probably planet Venus. Right. Uh, now, as far as something else, if it was to the north or south and lower than that, uh, it would be something else. I know about three weeks ago when Venus was getting bright like this, I, the first thing that crossed my mind was a weather balloon. Right. Mm. Well, that fools a lot of people. Because uh, the sun was coming up the horizon. It was early in the morning. I figured, well, the sun's hitting a weather balloon making me think it's something. Right. Okay, well, if we get anything else on it, why, we'll let you know. Okay. Right. Bye. Bye. Uh, yeah, I wanted to call you guys and tell you about some uh, things I saw this morning. Okay, let's hear about it. Okay, I was uh, on my way from Atlanta to Jekyll Island, Georgia. Yes. Okay, I was uh, 20 miles west of Jessup on Highway 341, and it was a quarter of six. Uh, we came around like a little curve and saw uh, what we thought was an airplane. Uh, we noticed it wasn't moving. And we <laughs> began to see more. Saw somewhere between 25 and 30, I'd say. Uh, they looked like they had a wingspan about 40 feet. Uh, there wasn't any fuselage to speak of. Uh, they had three lights across the wing, the top of the wing, uh, from left to right, green, orange, and uh, red. Uh, the wing looked to be two to two and a half feet thick. And we got under them, and they weren't moving, and they weren't making any noise at all. Uh, I didn't have the presence of mind to whip out a camera or anything like that. <laughs> I wanted to tell somebody about it. I called the FAA down here, and they told me uh, about this number. Okay. <clears throat> about what time was that again? It was uh, 545. Okay. Now, were these things hovering directly over the roadway? Yeah, right. They were, uh, there was a group of them, like I say, they were maybe 150 to 200 feet off the, off the road. Right. They weren't in any pattern, you know, they weren't flying in any kind of formation that we could tell. Uh, they were spread out maybe 100 feet uh, side to side and a mile long. Okay. Uh, slowed down to like 10 miles an hour and it scared the hell out of me. At that time, you know, I decided uh, whatever they were, I didn't want to be around them. So I cut out. Did you count how many? Uh, no, I didn't count them, but uh, they, were, they were a good 20. Okay. And I would say they were more than that. They were... Other cars going in the other direction passed us 
two other cars passed us, so I don't know if anybody saw them, you know, anybody else saw them, or would think to report them or anything. Okay, would you say that these objects were metallic? No, there was a... Uh, I couldn't see any uh, metallic deal or anything like that. My brother said the underside of them appeared to be concave. We couldn't tell anything about the finish of them. They, it was still... Uh, it was just getting to be dawn. Uh-huh. About 15 minutes before it actually started getting light. Right. Okay, did you notice any openings in these objects? Any openings? Right. No, not really. Okay. Main thing we saw were the lights and the quantity of them. Okay, and these look just like a, fly, a flying wing. Yeah, they looked. Uh, they looked like a wing without a fuselage. Uh, <laughs> the wing itself looked to be uh, two to two and a half to three feet thick. Uh huh. Uh, as I was looking at them from the road, they were all lined up uh, with the wings facing me as if they had a fuselage, the plane would be headed toward me, in other words, you know. Okay, now each one, all of these objects were over the roadway? Right. In other words, these things were just lined up right in a straight line? No, sir, no, sir. They were over the roadway, but they were on either side of it by up to, say, 25 to 50 feet. Oh, I see. Okay. Rode over. Okay. And they were spaced irregularly. Uh, they were all flying at the same altitude. They were very close together. There was no sound. There was no engine sound. There was no more than 50 to 100 feet above any of them, you know. They right. were no closer or no further than that, right? right? Uh, there was no sound of any engines. Uh, we we thought they were approaching us, and, you know, they seemed to be going awfully slow, so we slowed down just to make sure, and we found out they weren't moving at all. Okay, now you feel that you drove for about a mile yeah, of these things? Yeah, it was a good mile with them, uh, from the first one to the back one, to okay. the last one, whatever. Now, did you have any problems with the car while all this happened? Uh, no, none that I could tell. I slowed down myself, you know, I consciously slowed down. Uh-huh. Okay, did you have any, did you feel any uh, out-of-the-ordinary physical sensations in your body while you were going under these things? No, that's, uh, that's why I didn't stop altogether, you know, I right. didn't feel any. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, there was no, no feeling of vertigo or, uh, a lightness or, you know, no dizziness or any spinning sensation or anything. Yeah, just a creeping fear. Okay. I had a camera in my car. Uh, I'd give anything to be able to go through it again and uh, get out and start taking pictures. But uh, like I say, I didn't have the presence of mind at the time to do it. Okay. And uh, your brother was with you? Yeah. What's his first name? And there was uh, two other cars on the roadway at the time? Uh one car passed us as we were still under the uh, object, for lack of a better word. Uh, a passenger car passed us, and then a moving van-type truck passed us when we were, say, a quarter of a mile out from under the last one. Okay, now were they coming from the other direction? Yes, yeah, right. They okay. were headed forward. Okay. And where did you receive our number? Uh, I called, well, I came to the airport here at Jekyll Island, uh -huh. and I saw a number inside. There was no one here, and they had a number inside for the FAA for weather and flight plans, I guess. So I called him and uh, gave him a brief rundown on it, and he immediately told me of you. He said he'd just gotten a pamphlet or something about you guys. Okay. Yes, did I call you? Well, we sure appreciate this report, and... Uh... We'll check this out right away, and if we come up with any other information, why, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, I'd sure appreciate it. Uh, anything you can let me know about it, because it's really, really got me aroused, you know. Okay, if we send you a questionnaire, would you fill it in for us? Definitely. It's, uh, it's a very detailed, extensive deal for our computer, and we'd sure appreciate it. Definitely. I think my brother would be glad to also, and you compare the two. Okay, and... Uh, if we need additional information, can we feel free to call you? Yes, sir, any time. Any time after Sunday when I'll be back home. After Sunday? Yeah, right. I'm on vacation right now. Oh.
Okay, and thanks again. Thank you very much. Right. Bye. Well, reporting center. I have a collect call for anyone from the FAA, St. Simons Island, Georgia. Will you accept charges? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Hey, uh, I, I just had a, I found a call from down at Jekyll Island. Reported a, a group of, uh, what, he didn't know what it was. Uh-huh. Called up here, and I gave him y'all's number. Fine. And, uh... He'd, he's already called and talked to you. I don't know if he talked to you or what. Yes, he did. Okay, great. Uh-huh. Uh, listen, I, I just found out uh, something I didn't know when I when I talked to him. There There is a uh, an activity going on from uh, one of the military bases up in uh, South Carolina uh-huh. called the Solid Shield Operation. And uh, what it is is, uh, is just a, a whole maneuver of uh, activity. And I thought maybe I'd just, you know, pass that on to you all so that uh, uh, maybe, you'd, you know, so you'd be aware of it. Right. Very good. Okay. Uh, thank you, sir. All right, and that encompasses pretty much of uh, the area here down in Florida for uh, low-level uh, helicopters, and uh, it's just a massive uh, maneuver for the military has. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. Great. Thanks. Where are y'all located at, anyway? Washington. Washington. Mm-hmm. Well, I wondered where that 206 deal was. Uh, we got some information in y'all's number here a while back and some literature on some stuff. And yes, sir. I just thought I'd call you all. Uh, back about a month ago, we had some stuff reported, and then again tonight, we had some stuff reported. It's uh, what it is. It's a light of some kind. I don't know what it is, but it's out in Wagner's pasture. And it'd be west of Lake Kim, uh-huh. north of the river. And it's we've had reports on it anywhere from all five to ten miles know the other side of the lake the gatekeeper reported it uh oh i'd say 10 or 12 times back last month and then uh grand jury foreman called in a little bit ago and he saw it on his way in from the lake and i don't know uh, what it is or whether y'all are interested in that type of thing or not oh, very much so yes but i never have been able to catch it out there i've the uh, gatekeeper has called me a couple of times, and I've run out, but I hadn't been able to get out there that far in the country. Was this a large light? Yeah, it's uh, part of the time they say the light is a uh, pretty good size, and then it, it'll just go down. And one time said it looked like that it moved on off to the north a little ways and just gradually went down. But most of the time they say it'll just sit there and glow a while and then just go down. I see. So I don't know, you know, some kind of reflection or something, but I don't know what it is. Okay, sir, do you have, uh, could we get any names and telephone numbers? <clears throat> of people reporting it? Yes, sir. Okay. Just a minute. The man that saw it tonight, name is... Okay. And that way you can talk to the people that's been reporting it. Okay, is this Lake Kenna State Park by any chance? No, it's uh, it's under the Wichita Falls Water Authority. I see. And it's they put in for a state park, but they never have been able to get it. Okay. Can we get your name again, sir? And what county was that with? Baylor. B A Y L O R. Okay. Seymour, Texas. S E Y M O U R. Well, sir, we sure appreciate this. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. This is the UFO Reporting Center in Washington. Yeah. We understand that you saw something in the sky on the 13th. Yeah, I did. I wonder if we could get a description of that. Well, I was just out the lake cabin. I just stepped out of my cabin and was going to lock up, and the family was in the car. And they, they called my attention to it. And they all seen it. And it was just, uh, oh, I'd call it an orange ball. Which, uh, it was getting, it wasn't too far above the ground when I seen it already. But I would call it an orange ball, and it was kind of, I didn't have a lot of time to look at it, but it kind of looked like it might have been on fire or smoke behind it. My, I got an 11-year-old, he thought he'd seen something fall off it. Uh-huh. And so the reason I reported it, I thought it was, a, I never had seen an airplane come down in flight, but I just thought it was an airplane. It would be dropping at about the same descent of an airplane. It wasn't like a star or anything. It wasn't anything fast. Yes. And... Um, Oh, I would have to, I don't know, it's hard to tell at night like that. I would estimate it to be at least five miles from us, maybe more than that. But, 
I don't know how high it was because we just stepped out of our cabin. I don't know how high it was to start with, but when we got out, of course, or when they called my attention to it, well, it was quite a bit lower, you know. And yes. it, but it seemed like it was just falling at the rate of a something like you would something like like an airplane would fall out of the sky. And that's why I reported because I was afraid maybe somebody was down the airplane. I'm not much to believe in UFOs and all that, and I just figured there was an airplane down. Okay, well, by what time did you see that? I believe it was, I believe they said it was about five minutes to ten. Okay. I called the courthouse. If I remember right, I think I was... Okay. Now, in your opinion, was, was this a large object? Oh, yeah. It would, uh... Oh, how would you describe it? I'd say it was about half the size of the moon. Okay. You know, bar, you know, when you look up in the air and see the moon or the something. The full moon? moon, yeah. Yeah, okay. Just from a distance. I mean, it, it looked big. Yeah, it was a big... It was plenty bright. Definitely had to have been something. What it was, I don't know. Was it bright enough to illuminate the sky around it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, oh, it wasn't real. I can't say that it was bright enough to illuminate the sky just to a whole lot around it either because it's more to, more to concentrated in that one area. I see. Okay. Was this coming straight down? Yeah, I would say pretty much straight down. Okay. Kind of, could look like a sonic glide, you know. Uh-huh. And did that color change at all in the time that you watched it? Just a minute, Garrett, go pick up all the phone. Did the, what did you say, did the color what? Did the color change during the time that you were observing it? No, I'd say it, was, it just looked like a, I don't believe it changed much. Gary Don, my 11-year-old, he thought they'd seen smoke behind it and such uh -huh. and that, but I'd say it was just a fire color falling from, or orangey falling all the way out. Okay. How were the sky conditions that night? Mm, clear, I believe. Okay. Sky was... Because there were stars out. Yeah, there were stars out. Because, you know, looking around, I mean, there just was no... I've seen a lot of falling stars and all that. There's no... Nothing like a star at all. And, of course, the star is pretty fast going down. This thing, I mean, it, it, you had enough time to look at it. Okay, did you hear any sound of any kind? No. Okay. And how many witnesses uh, saw that? Well, I would have been... Uh, the old enough to talk about it. I've got a seven-year-old, a eleven-year-old, and my wife and myself. Okay. I had two younger kids, but they're three, three and four years old. So okay. They... Did the eleven-year-old see it right from the beginning? Yeah, Tina, didn't you? Huh? You seen that? One? That's this man's wanting to know about what we seen out the lake. Yeah. Tell, you tell him what it looked like to you. I don't know. Look at the black star first. Uh huh. Did you see, did you, you thought you seen smoke behind it, didn't you, Gary Don? Yeah. I, okay. I couldn't, I think I might have, but I couldn't be swear to it. Okay. And this thing just, did it just go out of sight over the, over the, uh, the hills, or how did it appear to disappear? Uh, it just finally dropped, it looked like it dropped to the ground, you know. Uh-huh. That's why I figured, I was just sure it was an airplane myself. I thought it would have had to be but. Okay. You thought you saw something fall off it too, didn't you? I thought, but I wasn't for sure. Neither did you need to cut that thing in better, though? My, my wife said the same thing, bright ball. Just a bright ball, okay. They said there's been something like I reported on this area before, hasn't there? Yes, uh-huh. I just figured it was an airplane, you know. But it definitely, it just couldn't have been a star or unless it was but I don't know how it could have been a reflection because we stood in one place and it just disappeared from one place. Right. It definitely looked like fire to me. I don't know. But, uh... All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate your giving us this time, and if we uh, come up with any more information on this, well, we'll get back to you and let you know. No, okay, my divine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Yes, sir. This is a UFO reporting center in Washington. Uh-huh. And we understand that you saw a strange light uh, in the sky near uh, Lake Kemp some time ago. Oh, yeah, it's been some time ago, yeah. Uh, how far back was that? Do you remember? Oh, I guess it's back, uh, oh, it's been six or eight months ago or longer. Okay. I wonder if you, we could get a description of that. Well, it kind of looked like a star. We uh, watched it out here for quite a while. And then uh, about 10 o'clock... At night, the thing just took off. Uh huh. Back to the west. It looked like a star. I thought it was a star for a long time. And uh, and then it uh, it just it, the thing just 
Well, it's kind of a north west of a uh, of a cabin here, you know. Yes. And then it just uh, all of a sudden took off. Just from a stationary position? Yeah. Been there for two or three hours, you know. I kept telling my daughter she was here. She said, no, nah, it's not a star. I said, star, you know. And I really thought it was till about 10 o'clock. It, it, I'd call a friend of mine come out here and look at it, you know. And the thing just took off and went to the west, disappeared. Okay, now, you were looking to the northwest at the time? Yeah. Okay. Looked like it, it just, uh, I, I was sure it was a star, you know. Right. Till the thing just took off, you know. Okay, about what time uh, did you first spot that, do you remember? Oh, it just takes dark, I don't know. Okay. It's been around 8 o'clock, 7, 8 o'clock, I don't know, that time. But it was, it was warm, you know, it wasn't cold. Right. And it just, uh, we've watched quite a bit since, never have seen nothing else. Another reported on the lake, saw it on the lake, you know. Yes. But uh, I was sure it was dark till the thing took off, whatever it was. Okay, was this a white object? Uh, kind of a reddish flash and kind of uh, white. And they said they could be flashing light time on it, you know. Uh-huh. I never could. I just thought it was kind of an orange. It was kind of an orange glow, you know. Okay. And do you feel that this was uh, quite far away? Oh, uh, I'd say it probably looked like about five miles or so, you know. Okay. It's up pretty hard. Well, what too high. It didn't seem to be too high, you know. But it's, uh... But I never have seen it since. I've been watching for it, you know. Right. But okay. I haven't seen nothing else. Now, when you called that other party to come to look at it, did that object take off before the it's, party? It's about time they got here. They started leaving. I see. Okay. It went over the rise, you know. It just, uh, just, uh, it was all stationary there for two hours or so, you know. Right. And, uh, and then just all of Sudden it took off. It didn't take it very long. It went out of sight, you know. Okay. Out of, over the horizon. And you you very don't. Very nice, you know. Right. Now, you don't remember what month that was? No, I sure don't. I never thought much about it. I'd call a sheriff at that time, you know, and told him. Yes. To watch for it. But I never did hear nothing out of him. But, uh, I, 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 I was sure it was a star until the thing just left, you know. Right. Seriously. And it didn't take it all. Not very long, it was gone over the right. Okay. All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate your talking to us about this. If I ever see anything else, I owe you to call the sheriff here and let him. You know, I think he's seeing things, you know. Right. But uh, I used to call him and let him check with it if I see anything else. That's what I used to do, you know. But okay. I haven't seen it then. Okay. Thank you very much. Center. Yes, sir. This is uh, FAA calling from uh, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Yes, sir. Uh, we had a uh, gentleman call about 8.35 this evening to report uh, a low-level craft about tree level. And uh, what he thought he saw was like a ball of fire. He said, and also associated with it was a loud whine. And uh, there seemed to be something from the, uh, like an exhaust, like a jettison booster. Yes. And he said as it moved uh, from east to west, it was at just about treetop level. And we had the police check it out, and they thought possibly it was a low-flying aircraft may have crashed, you know, because uh -huh. of the red redness of the uh, uh, the booster effect, I guess. Right. Uh, I have the uh, the gentleman that uh, his name and his telephone number now, if you want to call him. Yes, sir, we would. Okay, now the gentleman reporting it, his name is... Thank you very much. Okay, sir. We're reporting, sir. Uh, this is Harrisburg, Pennsylvania calling. Yes. My name is, I'm a police officer here in uh, Susquehanna Township. Yes, sir. I understand that you want uh, any reporting of flying saucers or anything similar to that. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, what information do you want? Oh. We, we got a, we got a uh, report and a drawing from a young boy of seven years old and also the father of what is similar to a, you know, a flying saucer. Yes. Okay, we'd like to have their name and address, or phone number. Okay, their phone number is... Uh, and what time was that? That was at 8.35 p.m. of the Eastern Standard Time. 8.35, okay. All right, sir, we'll get in contact with them. Okay, do you want their name? Okay. All right, the man's name is 
All right, sir. We sure appreciate this. We'll contact them and see what they got. Right. Well, I'm I'm at the house right now. We we thought maybe it was a, a plane down or something like that. But what they're describing is you know big ball of fire and that stuff, and and then they come up with a photograph. Uh, it's similar to a flying saucer, you uh-huh. know what we've read and you know seen about. And uh, FAA said to more or less get a hold of you. Okay. Well, I tell you what we'll do. Uh, we'll call back. Uh, is that phone clear now? Will yeah, as be... soon as I hang up, I'll, uh, I'm at their house right now. Okay, then we'll give them a call back. Good enough, sir. Thank you very much. What was the name of this uh, place, sir? UFO uh, Reporting Center. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. This is the UFO Reporting Center calling. Right. I wonder if we could get a description of what happened there tonight. Okay, at approximately 8.35. Uh-huh. Hang on. Somebody might talk to you. At approximately 8.35, my wife and son heard a whining noise going over the top of our house, heading in an east-west direction. Uh Uh-huh. And it was following a new expressway that we were having built across our area. Now, uh, my wife only heard the whining. I was in the house, and my son started hollering and calling for me, so I ran out approximately 300 feet down the driveway onto a main road where there are no trees to obstruct the view. Yes. I saw a ball of red fire with a tail, a trail, like a vapor trail in a jet, only red, like there was red residue coming out of it. Uh-huh. Uh, it was heading due west. It was not dropping or gaining altitude, and uh, it was not wavering left or right. North or south? Yes. Okay. Uh, I thought it could have been a booster or perhaps a uh, plane in trouble, but my wife said that uh, she heard this whining noise, but she was under the trees and didn't get a look at it. And all I saw was the ball going forward. But now my son said that uh, it was right above the treetops, and he saw it. And I said, well, what kind of airplane was it? He says it wasn't an airplane. It was a ship. Now, he uh, said, okay, well, if you think that's what it was, you go in the house and draw a picture of it yourself. So he did, and then through his explanation to me of his picture, he's seven and a half years old. Uh-huh. I drew what would be starting off with a circle, a total ball, putting a, uh, a nose cone on the one end of it and three jet engines on the other end of it. Then you would have uh, one foot pod, kind of like the uh, space shuttles and stuff that land in the sand. Yes. A uh, foot pod in the back and two foot pods on the front, uh, about a third of the way back from the, uh, on the nose cone. Okay. He said that underneath, between the three foot pods, there was a purple light. On each one? No, uh, between the three Oh, between the three, okay. Okay, now, there was a red exhaust of some type coming out of it. And uh, the top of the ball, in the top center, had like a window in it. Because it was right above, it went right above him. And it uh, just traveled straight on out over our land across the main road, across Hack, which is a community college, and then out across the river. It was traveling about the speed of the normal passenger jet because we have lived in a flight path before and I have been in Civil Air Patrol. Yes. I thought it was a booster because of that, but uh, it just kept right on going straight instead of falling. He said that uh, since it was treetop high or slightly above, that it looked like it was as big as a car, which uh, I would say 15 or 20 feet long. Yes. So uh, I asked him to go in and draw what he wanted and what he had seen, and I made my own sketches from his for the policeman here. I immediately, when I got in the house, uh, talked to my wife, found out all the information I could gather, and called the flight tower at our nearest airport in case there was a a uh, plane down because, I mean, a burning plane or something like that, a child can uh, see things. Right. 
But they said there is no such uh, animal in our area, and there have been no flight class paths planned over our area. Okay. So, now, when when you watched the object, did you watch it until it disappeared in the yeah. distance? Yes. Okay. It totally disappeared in the distance. It was going slow. It wasn't going like uh, one of the fighter jets. It was going the speed of one of the uh, passenger jets. Okay. And it took about a minute to a minute and a half to disappear out in the uh, horizon due west. Uh -huh. We have a mountain range to go over, and it, uh, the trail just kept right on going right out over the mountain range. Okay. Is Handy? Uh, that, that is... Hold on. I'll get him here. Hang on. Hello? Hi. How are you tonight? Good. Let's hear you uh, saw something in the sky. Yes. Okay. Uh, right from the beginning, when you first saw it or heard about it, would you describe exactly everything that you can? Um, it was flying over the treetops, and I went to go get my dad. He came. We ran up the driveway. Uh huh. Um, he went. We went to the other side of the road. It looked like it went down, but it didn't. It was going straight, and like flame was coming off the back of it. Uh-huh. And, um, I can't explain what it looked like. You'll have to get my dad to do that. But... Yeah, he did. Okay, did you hear the sounds that your mom and dad heard? Uh, yeah. Okay. And everything that you have uh, described to your dad and how it was made and constructed, that was just about it? Yes. Okay. Have you ever seen one of these before? No. Okay. Can I talk to your daddy again? Okay. Hello. Yes, sir. Are you? Yes. Okay. And the, how little, the little fellow, is, he's seven and a half, and approximately five to six months ago, he was used by the police in another township in uh, identifying a person who was molesting children. Uh -huh. He had identified the car, the color, and uh, described the person driving. And they said that uh, it corresponded with everything that was told by other people and parents. So as far as his description goes, if it weren't for something like that, you know, I would have just discounted it and left to go, but since he has been, even in school and uh, out at home, uh, fairly reliable as far as this visual contact. Right. And I didn't see anything except a red ball, like the rear end of a rocket or a booster, and it just kept disappearing directly away from me. Right. If it had fallen, you know, I figured it's uh, something that uh, was wrecked. Something blew up. What? It had an awful loud whine, she says, like a turbine. Okay. Did that was the whine steady or did it fluctuate? Was it steady or did it fluctuate? Totally steady. Okay. Very good. Okay, Mister. We have a an extensive questionnaire which is keyed to our data bank program. Mm -hmm. I wonder if you and uh, your son and wife could get together and fill one of these in for us. Definitely. Okay, beautiful. Oh, and I'm supposed to tell you that he's an A student in art. Uh, whatever he draws is usually what it looks like. Okay, then this is what makes him a good observer. Right. Right. That's a rarity with people. Uh-huh. Okay, sir, is there anything else you'd like to add to that? No, no, there isn't. Uh, I simply had heard that the... Federal Aeronautics Board is finally releasing the word that there is reports on uh, things that they cannot count other than UFO. Uh huh. Now, uh, they have been holding it back. Is there any information available that the uh, public could get on these kind of reports? Okay. There are two organizations in this country that put out excellent publications. Uh -huh. Would you like me to send you their name and address? Yes, I would, along okay. with the questionnaire. Okay, very good. And then there is also one foreign publication, which is a um, very professional slick magazine, which also is an excellent mm -hmm. publication, which comes out in Great Britain. I'll include that also. All right. 
No, we've never, I've never had any contact with this. I mean, I've seen jets so low that I could uh, see the man, his helmet, and uh, see him waving to me. Right. Okay, a little, a little fella told my wife that it was so low, you know, treetop high. Okay. And he thought it was going to land down in the woods, which is the uh, Hasbrook Area Community College. But it just, when he ran for me and I ran outside, it was just continuing straight. And it just, the vapor trail just barely made it over the top of the mountain. Okay. Very good. All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate your taking time to talk to us, and we'll get that information in the mail right away. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Yes, sir. I'm calling for the UFO Reporting Center in Washington. Oh, yes. And we had an unnamed caller uh, left a message at our office today regarding uh, something that you were supposed to have seen several days ago. Uh, where are you calling from? Seattle, Washington. Oh, no, that was my son left you that. I see. Uh, no, that was, I didn't see it myself. This happened about a block away from where I live. About 15 school children saw it, and the teacher. Oh, I see. And uh, one of the school children was my daughter. That's how it came to mind. Boy, it was a wonderful sighting. Jeez. The thing hung there for five minutes, and all the kids just stared at it. Uh, do you want me to tell you about it? Or yes, sir. We'd like to hear all about it. Well, there's a little canyon behind I, You know where Anthony this is? No, sir. No, well, uh, I do by the map. That's about 20 or 30 miles north of San Diego. Okay. Right along the ocean. And my children go to a school called Ocean Knoll, and there's a small canyon behind the right behind the school. And uh, at 8.30, they saw this thing go down in that canyon. Now, whether it ever landed there or just hovered down in there, I don't know. And uh, they were trying to climb. There was a fence around the play yard, of course, and they couldn't get out of the play yard, but they were trying to climb the fence so they could look down in the canyon, but they couldn't see it. And then an hour later, at 9.30, this thing came up out of the canyon. And just hovered right at eye level where they could look right in the windows and everything. See the people inside. Jesus. <laughs> uh, and it just it just hovered there for about five minutes. And uh, and finally it raised up and it came over and it circled the, the schoolyard. And uh, with all the kids looking at it. And then it, they say it disappeared just by going right straight up in the air until it disappeared out of sight. Now the strange thing about this whole thing they run in and tell their teacher what they saw, and the teacher says, just forget it. Forget you saw anything. And uh, I can't understand that mentality. I, I, it just baffles me. Even, and the teacher that stood there and saw it with him told the kids to forget they saw anything. Right. Well, we run into this. You run into that all the Yes. It just it, it didn't, it baffles me and enrages me at the same time that they, they would tell my, you know, to see a UFO is one of the sights to see in this century. One of the great sights, if you're lucky enough to see one. And there my daughter saw one and told and told to forget about it. Right. Now, how old was your daughter? She's 10. 10. Okay. She's 10. That's a good observing age. Yeah, and there was a girl that had a pair of binoculars. just hadn't had a pair. They were going to watch birds or something. And she watched this thing through her binoculars. And we went over to the house to see her. And because the teacher, well, we didn't see her at the house. She wasn't there. But my wife saw her later that day in a store. And she went, oh, she said, tell us about the UFO. And she said, oh, I didn't see anything. We didn't see anything. And the girl was probably the best that saw the thing, best of all of them, you know, uh -huh. but turned off by the teacher's attitude. And another little boy that was all excited about it and everything, like, he, his reaction was the same thing. Oh, that wasn't nothing. But at the time, my daughter was telling me he was all excited and he knew what a UFO was and everything, but that they turned him off on it. Did you run into that all the time? Oh, yes. Oh, sure. Uh, now, do you remember the exact date on that? Yeah, it was uh, Friday a week ago in the morning. Uh, I'd have to get a calendar to tell that you. That would be a week ago last Friday? This last Friday. That's okay, then that would probably be May 6th. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. Now, these, the, you know, the real story is to get these kids together and get them, with it, let them tell you what they saw, but... It was, uh, oh, we did talk to some other kids that that uh, saw it. There was about five kids in one family, and they were all excited about it. And uh, and 
I tried to collaborate what everyone said, you know, about right. didn't make any noise and didn't make any noise. But they, one boy insisted it didn't make any noise, but my daughter says it did make a noise, like a slight roar, you know. Uh -huh. But they all agreed on the color, and they all agreed that it had windows in the side. They all agreed that you could look in and see people uh, inside. I say people, and they said that they, the one boy said they looked like they had masks over their faces. And my little girl said they looked like their faces were all rough like. Uh -huh. Funny observation, huh? Yeah. But they, they generally agreed where it was and what it did and how it disappeared. They all agreed on that, you know. It just it circled over the schoolyard and just went right on straight up in the air and they never saw it again. Now this is a UFO, this is no helicopter or an airplane because my little girl has seen thousands of them, you know. Did she, she couldn't possibly have. Okay, now what kind of description did you give of this vehicle? Silver. Silver? Silver. And she said, D Daddy looked just like a plate. It was flat on the bottom and round on the top. Uh -huh. So you know, the traditional saucer thing, you know? Right. And, uh, and it had, and they, they made another observation there, that as it caught the light of the sun, uh, certain parts of it would just flash brilliantly. Now, whether that was just the, the, they seem to think it was a reflection from the sun on some reflectors that were on the object itself, you know. Right. But it flashed brilliantly, and it had lights on it. Yellow, blue lights on it that blinked. And that object actually came up over the schoolyard? Came up, yeah. But the best observation was when it came out of this little canyon behind. Now I went down in that canyon. I, I'm disabled right now, and I'm on crutches, and I couldn't really get around very good down there. And it, uh, we covered about maybe one fourth of the canyon the next the next two days, trying to see if we could see anything down there, you know. But uh, I, it's so bushy and and hard to get around there. I, I really couldn't go over it right. Uh, it take uh, an able-bodied, you know, two or three able-bodied men could go over that in an hour. Right. Because yeah. right. it's just a small can, just a little thing. Okay. Did your daughter make any drawings or sketches? Yeah, she did make me a little drawing. Yeah. Yeah. I asked her to draw me in. We had her. I guess she still got it. I don't know. It was around here. What was her first name? Her first name is... Okay. And how many witnesses or kids do you think there were? I in think that? there were at least 15 kids. And the teacher? And the teacher, I know her name. Uh, but I've forgotten it right now. Okay. Anyway. But, you know, I, I called the San Diego paper. They had no interest in it at all. I called Channel 8, which is the local TV, and they had no interest in it at all. I, I thought society, I was disappointed. I thought society, society was more sophisticated at this time on that sort of thing. But they, they're hung up on their old fears, I guess. They, they always did, you know, something you don't understand. Forget it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is uh, very interesting in as much as we had a... Um somewhat similar incident happened near Downey on the first Monday, or the second, Monday the second of May. Up in Downey, yeah. Right, uh... Exactly on, the heart of the city. Yeah, right. The object came down right over the schoolyard, right in the middle of recess. It did. Well, the same thing happened here, yeah. yeah. And how was that described? Just as a very bright silver object. Uh, they couldn't make out any real uh, structural uh, parts on the object uh -huh. of the brilliant light and uh, of course the in this particular case the students they got quite panic stricken and ran into the school and uh, by the time they looked back out again the thing had gone but what day it, was that was that anywhere near the friday that uh, it was may 2nd monday may 2nd so that was in the same week wasn't right, it right right that's interesting but the, the, they didn't have the same situation there where the teacher no. told the kids not to, or maybe they were older. Not to my kids. knowledge. Not to my knowledge. I talked to the one of the girls' fathers, and uh, <clears throat> he had uh, pretty well quizzed his daughter regarding the incident, and uh, he was going to uh, get in contact with other parents whose children were involved and see if they couldn't correlate all the information. Was that a, were they older? What, what grade were they? Was uh, this they is, yeah, grade school. Grade elementary. school, elementary, huh? Right. Oh, this, yeah, this is elementary, too, yeah. Up to sixth grade, I Fact, guess. I think his daughter was about seven and a half. Oh. Something like that. And uh, how how many people saw it? How many children saw it? I don't remember the group, but it was a pretty large group of kids. She's only five days away, huh? 
They saw it on Monday, and then this thing we was seen again on that same Friday. What in the world it would do? What would it be doing down in that canyon for an hour? I had a. Do you have any idea? Well, of course, going in down in the canyons like that is quite common for these vehicles. But what is really important is the fact that uh, it, the incident occurred during daylight hours, which is very rare. Yeah. Oh, was the other one in the evening or something? No, that was 11 o'clock in the morning. I'll be darned. Uh, but, uh, somehow, they must have had some business in there. They were collecting soil samples. Well, so they were doing something like that or getting out of the way of radar. Or getting out of the way of radar, huh? Right. Oh, yeah. oh. And down there, they, my daughter remembers that it was exactly an hour because she saw it go down, and she remembered they come out for recess at 9.30 again. Uh -huh. And then when it come up out of the canyon, she happened to see and she, the kids all stood there with their mouth hanging open. <laughs> okay, if we got a question here off to you, could you kind of uh, work with your daughter to fill that in? Yeah, I'd like to. Also, if we could get uh, <clears throat> some investigators in there, would you kind of operate as the hub? I would to get be, them started? I would be glad to cooperate with anybody. I, it just infuriates me that they, they're they going to just, uh, you know, uh, ignore the whole thing. Where it, did your son finally get our number? I gave it to him. Oh, I see. Uh, I called the sheriff's department and they gave me your number. Oh, great. But since I don't have so much, I don't have very much money right now, I, uh, I didn't call because I found out I was out of town. I just couldn't afford it. So. <laughs> Uh, he has more money. He said, give me a number, I'll call it. So he did. <laughs> That's how that happened. But if you want to send anybody around, I'd be glad to cooperate and show them where it is in the canyon. And, Was uh, there any estimated distance uh, between the uh, witnesses and the object? I uh, I estimate that. I don't think it could have been over 100 foot. They were right on top of the thing, staring right into it. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, it you know, the average flight, as you know, the average flying saucer or UFO sighting is uh, we saw two objects fly at approximately 5,000 feet going northwest or something. You know? Right. Well, they're valueless. They're, this was a wonderful sighting. The ground level, and, and, and they're going to just ignore it. I can't believe it. And well, we'll get somebody in there to dig that out. I wish you would. I, I don't have the time, or I can't do it because I'm disabled, but I, I would cooperate. I'd love to cooperate with you. Well, we sure appreciate that very much. Okay. And thank you again for talking to me. Are, are you? Are, is this the is this the hub where the UFO information is sent in? Or is that... Well, it's a national center, but uh, we're a private uh, scientific organization working on this subject. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Right. Oh. It's not in any way associated with the government. Oh, so it's all by public. Uh, I mean, uh, so uh, it's a self-funded organization. Self-funded organization. Right. Yeah. Good. All right. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'll send somebody around. We'll dig that story out. I'd like to do that. Thank you very much. You bet. Bye. Bye-bye. You have a report in center? Yeah. Where am I calling? Washington. Washington? Yeah, this is uh, in Muscatine, Iowa. Yes. And uh, uh, I'd called the Moline Airport uh, with a tower to ask about a bit of radar contact yes. south of Muscatine. I don't know. It's maybe my imagination, but it seemed like there's something unusual in this guy. I've been watching it for about 20 minutes. You know. Okay, would you like to describe it? Yeah, it's just, um, first I just noticed like a pulsating, you know, light. Yes. Off in the distance, but oh, I thought it was a star, and I started watching it. It seems to be rising in the in the sky, and, I, you know, I get the impression of erratic movement very fast, you know. Occasionally with a kind of a pulsation, you know, almost a colored red sort of pulsation. Yes. Either like a light going around, or more than one light. And then the... Uh, the, the erratic movement, it's not circular as such, it, it seems like an eccentric circle, uh -huh. you know? And that's all I can tell you. But, uh, when I called up there, I told him I thought it was southeast of Muscatine, but I checked, checked where the north, Muscatine lays funny on the Mississippi River, and so I'm, the directions are confusing here because of the streets, and I checked the north star, and it's due south of Muscatine, okay. but I have no idea how far I'm not, or altitude, I'm not familiar with that sort of thing. This is remaining relatively in the same section of the sky? Right, and just seems to be, you know, rising. I, I was thinking maybe a, you know, a satellite that, whose rotation about the Earth must be very close to the, you know, the Earth's rotation. Uh -huh. It's moving very, very slow, but still it seems to have this other erratic movement to it as, if, as it's rising, you know. I mean, as it's, and when I say rising, I don't know if I'm describing that very well. Right, okay. Now, you said it was multicolored? Well, I, I you know, I just... You stare at it long enough, and you see about anything, I guess. But it right. seems like it seems like that the, you know I get the impression of some red, you know.
know, a case as if something's coming around red, you know, one of the Right, you know? okay. But, you know, like, at first I thought maybe a helicopter just hoovering, you know, but it's staying, uh, I don't know, it seems too high for that. And then I thought about this satellite thing, because once in a while I'll, well, I'll see a satellite out if I'm uh -huh. sitting on evening, you know. But it's not moving across the sky like a satellite, like the ones I normally see or have seen. Right. Do. You know? Okay, what time did you first spot that? minutes to 12 here, so it must have been about okay. 25 till. I've been watching it for about 15 minutes, and then I got curious about it, I guess, all right, call him. Okay. The guy up there said, oh, he had a, a down run. He could go 40 miles southeast of Muskie with his radar, and the only thing he had was one plane 20 miles north of Muskie. Nothing on the screen below that, so, or southeast, so it's probably nothing. Here. Okay. Can we have your name, sir? Yeah, it's Dr. I'm still there, you know, I just left before I uh -huh. called you. All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this, and we're going to check it out, see if we can't come up with some answers, and if we find out anything, we'll get back to you and let you know. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye. More reporting, sir? Yes, this is Collect from Newman Police Department in California. Can yes, ma'am. Thank you. Go ahead. How you doing? Yes, sir. This is Officer Newman PD. Yes, sir. In California. Uh-huh. And, uh, well, I was just talking to my partner. Okay, I, I think uh, we were on patrol, you know, back here. It's about 3 in the morning. Right. And uh, we noticed lights to our east, and it was uh, just hovering over a field about 500 feet. And we were about 60 feet away, and uh, we had to go around the block. And by the time we came around the block, it started moving. And, uh, you know, it just, it just dis disappeared. Okay. And then that's all you could see was the lights? That's it. It had uh, two red lights and one blue light. It was in a triangular type shape. I see. And uh, it took off at speed that you can't believe. We, we chased it, and it, it just vanished before we could even run another corner. And uh, I spent 20 years in service, 14 in the Air Force, and never seen it move so fast in my life. Okay. It's unbelievable. We were reading your reports, and I said, well, maybe we ought to report it. I don't know. But it, uh, I've never believed in this until now. <laughs> Because this thing was just, it just fascinates me to no end. Okay, now, was, were these lights absolutely stationary? Yeah, it was absolutely stationary. My partner, uh, the one on the other line, he said that, uh, he said, hey, what's that red and blue light up there? And I said, oh, somebody must have put up a new antenna. Let's go check it out. And it was just actually this, on the street that I live on. And we went, oh, what is that, about 50, 60 feet? Yeah. And uh, it started moving. And I thought, hey, that damn thing's moving. And we took off around the corner. And as we rounded the corner, we seen it go and... We went to Super, for well, maybe about two miles, mm -hmm. and it, it just plain disappeared. And it was absolutely no sound. It, it was just fantastic. Uh -huh. So I said, well, maybe we better report it. They'll think we're nuts, but we'll report it anyway. <laughs> okay. What time did you spot that? At about 2, let's see, we left the side of the office at 2, uh, about 2.20, about, about 2 I'd say, yeah. Okay. And it headed uh, southeast uh, out of uh, our area. Okay. We're in the San Joaquin Valley. Okay, I'd like to get to uh, your names. Okay. We even shut off the headlights of our units because I told him, I said, stop some lights, I want to take a look at it. And it, it was just, it, it's just like some speed that I just can't describe. It was just unbelievable. And this thing was on the move when you saw it actually disappear? Uh, when it disappeared, it was stopped when we saw it. It was, right. Right. It was hanging there about five, 600 feet up. Right. And uh, like I said, we thought somebody was erected a new antenna. And uh, then as we came around uh, well, off of Amy Drive onto uh, uh, Hilda Street. Eucalyptus? Yeah, onto, well, onto Hod. Is it Hod that goes in there? What's the one that goes across the engine? Uh, that's uh, Driscoll. Driscoll, yeah. Uh, I told you, hey, that damn thing's starting to move. And we rounded, which is just a very short distance, maybe 50, 60 feet around the corner there. And as we rounded the corner, Eucalyptus, it took off, and uh, we went after it. And, and I like, told, told my partner to get a douse of lights because I want to see it. And it, it just disappeared to the southeast like you wouldn't believe. It's okay. Fascinating. Do you have any estimate as to how far apart those lights were uh, positioned? Well, just from where we were looking at it, we were looking at it from, from the Amy Drive, I'd say about 20, 30 feet. Yeah. And it was triangular shape type thing. Uh-huh. Okay. 
Now, the PG&E Power Company is right behind it, right where it was at. There's a great big field where it was hanging over, and then just at the end of that field is a PG&E Power Company. So I thought maybe they'd rig a new beacon up there for the aircraft from a little field here. But uh, so there was absolutely no sound. We had, the windows were open. We just dropped the sides, and there was absolutely no sound at all. And man, that son of a bitch just took off like... I can't believe it. Okay, now, would that be a power plant, generating plant? Yeah, right. Okay, great. I'm glad you mentioned that. That's okay, did you have any... The controls are power this whole area, don't it? Yeah. pg and site there. Uh-huh. Did you have any problems with your vehicle or radio during that period? Uh... <laughs> That was so damn fascinating. I didn't even notice the radio. Did you? I didn't either. I just couldn't take my eyes off this thing. Okay. Wait a minute. The dispatch is something. What would you say, babe? I think it was 220. Right after we dropped Sergeant Kennedy. What were you saying about this? It was before that. Wait, we weren't coming through? Anyway, my dispatcher says we ran a check uh, just about that same time or shortly after, and uh, we had it repeated. She couldn't copy it here, but I don't know. It was just, I was just so fascinated in this thing. I want to chase it, but hell, <laughs> no way. Okay. Now, is that within the city of Modesto? No, it's uh, it's the city of Newman. Newman, okay. 20, 27 miles south of Modesto. Okay. Southwest of Modesto. Okay. We're right off of I-5. Okay, gentlemen, well, we sure appreciate you reporting this. And okay. We'll uh, check this out, and if we come up with any additional information on it, we'll, uh, we'll get back to you and let you know. Yeah, we went out to our, we had a little small runway out here, and uh, we went out there, and I told you, let me check, make sure somebody's flying around. But we would have heard noise, of course. Like I say, this thing was, was definitely stopped. There's no two ways about it. And uh, it's all the years I spent in the service, and it was anything to move like it, so. Did it leave uh, any trail or anything uh, when, she, when it went away? Uh, not that I noticed. Uh, I was just so damn anxious to get my partner to get going so I could you know, get a good look at it, but uh, it, it just disappeared so fast. It's unbelievable. Right, okay. Okay, uh, thank you again. Okay, thank you, sir. Right. I uh, live in Hazelhurst, Georgia. Yes, sir. I was just talking to Alma Flight Service. I'm a private pilot. I was not flying last night, but I was in my backyard and I saw something a little strange that uh, I called them and asked them if they had any information on it. So they referred me to your number. Okay, I'd like to hear about it. Uh, I live, as I say, I live in Hazelhurst, Georgia, and I was in my backyard. I looked almost due north from Hazelhurst. Yes. There was a vertical takeoff object of some kind, went straight up to its altitude, and I've been trying to estimate a little closer to the altitude, 20 to 30,000 feet. It went high enough that it looked like it left a jet vapor trail when it hor- went horizontally south. But it, going vertically, it left a trail of smoke like a solid fuel device. Yes. And it was a round, lengthwise object. Now, it flew south, uh, kind of west of where I live, uh, and left a vapor trail going right on out of sight. But it went absolutely vertical on its vertical takeoff. Now, I was guessing that it's something like 30 or 35 miles north of Hazelhurst up in the Vidalia or a little west of Vidalia area, Georgia. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, now. You know what it is? No, sir, we haven't had any other reports on it. Did this object have a defined shape of any kind? Well, it looked like a a long cylinder-like, and it appeared to have wings on it, small wings, uh, like supersonic, you know, swept back wings. Yes. Again, I looked at it strictly with my eye, uh, and... uh, that's why I was trying to judge the distance and height. Of course, I don't know what size it was, so it's hard to tell what distance it was. But it was high enough it was leaving a nice vapor trail uh, as it went south. And did you watch it until it disappeared from view? Mm-hmm. Okay. What time did you spot that? This was around 7.30, quarter of 8, uh, Eastern, St- Eastern Daylight Time. Okay. This is in the PM, 19.30 to 19.45 hours. Okay. And did this, uh, when this object started to, uh, now you say it made a vertical takeoff. Yeah, absolutely vertical to its altitude and then turned, you know, leveled off and, and went south. Okay, now when it uh, turned and leveled off, was this a sharp turn? I wouldn't say I watched that part of it too carefully. I watched it on its vertical takeoff and then I kind of did something else and looked back up and it turns, you know, and gone south. Now, this is a few seconds in there, you know, almost. Right, okay. It appeared to make a sharp turn. Okay, now, as it went south, did it maintain a straight flight path? 
looked like a level, straight flight path. Okay. Now, do you have any estimate of size? Can you compare it with anything? Uh, not really. That's what I was trying to do before I called you. Uh, we have a flight instructor that works with us here at Soundlock, uh -huh. and he and I were just discussing it, trying to, to judge from you know things I could explain to him what it what it might be. If I had to guess offhand, I'd say it was. Uh, and it's purely a guess now. I'd say it was, uh, you know, it's got to be a pretty good size uh, uh, equivalent to a 727 or something like that, or a little smaller. Okay. Do you... Now, the wings weren't that big, though. Uh-huh. Very small swept wings, it appeared to be. Now, that's, again, uh, not a very good analysis. Okay. Can you give me any estimate of the distance from you? Well, the distance from takeoff, I would guess at 30 miles. Okay. Now, the, the vertical altitude to which it climbed, uh, I'm guessing at 25,000 feet. Uh-huh. That's purely a guess. And then it went it went kind of southwest, which is a little west of me, due, you know, I started to say due south, but it uh, was probably a little bit uh, southwest. Right, okay. Did it you... looked like it went on into Florida to me. Okay, did you pick up any sound at all? No. Okay. Never did notice any sound. That was a curious thing about it. Right, okay. And were you alone at the time, sir? No. My wife saw the same thing, and uh, one of the neighbors, a little boy, was outside, and I said, hey, have your dad come out and take a look at this. And he came out and saw it as the vapor trail was going south. And still vapor, I mean, still smoke vertically. Okay, now how long did that the smoke or vapor trail remain in the sky? About how long? I don't know. I'm trying to think now. Oh, this, uh, the vertical trail faded out, I'd say, in four or five minutes. The uh, vapor trail behind the object uh, was gone in a couple of minutes okay. as it faded out. Okay. Wouldn't that be very, very unusual at that altitude for any type of jet vapor trail? Well, I don't know. Walter and I just talking about it. You can get jet vapor trails from, from uh, 15,000 up. Uh, depending upon the uh, temperature up there. Depending right? on a lot of factors. Right. Okay. Now, again, I first was guessing it's a little higher than that, but the fact that I could see the object with a naked eye gave me the indication it was lower than I first judged. Yes. So I'm, I'm taking hindsight here. Okay, how are the sky conditions? Clear. Clear, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, sir, where did you get our number again? From the Flight Service Center in Alma, Georgia. Okay. I'm a private pilot was the reason I called them and see if they had anything on it. Right. But a mister with the flight uh, FAA in Douglas, Georgia, or oh. Flight Service Center in Douglas, uh, Alma, Georgia. Okay. Well, sir, we sure appreciate this again, and uh, we'll check it out. And if we come up with any more information on this, well, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. Well, I didn't think I was reporting an unidentified object when I first uh, asked them about it, but then after I told them what I'd seen, they asked me to call you. Right. You're in Washington? Yes, sir. Okay. Certainly enjoyed talking to you, and I, as I say, I'm kind of curious about what this is. By the way, there's one other factor I ought to mention to you that when I mentioned this to someone who's a flight instructor, he said that he'd seen look what looked like a silo off up in that area, or a, you know, he thought it was something probably government. Uh huh. And said he'd never seen anything, you know, come out of it, but uh, just spotted it on the ground. It looks looked uh, strange to him. Now, he'd never flown directly over it. I've got here if you want to ask him about that. Okay. All right. Um, when uh, Mr. First told me about this, immediately I associated it with something that looks uh, like a silo in flying toward Macon, Georgia, from Hazelhurst. Uh -huh. Now, I'm not sure it's a government installation, but uh, from the air, and I've never seen it from the ground. Right. From the air, it looks like an area that's uh, enclosed in a pretty heavy chain-link fence. And in the center of it looked like some type of silo. So I, uh, when he mentioned it, I first uh, thought of that. I thought maybe they were testing something in, in that area. Yes. So that's about all I can link to this thing. Okay. Well, I, didn't, I didn't see the object. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate that bit of information. Uh-huh. 
All right, sir. Well, thank you again, and uh, thanks for again. And if we get anything on this, we'll get back to you and let you know. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite interesting. We'd certainly like to know what it was. Right. Thank you a lot, here. Thank you. Bye. And I'm in um, uh, Boonville, Indiana. Yes, ma'am. And um, uh, several friends of mine and I were talking on the CB radio on sideband. Yes. And we heard something very strange, and we were wondering if you could help us out with it. Um, we heard transmissions um, by a lady talking, and she was talking from a mother ship. And she was talking to Starship 1 through 6 and telling them of their estimated time of arrival. And then she realized that the channel was being monitored by someone else and told them to go to the um, communications channel. Uh, do you know of any um, activity in this area? No, ma'am. <laughs> what time did you pick that up? Uh, 1.15 uh, through uh, 210. Hmm. And that's all there was? They, when, then they broke off and they didn't have any more? Well, it, um, it was um, broken up. The conversation was broken up through this period of time. Uh-huh. And um, she was talking to Starship One. And um, I couldn't hear the other side of the conversation. And uh, she told them that their estimated time of arrival would be at one thirty. And then she spoke to Starship 5, and then Starship 6, and told them that their estimated time of arrival would be at 2.30. Okay, which channel were you on at the time? Um, on the upper side of 16, on sideband. Okay. And uh, another party that we were talking to had gone up on uh, sideband on 22, and heard the conversation up there, and told them, uh, she said something about going down to another channel. Okay. Did you hear of anyone else discussing this? Um, anyone else on the radio talk? Right. Uh-huh. Who had oh, picked it up? Yeah, there's um, five or six of us that were talking to one another, and we heard this conversation in the background, uh-huh. and we all kind of stood by, you know, and listened to it. And at one time, uh, shortly after 2 o'clock, uh, we heard someone saying something about their position was three miles above Evansville. Now, uh, you've been talking, have you talked on CB quite a bit? Yes, we've been talking for over a year. Okay, now, did that sound like it might be a CB transmission? Um, yes, in a way it did, because she used um, uh, AM lingo. She said 10-4 Starship... Um, Four. Uh-huh. And um, that's the only time that I heard that um, particular lingo when she was talking. Okay. Did she? Could you hear anyone answering her? Uh, one time, uh, Starship Four returned the call, and it was a male voice. Uh-huh. But I did, I did, I couldn't hear what he was saying. I just thought it was a male voice. Okay. Okay. Where did you get her number? Um, I got it from the airport, um, um, the tower in Evansville. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, if we get any other information on this, why, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. We'll, we'll check uh, on some of the official uh, agencies and see if they've picked up anything, and if we come up with anything, we'll get back to you. Okay. Now, one of the positions of the, um, the fellows that were talking on the radio one of the positions is in Kentucky, about uh, two miles um, south of the Ohio River. Uh-huh. And um, one of the positions of another boy was uh, in Tennyson, Indiana, which is about 16 miles northeast of where I am. And uh, another one is um, kind of southwest from me, a few miles. And um, uh, the four, uh, fifth one was up in... Um, up on Folsomville Road, which is um, uh, just north of Boonville. Um, I'd say he was maybe, oh, three or four miles out of town. I'm not sure how far it is, but two of them have beams. Now, I have a ground plane on my radio. Uh-huh. 
and I could hear the transmission very clearly. I didn't pick up much, um, um, uh, th there wasn't uh, too much, you know, power. Yes. But the transmission was uh, clear enough where I could understand it. Now, two of them have a set of beams, and one boy had his beams turned to the north, and he was north of where I am. And the other person uh, is kind of southwest from me, and he had his beams turned another direction. And um, both of them could hear the transmission clear also. And it's uh, kind of unusual, you know, if you have your beams turned two different directions, that you could pick up the same tr uh, transmission. Would this be an indication it could have been coming from the sky? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, if we get any more on it, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. So Thank, Thank you again. Hello, I'm calling from Crescent City, California. Yes, sir. Um, I have a very close friend uh, that Saturday night. What do you, I mean, how do you go about doing this? This is really strange. Okay. Uh, did you see something? No, a close friend of mine did, and it's a friend that's very, would not lie to me, you know. Okay, then just, just give us a description just as she explained it. Um, well, Saturday night, my friend was driving down this road about 11 o'clock at night. And uh, he saw these two green lights going across the sky. You know, the set looked like they're about a quarter of a mile high or so. Uh -huh. He thought it was an airplane, you know. And uh, they turned directly in front of him and came towards him. He came above his car. And his entire car came off the ground about five feet. And uh, went down the road like this. It said it went, it went straight, you know. And... Uh, like he looked down, he was about five feet off the ground. Like he stepped on the gas, you know, like, and the car just revved up, you know, uh -huh. like it was off the ground. And he went like this for about 200 yards. And then it just sat him down just as carefully as he picked him up. And he stopped and he looked up, you know, and, and there was nothing there. And this guy's not on drugs or anything. He's not, he wasn't drinking, he wasn't doing anything. He was just heading home. Okay, now do you know what time that happened? It's 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, okay. And that was Saturday night? Okay, what road was he driving on? It's a call. What's that road? Lake Road. Lake Road. Lake Road Road. Lake Road. Okay. Where is this anyway that I'm calling? Uh, Seattle. Is there uh, a party there? No, or, it's not here. Oh. I don't know. He sent it. Doesn't think anybody's listening. Huh. Well, is there any chance of getting his name? Was really shaking and shaking up. Came in the house, he was white, kind of crying. How old is he? Okay. Is he 20? He's 20. Okay. Now, does he live in the same place you live? No, he lives well, in Crescent City. He doesn't know what that is. You want me to have him call you, Dr. Yeah, we would really like to get a uh, rundown on this. Um, have you ever had anything like this before? Cars coming off of the highways isn't a common thing, but we have had reports before. In fact, it's, uh, I think within the last three years, we've probably had more reports of this than when, in uh, the you know, previous ten. someone I know and have known and trust, it, it sounds really weird. You know? uh -huh. I really know this guy well, and he's not, he's not lying. <laughs> it's just, and all he saw was those lights? Yeah, that's all he could see was two green lights, he said. And it came right above the car. <laughs> so we're feeling, so it just kind of went numb, you know. <laughs> uh huh. Well, we sure like to talk to him. The the uh, data that he can give us in describing that experience is uh, very essential in our uh, research program. And if there's any way to talk him into calling us, well, we'd sure appreciate it. I'll give him this number and he can call you. Yeah, he can call collect if you you know if he's uh, really flurry about it. Okay, where did where did you get our number originally? At the sheriff's department here. Okay. I, I'm pretty interested in these things. I thought I'd find out what's going on. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, well, his case is uh, rare, but uh, the fact that there was anti-gravity day involved there, we'd really like to talk to the man. And there's uh, no problem of ridicule, and all names are held strictly confidential. Yeah. What do you mean, like, you guys are... You on here 24 hours a day? Right. Get lots of calls. Well, not really. Things have been real quiet. 
That's me. I, I'd love to do something like that. Because I really, uh, really interesting. Yeah. Okay, I'll have him call you, though. Thank you very much. Right. Bye. Reporting Center. Hello, this is... Yes. Go ahead. Hello? Yes. Hello, I got... Uh, here, with me. We got two phones here. Oh, okay, fine. Okay, we'd like to hear about your experience. Yeah, okay. Starting right from the beginning. Okay, Saturday night, I was driving down by Fort Dick, and I saw these two green lights up in the sky, uh -huh. and I thought it was an airplane, and they're quite a ways away. And anyway, it was going across the sky, and it started coming right toward me, and got about, oh, 150 feet above me. And then my body went in them, and my car came about five feet off the ground. I was going about 60, and I guess I was in the air for about 200 feet. And it set me back down. I stopped the car and got out and looked, and there was nothing there. Okay, now, <clears throat> could you see, actually feel yourself being elevated? Yeah. I, I looked out of the window, and I could tell I was off the ground. Already. Okay, now, was this a sudden thing? Did it go? your car go straight up, or did it climb at an angle? It gra gradually went up. Uh-huh. It'll let you down the same way? Yeah, really smooth. Okay, now how about the car itself? Uh, how did it affect that, the engine and the lights and so forth? Not a thing. You say your body became numb before yeah. the car elevated? Yeah. Just like I couldn't do nothing, you know. Oh, you were totally paralyzed? Well, I guess, yeah. Probably scared. <laughs> okay, how, how about temperature? I don't know. I was too scared to notice anything. Yet. But I, I was really numb. And all you could see were these two lights in the sky? Yeah. Now, did they stop over you? Well, they kept going, you know, right along with my car. Okay, but what I mean is, were they directly overhead? Yeah. Okay, now, when these lights move, do they appear as though they were attached to something? I couldn't tell. That, that's all I saw was the lights. Uh-huh. Were they fairly low when they came over you? About 150 feet or so. Okay, did you pick up any sound from them at all? <clears throat> and about what time did that happen? Uh, uh, probably a little after 11 o'clock at night. Okay, and about how long did this whole thing last? Uh, 15 or 20 seconds. Okay. What kind of car were you driving? Uh, Barracuda. Okay, and, and what highway were you on? Uh, or roadway? Was, uh, Lake Earl Drive. Okay. Is that a secondary highway or a uh, dirt well, road? Yeah. It's, it's about, um, it was about a mile from Fort Dick, coming, Fort. Out, of, coming out of Crescent City, going to Fort Dick. Fort okay. It's a small town about seven miles out of Crescent City. Okay. It's about a mile from there, going toward, no, coming back from Fort Dick, toward Crescent City. Okay. In other words, you were moving, you were going north? Yeah. Okay. How about the size of these lights? Can you compare them with anything for size or estimate the diameter in feet? Let's see. They're at least a couple feet wide. Okay. Now that color green, do you have any idea what shade that was? It was it was a really light green, kind of a kind of a forest color. Okay. Did that uh did the light from those two lights, did they did they illuminate the ground or the area around or inside of your car? Everything remained just about as dark as it was before they were in the area? Okay. <clears throat> Have you had any problem with your car since then? Every time I started up and stopped at a stop sign, it died. Okay. How about your radio? Does that operate okay? Yeah. And you didn't feel any temperature change in the air? Okay. 
sure. If we're able to get somebody in there uh, to talk to you about this, uh, would that be permissible? Yeah. Are you a student by any chance? No, I'm out of school. Okay. I work till 4 o'clock every day. Every okay. Wednesday. Have you talked to anyone else who saw these lights in the area? Uh, I was the only one on the road. Okay, is that usually a uh, fairly quiet roadway at night? Yeah. But I was wondering, could you put something like in the paper here to ask if anybody had seen anything strange that night, you know? Could you do that? Sure, we, we have a... Sure, I'd we can like do, to do that. I'd yeah. Okay, is there anything else that you could add to that that I haven't uh, asked you about? No, that's about it. Okay. Have any problem with the tires since then? No. <clears throat> now, when you were up in the air, how high did you feel that uh, the thing had elevated you? Uh, at least five feet. Okay. And there wasn't, is it, was there anything else strange that occurred in that area at the time that you can remember? No, like I say, I was pretty scared, so yeah. I didn't pay much attention. Okay, now, be, <clears throat> another thing, before you saw those lights, was there anything strange or unusual that occurred, or did you hear or see anything strange? No, not until it started coming toward me. Okay. Like I say, I thought it was an airplane. Uh-huh. And it was moving, you know. An airplane wouldn't move like that. Like it was going across the sky and it just cut straight across toward me. Now it was cutting across the sky. I mean, it was going across the sky in front of you? Yeah, at a right angle and it just cut straight toward me. Okay, when it made that turn, was it fairly sharp? Yeah, real sharp. Okay. And then when that's, it... That's just about when my body went down when they did that. Uh-huh. And there was no no illumination in the car at all? Uh-huh. Okay. Well, now, when those lights were coming down the highway at you, about what altitude were they? Maybe 300 feet. Okay. And of course, if they uh, were, st if they stayed above you at all times while you were elevated. Yeah. Well, then that meant they just about had to come to a stop, didn't they? Or did you slow well, down at all? I, see, I was going about sixty, and they, you know, yeah. like when, when I was up in the air, I was still going that fast. Oh, then you don't, you feel that you did not slow down at all? No, I didn't. Okay. And this one, you ele when they elevated you, that was fairly abrupt? Well, <clears throat> yeah, it, it was. Okay, now when they let you down, could you actually feel it, the tires hitting the surface again? Yeah, I went out there and it, it left black marks on the road. Okay. Yeah. And then you didn't have any further problems from that point on until the time you got uh, back to your place? No. Okay. Okay, if we need uh, to uh, ask any more questions, could we feel free to call you back? Yeah. Sure. Okay, well, we'll check into this, and we sure appreciate your calling. Yeah, sure. And if we come up, then, up with any uh, more information on it, why, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. Thanks again. Okay, bye. Bye. We had a sighting over here. There's something strange. Okay, I care about it. Uh, well, it looks like a big red fireball. Uh-huh. Uh, shaped like a saucer. And, uh, we're on the, we're on Lake Erie. Out in Lake City. Yes. And, uh, well, there's a couple cottages. Another person, another cottage saw it. We have our own cottage. We saw it. And all of a sudden, it just hovered, then it took off, and it's out of sight. Okay, what time did you spot that? What time was it? Yeah, wait a minute. That had to be about, uh, no, about 8.30. Okay. Now, was this object uh, stationary when you first spotted it? Yeah. Well, when they saw it, it was moving out over the lake, and uh, when we looked out, we saw it. It was 
like it was standing still, and all of a sudden, why, it just got smaller and smaller in the dot, and it was gone. Okay, which direction did it move? Uh, north. North, okay. Can you give us any estimate on size and altitude and distance from you? Well, that had to be so far off, given distance of the water up in the air. That's all we could. Uh-huh. So it was about 20 miles off the lake that we Okay. Or 10 miles anyway or something like that. That's hard to say how and, far up. And this have a, had a defined shape like a disc? That's right. And uh, the color again? color was like a fiery red. Okay. Can, now, can you make an estimate of size by comparing it with something? Can you make a comparison by size? No. You had any other calls on this, by the way? No, sir, not yet. Okay. Uh, like Like a water tower sitting on the top of a saucer, in other words. Okay. Like a round bowl sitting on a saucer. That feels like yeah, I could describe it. Okay. Now, when this object moved away, did it move out in a straight uh, flight pattern, or was there any motions and maneuvers involved? No, sir. It just took off straight out and uh, not below the water or anything like that. No. Uh huh. Just right straight, and she just disappeared like somebody's visit. Okay. And then about 10 minutes later, when there's planes flying over. Okay, what type of aircraft? Did you recognize those? No, they were too high up. Okay. They had to be touched. Okay. How many witnesses there? Six. Six, okay. Now, four in one cottage and two in another one. Okay. And where did you get our number, sir? Where? From the airport. Airport, okay. Got the number. All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate your uh, reporting this, and we're going to check it out, and if we come up with any information on it, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, I wish you would. I'd like to know what the hell it was. Thank you very much. All right. More reporting, sir. Uh, yes, I'd like to report a sighting in the Bay Area. Um, uh, it, it took place uh, near Mount Tamalpais. And, okay, we were uh, looking out our window. Now, we were in a five-story building in Berkeley, and we were looking out our window and happened to notice these four or five luminous objects um, above the mountain, and they were hanging suspended for a few minutes. We thought maybe they were balloons or something. Uh, then they started moving south along the hills. About halfway between our vision it was uh, uh, Mount Sam on one side and the Golden Gate Bridge on the other, and they were about halfway between those two uh, points. And they started moving down the side of the mountain. I mean, they were in the air between our line of vision and the mountain. They yeah. came down the side of the mountain, and there's Angel Island that is about the same in the vicinity. They came down close to the water, went around Angel Island, and went into the, to the bay. You yeah. saw them enter the water? You saw them enter the water through binoculars. Okay. Now, did these objects have any defined shape? Uh, the thing was, they had a luminescence, like they were around, or, yeah. and and uh, but it looked like the main center was was luminescent. That there was a there was a, 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 a an un uh, uh, radiant area around each side. Like, for example, it was like a, a sphere of luminescence in the middle with a. a a, a little um, protrusion on either side that wasn't uh, glowing. It was like a dark area. I see. Okay. And uh, there, like I say, there were at least, I think we were uh, four or five, but there were at least four. And uh, they spread out. It seemed to me that, the, that there was one slightly larger, and then there were other uh, smaller ones. And the largest one was the one that went down first to, to Angel Island, and the other ones were still like uh, going, uh, following the contour of the hill until they uh, they the valley, and, they, and then the, the the main one, the one we were watching first, the one we noticed first, went down into the bay, and the others seemed to follow down into the same area behind Angel Island. So, in other words, we saw one go into the bay, and the other ones went out of our, our line of sight. Okay, now let's get back to that big one. Uh, any estimate of size on that? Well, it's hard to tell, except that I, I would say at least 30 feet, 30 to 50 feet at least. Okay, and it was circular? Yeah, it was round 
Yeah, it was it was circular, but there, like I say, there were gray areas on either side right. uh, that that were not shiny. I mean, it didn't reflect light or something, and it didn't look like it was sunlight being reflected. It looked more like uh, uh, the glowing, uh, the, the bodies themselves were glowing, which is what struck us as unusual in the first place. Okay. These planes, you know, they reflect the sunlight, you know. Right. Yeah, in fact, we're, my friend says he's looking at a plane now in the same area, and it, it's not reflecting sunlight at all. I mean, these, these objects were very bright. Uh, it was unusual. I mean, I've never seen anything quite like this. Okay, now, uh, how big were the small ones? Any estimate on that? Oh, uh, just slightly smaller. I would say uh, uh, half as, uh, a little larger than half as big as the main body. Okay, now, did you actually see these when they were coming in? Uh, no, we just saw the main one first. Then we saw it was like other ones uh, appeared from behind. See, like the other side of the hill of the mountains there right. is, is Pacific Ocean. Right. And we saw the other ones uh, later. Like we saw the main one first, then the other ones came up from behind the mountain. And uh, like I say, I think there were there were possibly five, but at least four altogether. Okay. Now you were looking due west at the time. Due west. That's right. Okay. And these objects were coming west to east. Uh, west to east, and then there, when they were, I'd say, a few hundred feet above the top of the ridge, there's like a ridge across there, they, right. they, they started heading south a little ways, following the top of the ridge, and then went down between us and the, and the ridge. We could see them going down, okay. following the, the phase. Okay, now, were they flying in any kind of formation? Um, when, they, when we saw them all together, for a brief period, they were all together before they started going down the side of the mountain. They were in line, like, uh, for, I guess it would be formation, yeah. They were, like, the main one, and there were two on each side of the main one. Okay. Now, what time did you spot those? What time was it? Let's see, what time is it now? Uh, 3.22 now, I was, it's about... It was about 15, uh, 18 minutes ago, about 3 o'clock, 2 or 3 minutes after 3. Okay. These things didn't do any radical maneuvering or motions, did they? No, not, not anything other than that. They're obviously moving under their own power. They, they weren't going very fast, but they're, I mean, they, they weren't balloons, you know. It's like they were, if they were balloons, they probably would have just kept, continued drifting upwards and, and with the wind, but these were coming down and the other two seemed to go down the other side right and the main one like I say came between us and Angel Island and then went into the water okay when that thing hit the water did it create quite a bit of disturbance uh, this, hang on a second hey Michael uh, you you saw him when it went into the water did it create any disturbance no no but he says he could see the light reflected under, from underneath the water Okay, now, did anyone see the others go in? Or no, they no, uh, they just disappeared behind the Angel Island. Behind the island, okay. In fact, is that one of them right there? Can you see, look, 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 is that thing on the hill there? Is that, it's the top, of, look at the top of that, that uh, house over there. See there? Take, look through the binoculars. Look through the binoculars, look at see see the peak of that house? See there? See that light? I don't know. Okay, no, uh, they they're just they're gone now. I guess that uh, Nobody saw anything come back up out of the water though. Right? No, uh uh, no. Okay. Now what in your estimation would be the uh, entire duration of the observation? At least fifteen to eighteen minutes. Okay. And just the two witnesses? Yes, uh-huh. Okay. And where did you get our number? Um, we got it from the Coast Guard. Coast Guard, okay. You didn't hear any sound while this was going on, did you? Too oh, far no, away? uh-uh, no, no. It was, I mean, we're way across the bay. Right. There was any yeah. sound by, uh, you know... About the sky the conditions there. Clear, absolutely. Just sunny. Slight, slight haze, you know, but, but, um... Uh, Absolutely clear, blue sky. Okay, did uh, at any time did you see the sunlight actually reflecting off of these things? Um, 
They had sort of a flashing quality to the luminescence. Like, yeah. it might have been sunlight reflecting off an extremely bright, polished surface. But like I say, there was another gray uh, kind of surface that was not reflecting sunlight or was not giving off any light at all. Okay. And do they maintain that same color and same light effect at all times while you were watching them? Yeah, it was, it was the same thing. Okay. Yeah, and when they went down close to the hills, uh, we thought maybe we were seeing reflections of a fire or something, you know, like a temperature inversion or something, but uh, I've never seen anything like that. I mean, uh, you know, there was no fire in the area, as we can determine, right. no smoke or anything like that. Uh, Plus, it, they, like I say, they, they look like uh, objects rather than just, uh, uh, you know, light playing tricks or something. Right, okay. You didn't see any openings or anything? No. Uh, colored lights? No, no. It's, we couldn't okay. get a clear enough uh, okay. view of that. Okay, Cole, we sure appreciate you reporting this. We'll check it out. If we come up with any more information, why, we'll get back to you and let you know. Oh, yeah, I'd appreciate that. That'd be really great if you could uh, tell us, you know, what, what you find out. Right. Thanks again. Okay, thank you. Bye. Washington. Yes, ma'am. We've had a report of a, what they consider, I suppose, a UFO by two different private citizens. Okay. He called the juvenile. He had several guests with him at his residence. They spotted what they described as a flare somewhere across the river west of Castle Rock. They thought the possibility was that someone was in trouble and needed help. However, a second call came shortly afterwards from a subject who was just coming into Castle Rock and was from a higher elevated place and um, they were both adults and spotted someone or something they believed to be 30 to, mile, 30 to 40 miles west of Castle Rock above the mountain. He said that this object was about 15 to 20 seconds in the air. They were on a motorcycle he and his wife, uh -huh. and the object, go ahead, uh, quite a while, I'll call back, if they're not available, I'll recall someone else. It's been 20 minutes, stand by. Okay, anyway, um, the incident, okay, 15 to 20 seconds in the air, trailing fire, at first with no debris, left a black trail in the air because it was just apparently not completely dark. Um, it traveled parallel to the surface of the earth, and he spotted it at 2152 hours. Okay. He thought it was 30 to 40 miles west of Castle Rock, traveling in a northerly direction. Okay, beautiful. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. We understand you saw something in the sky tonight. Yes, I did. I wonder if we could get a description of that. Okay. Um, there was a, a trail of fire running parallel to the Earth's surface uh, for approximately uh, nearly 10 seconds. And uh, ahead of the trail of fire was an extremely bright light, like it might have been a magnesium flare brightness or uh, an extreme arc light. And uh, then it just poofed out. Uh, when it did, I saw no flying debris or anything, you know, like it was an explosion. Yes. But the fire was just like it was all snuffed out. And uh, this was just before dark, and it was probably, I don't know, 20, 30 miles away at least, and it uh, was just light above the horizon, just enough to where I could see a trail of smoke that I would judge at the very least a mile long. Uh, very, very black smoke, like oil smoke or something like that. Yes. Okay, which direction were you looking at the time? I was looking almost due west from um, the south exit off of the freeway coming into Castle Rock. Okay, and which direction was the object moving? I would say west by north. Okay. Maybe a little bit more north than that. But you could definitely see the trail uh, strung out from left to right a little bit. You know, it wasn't hidden right straight away from it. It left a definite trail that it looked like it could have been a mile long or even 
longer than that because the object, I would say, would be 25, 30 miles away, maybe 40 miles, I don't know. Yes, okay. About how many degrees above the horizon was that? Um, well, I would have, from where I was uh, parked, I would have been looking at about, um, I would say about uh, 2 o'clock. Okay. And do you uh, remember the exact time? Yes, 8 minutes until 10. My wife saw it also. She noticed it first and uh, was so dumbfounded by it that she neglected to even uh, nudge me, you know, at the fact that she was seeing something. And we were on a motorcycle and she was watching this. And finally she came to her senses that she definitely was seeing something. And she hollered at me and I looked and it was so out of the ordinary. I pulled off the side of the road and then we watched it. Uh, It didn't appear to have anything at all uh, in, the, in the way of uh, a vapor trail or anything like that. It was just a very black oil type of smoke, almost as if uh, when a jet is really turning on uh, afterburner or something like that. Yes. And in incidentally, this thing was moving fast, okay. and it was parallel to the Earth. Uh, can you give me any estimate of the size of that bright light? Can you compare it with anything? Well, at that distance, uh, it seemed very huge, about... Uh, if you were to hold your arm out at arm's length and look at your thumbnail, it would be the approximate size that you could see. Okay, that's big. Yes. And your wife was with you? Yes, she was. Now, uh, as soon as I got home and, and made the call to the sheriff's department to report this, and my son had been out uh, with some of his friends kind of playing around, and when he came in, I asked him if he had seen anything. And he did see something, but it was just momentarily, you know, I'm, no length of time. Yes. He did see something, but that was about all he could say. Okay. Was this against a clear sky there? Well, looking into the west, and the sun was uh, a real uh, bright red tonight, you know, and uh, it just after the sun went down, it left a real light uh, band, you know, above the horizon. Yes. So it was uh, it was real clear. Okay. All right, sir, well, we sure appreciate your talking to us on this matter, and uh, if we come up with any more information on this, well, I'll get back to you and let you know. Yeah, I'd sure like to, to know what you find out on it, because uh, this is definitely uh, something out of the ordinary. Incidentally, years back, I'm from Eastern Oregon Desert Country, yes. and I saw something similar to this in the way of this extremely bright light, but uh, it was before dark, and I did not see any kind of a vapor trail or a smoke trail or anything like that, although I did see movement that was almost identical to this, and then all of a sudden it was gone, but it moved extremely fast, and it was maneuverable. Now, yes. it would turn 90 degree uh, deals, and uh, my wife, uh, it was a previous wife, she and I watched the thing for about 20 minutes at that time, and this very closely resembled it in the brightness of the light. You know, the one you saw tonight, that uh, was definitely moving in a straight flight path. No, yes. No deviation from that. Uh, if anything at all, it may have had a, a very slight arc, like that uh, a real long trajectory would be drawn. Yes. If anything at all. But uh, primarily in a straight line. Okay. The smoke did not... Uh, curl around like it would have a lot of turbulence behind it, you know, right. it, it, it uh, just uh, gradually got larger like it was starting to dissipate. Okay, was the light itself just a circle or round? Pardon? Was the light itself just a round light? I could see no real definite edges to the light, it was just an extreme bright glare type of thing. Right. 
extreme brilliance. Okay. And I would say that it was more white than bluish or anything like that. Uh, just almost as if it were uh, an arc flash. Yes. Very slight uh, off-white. You know, I mean, it, it was almost entirely white. Right. All right, sir, well, we thank you again. You bet. Yeah, I'd like to report a UFO. Okay, would you like to describe it? Okay. Uh, this, this, uh, is this Seattle? Yes. Okay, well, I'm from Colorado. Okay. Okay, um, we were out, we just got back, and we said we better get back and call somebody. Um, this happened. It was going all, all together within an hour, all kinds of weird stuff. We were out uh, by some farmlands out south between County Line Road, Broadway, and Santa Fe. Yes. And, you know, we're just out in the middle of nowhere, and we're just sitting around, and uh, as we walked over this one hill, we saw just one single light. It was a, a super bright, bright yellow glow. And it was above all the rest of the hill. It wasn't on a hill or anything like that. And we sat there, and we watched it, and it disappeared. And so we walked back to the car, and we got some more shells. We were out shooting. And we came back, and it was closer. It must have been three miles closer. And the next thing we knew, we kept watching it, and it was over from us. Uh -huh. And so we went back to the car and turned off all the lights and sat there and there was a glowing, a bright white glowing over the next hill. And we were hearing this weird noise, a humming noise. And as we walked out, we were going to see what it was. We heard a weird noise, like someone jumping off, off a spring or something. You know, it was making like a glowing noise. Right. And um, then we are sitting there and uh, like one part, the car lights were shining, and then there was a dark, dark area where you couldn't see anything. I saw something move out of the shadows into the light, back into the shadows, and then back out. And then it went back in, and as it came back out, it was running towards us, but at a 45 degree angle. And just, it wasn't running like a person, it was moving super, super fast. Uh -huh. And then the next thing my girlfriend spotted, big huge thing just back in the shadows and that's it we don't we don't know what it was or anything it was just weird noises weird lights okay could while you were seeing this thing moving around on the ground could you still see the light on the hill yeah, we could still see the glowing light too was that quite close to the surface yeah it was you could just see it like there was a ridge on the next ridge, like down in the next going light. Okay, and do you have any estimates of how far that light was from you? How far did you think that light is? When it was down, when it was low. No, when it was sitting down below the car. It was about a quarter of a mile. Okay. Well, it's just quite large. Can you estimate the size by comparing it with something? Uh, I'm not sure. It was, I can't estimate how big it was, but it was big. Okay, was that so low that it was illuminating the surface at all? Right, yeah, it was. You could, uh, you could make out the top of the ridge and all the little bushes and weeds and stuff. Okay, now when did you first spot the first light? About what time? About, uh, 10, 10 o'clock. Okay. About 10 o'clock. And that's when we were just out. We didn't really think anything, but we just saw this light. It was like a, you know, like a triangle. Right. It was it was sharp at the top, and it just started spreading out. And at first, you know, we figured, well, it was a plane. And we sat there and watched it, and uh, there were no red or green blinking lights or anything, just a solid bright yellow. Okay. And then uh, the, after, when it did disappear, it went... It went dim, and then it disappeared. Then it, appeared, then it appeared on the next ridge. Okay, now, uh, and with that light was there on the other ridge while you were observing these other things and hearing the humming sound? Well, we didn't hear anything until it was up about on the next ridge. Okay. Then we started hearing the humming. 
Okay, now, was that humming sound as steady? Uh-huh. Okay. How about those things that you saw on the surface? Can you give me uh, any estimate as to how tall they were? Uh, how tall were they?
Well, sir, we thank you again, and if we get any more on this, well, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you. Bye. Good evening. Uh, my name is Boulder, Colorado. Yes, sir. And I just saw something that I can't explain. Okay, let's try to hear about it. Okay, I'll give you the story. Uh, first of all, I'm a physicist with research in Boulder, Colorado. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm taking a course at Colorado University in astronomy. And I was out in, the back, in my backyard uh, locating various and sundry stars and so on. And four objects came into the field of the, of the binoculars. They were flying in a sort of loose formation. Uh, they were just blobs of light. They were much larger than the largest star, but very dim. There were no blinking lights or anything of that sort. And they were going in a straight line over Boulder from northwest to southeast, and they were going very, very fast. Um, I would guess that they went about 45 degrees in about two or three seconds. And, uh, I, so I sat there in a state of shock for about five minutes because I've never believed in these things before, but this is something that I've never seen before and that I can't explain. And uh, I made a couple of calls. I was trying to locate some uh, facility in, in the area that had radar to see if they had seen anything, and, and um, I was directed to your number. Okay. Now, what time did you spot that? 10.30. Uh, okay. Mountain Daylight. Time. And which direction were you looking at the time? I was looking toward the east. To the east, and they were traveling in which direction? They were traveling from approximately uh, north, northwest to the south, toward the south, southeast. Okay, now how long did you have those in sight? Uh, two or three seconds. Any estimate of size? Can you compare them with anything? Um, I would say they were about... Uh, Well, let's see. Um, I'm trying to compare it. They were much larger than the, the largest star appears. Uh, I would say about a quarter the size of the moon or, or considerably less, somewhat less than that. Okay. They, they, were, consider, they were larger than, you know, than the largest stars right. here. And what was the color? The color was just sort of a, a whitish, uh, very dim, okay. very dim. In your estimation, were these things uh, fairly close or quite far away? There was no sound whatsoever. Okay. And uh, no way of estimating distance whatsoever. But if they were very far away, then the speed must have really been tremendous. Okay. Were they leaving any kind of a trail at all? No, nothing whatsoever. Did you watch them until they went out of sight? Yes, I did. Okay. Did they hold that uh, straight line formation at all times? Yes, they did. They, was, they, they were just going in a straight line. They held this uh, sort of a semi-formation. They were two were closer together, and two others were sort of strung out behind into one side. Okay. And once again, how long do you think you watched those? Uh, no more than two or three seconds okay. before they were out of sight. All right. How many witnesses? Just yourself? Just myself. Okay. I was sitting in the backyard with the binoculars and uh, so on. Okay. And where did you get our number? Um, I first called uh, ATC at uh, Longmont, and they direct, directed me to Buckley Field. Okay. Well, I uh, just had to tell somebody because it's something, it was something that I've never seen before, and it's something that I can't explain. Okay. I might uh, state that the straight line formation involving four, six, eight, or ten bright lights is uh, quite common. We get these reports quite often. And not now only... These, yeah, these were not bright. They were very dim. Uh-huh. They were not points of light. They were blobs of light. Oh, I see. Okay. Would you say that these were uh, attached to an object, or would that be impossible to tell? Well, I... I, I tried to visualize these as being lights on an airplane flying over. And I, there was no way that I could do it. Right, okay. And they held, during all the time that I watched, they held the, the same, uh, well, as near as I could tell, exactly the same uh, uh, relational, positional relationship. Yes. Uh, but as far as all being attached to a single object, they didn't appear to be 
but there was no way that I could really tell. And that, there was no sound whatsoever. Okay. Well, once again, I thank you very much, and uh, if we come up with any new information on it, we'll let you know. Great. Thank okay. you very much. Reporting center? Yeah, just an answering service. Just an answering service, sir. Just, uh, just... No, sir. Okay. It's for real. Okay, I just want to... I never called in on these four. Okay. Uh, what part of the country am I talking to? Bob Gribble? I mean, what part of the country? Oh, Washington. Okay, uh, this is now Oklahoma. Yes. Since the standard time. Uh, I work in the police department here. And approximately 145... Uh, I was at the main gate of the South Air Force Base. Yes. And the uh, gate guards, and I was two gate guards there. I were, they were talking, and one of them pointed out a, a light he saw in the sky, and it, uh, he observed it for like, oh, He said 15 seconds. Of course, he saw it before me. I saw it maybe, you know, six or eight seconds. And it just went from uh, southwest to northeast at an angle that appeared to be a high rate of speed. You know, seeing planes take off and land up there all the time? Yes. It was a pretty high rate of speed. Faster than what a, like a C-141 would land at. More along the lines of your P-38, you know? Yes. And uh, it looked like one light, and uh, uh, maybe went up to an arc of uh, 30 degrees that I saw it travel. And then just before it went out of sight, it, uh, it's like an airplane, you know, flying sideways to you, and you see a side light. Yes. When it turns away from you towards you, you see three lights, you know, it spreads out. Right. And it spread to three or four lights, it just runs. You know, an instant there, blinked out. But we called, you know, radar immediately, or they did. And they said there's nothing flying and nothing on radar at that time. And that's about it. Okay, now about how long were those in sight to you? To me? Right. All six or eight seconds. Okay, then that's really clipping along. Yeah, well, it's, uh, yeah, I'd say, uh, I'm, I'm going to the planes I've seen fly out there. Right. Uh, you know, kind of comparing to that. I don't think it's kind of hard to, uh, to describe it uh, going by, there's no reference point, you know, right. in the night sky. Right. And there's a great deal of ground light out there that really washes out anything with a bright light, you know, in the sky. And like all over the base, all your stars are just about washed out. <clears throat> mm. uh, I don't estimate to be you know, right. fairly low, though. Uh, Was that thing moving against a clear sky? Yeah, but you couldn't see the stars for right. uh, the ground. Right. Okay. Uh, there's no plaid coat. Right. Uh, very light. Uh, how long which way the wind's blowing? Just light breeze, clear sky, no thunderstorms. Now, when that broke off uh, towards the end there and it appeared as multiple lights, were those uh, fairly sharp lights or were they hazy? No, they were dope distinct. Okay. And they were uh, clear. I think one or two of them had a bluish green tinge to it. More clear. And there's no roar, you know, like an aircraft engine. Yeah, right. you know, that's what I was expecting to see. Is well, the C-41s came across and made it real hard bank, you know. Right. It'd be damned hard to turn that quick, but still, you know, uh, there's no engine, no engine roll or anything like that. <clears throat> I don't think it'd be real hard to estimate, uh, you know. Right. Because I don't know how far away from you it was. If it was over the base, I'd, I'd put it, you know, at uh, maybe three, five hundred feet. And of course, if it's way out over the base, it's going to be a lot higher. Okay. And we have a municipal airport here, but there's not uh, very new train traffic. Of course, over a uh, military installation, you know, a restricted area anyway. And it's supposed to fly a big plane over the base. Okay. Now, those four lights, were they in a cluster or did it in a straight line? Straight line. Okay. You know, like I work nights for seven years now, six years. And you know, you see lots of things at night. Tonight, I just happened to have two people with me when I saw it. Uh, I was trying to go on my mind by... You know, looking from my side across the highlight post there, you know, the base. Right. But I still don't know how I put a distance on it at that, you know. Yeah, uh, it's pretty hard to do when they're moving that fast. Well, there's just no reference points up there. Right. And I just, it's just real, real swift, uh, you know. And uh, I first saw it through my windshield of my car, and I kind of stuck my head out and looked over the side of the window, you know. And then right. by that time, it's gone. Okay, and, now you're with the Auto PD? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the guys with uh, law enforcement section security police up here at the base. They called in, and of course, their sergeant, Beth, told them to get some coffee. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I talked to them for that. I don't know what was talking about. It sure wasn't anything but lights in the sky. Mm, 
thought those days were over forever. What's that? By the time we get coffee? Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, like I say, most of these cases, I can get around talking to them. All of them. I know I have in the past. I've seen other things. But you just seem like you're beating your head against the wall. You know, right. tell them something if you don't have somebody with you in the car. All right, sir, we'll sure appreciate you reporting this, and if we come up with any more information on them, we'll get back to you and let you yeah, know. A whole lot of, to be honest with you, I'm just kind of curious what was involved when you called in. Right. You talked to some cool heads or some fanatics or, some, you know, whatever. Right. I didn't know. I didn't know if the government agency or private agency or what. Okay, well, I can't think of anything else I could add to that. I'll tell you so. Okay, thanks again. Thank you. All right. Yes, sir. This is the UFO Reporting Center. Oh, how are you? We understand you saw something in the sky. Yeah. Uh, another officer and myself, we were signing off at a restaurant to get dinner while we signed off at 1650. Yes. And uh, a bunch of people stand out there in the parking lot looking up at that time and pointed it out to us and uh, was a metallic oblong jobby and first I thought maybe weather balloon. I'm a pilot. Yes. And uh, But I've never seen an oblong weather balloon. I, it's really hard to tell you how high it really was, not knowing the dimensions of it or anything. Right. But uh, stood there and watched for oh, about five minutes or so, and I called, I had the dispatcher call the airport to see if maybe they had a plane in the area that might be able to get up there and get a better look at it. And right after that, it started climbing, and uh, it went up uh, so it was just, you know, a little speck in the sky, and we, every time, uh, apparently it was uh, moving a little as it was going up because we'd catch uh, metallic glimpses when the sun would hit it. It yes. threw reflections back down at us. So I called Columbus uh, to check and see if maybe they had any idea, uh, any weather instruments or anything out in the area, and they said no, plus... Uh, well, they said, like I thought, that uh, nothing oblong as far as weather instruments go. And uh, I asked them for the winds aloft, and they gave those to me. And this thing went, uh, what appeared to us, was straight up. And if it had been some type of balloon or something, it should have been, you know, blown one way or the other, and it wasn't. So I don't know. It, uh, it was awful strange. And, uh, Okay, was this object uh, oblong on the horizontal or vertical plane? Horizontal. Okay. Did it uh, remain on the horizontal as it uh, ascended? Yeah, same too. Okay. It uh, kind of wobbled back and forth uh, for the little bit that we could see it until it really started gaining altitude. And when it started going up, it really went up. And uh, last we saw it, it was just going up. Uh, we have scattered clouds here, and it was just going up between some scattered clouds, and then we lost it. Okay, now was this wobble incomparable to the uh, the uh, swinging uh, pendulum? Uh, it was really hard to tell because uh, the way the sun was reflecting back off of it. Okay. Uh, whatever it was, it was metallic because it was real bright and shiny because when... Uh, you know, it would catch a ray of sun. It would, you know, really throw a bright flash back at you. Yes. So whatever it was, it was highly polished metal of some kind. Or... Okay, then as soon as you uh, made your call, this thing started to ascend. Is that correct? Right. Okay. I had the dispatcher call out to the airport because I knew they had some uh, people out flying today. I'd been out there a little earlier. And, you know, just to see if there might be somebody in the area close enough they could try to go up and get a look at it. Okay, did you watch this until it disappeared from your sight? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that would be straight up? Yeah. Okay. El Patrolman was with me. We both stood there in the parking lot with about 50 other people watching the thing, and uh, nobody, you know, had any good ideas about what it was. There was another pilot there, too. I, I don't know what his name was. I don't think he's from the area. And... Uh, he didn't know what to think of it either. How long do you feel you watched that? We signed off at 1650, and how long did we watch it? Just 
so I can check the log. Okay. Wasn't there about 10 minutes, so that'd be pretty close. Okay. And what was your first name, sir? Was the other patrolman. Okay, so we get your age? Uh, 29. 29. And what was Saucer uh, Sage? He's 30. 30, okay. He's over the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you could add to uh, what uh, the other officer described? No, other than I've never seen anything quite like it. You know, he's a little more knowledgeable on that subject being a pilot, you uh -huh. know. And I couldn't give you a guess as far as height or anything, you know, but it was just kind of unusual. Okay, was there any estimate of size? Can you compare it with anything? Oh, it would be difficult. You know, when first seen, it was, uh, uh, of course, you know, appeared larger, and then as ascended, it got smaller in view. I would hate to not be having much experience along that line, I'd hate to say. Okay, let's let's say you held an, a ruler at, at arm's length into mm -hmm. the area of the sky where you're watching this. How would that compare with the measurement on that ruler? Uh, just a guess would be about uh, 12 inches a foot at arm's length. Yeah. Held a ruler. I'm talking to a Pierce okay. Wilford. If you held a ruler at arm's length, compare that to the area in the sky, how much would that have covered? 12 inches, roughly? Up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. Uh, it's, it's just real hard to tell. Okay, fine. All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate uh, your cooperation there. And if we come up with any information regarding what uh, this thing was, well, we'll get back to you and let okay, you know. Okay, we'd sure appreciate it. It might answer a lot of questions. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Yes, sir. Uh, this is the first at Laverne, Oklahoma. Yes, sir. And uh, we have an object in the sky that's been there ever since about two o'clock, two thirty. Uh, it's in the east of us, and uh, it looks like it's kind of diamond shaped at the top. It looks like it might have a center piece that's raised. It looks like it might be kind of a red object in the center of it. Uh, I have a witness here of runs cafe here, and I thought we'd report it in. Okay. What time was that first sighted? Uh, around 2.30, uh, around 2.30 or 3 is when I first sighted it. Okay. It's still in the sky. So this is in the eastern sky? Yeah, uh -huh, right. Okay. Is it's this... Think, it's just uh, dang near to uh, the east of it, just a little bit north, not much. Is this thing stationary? No, it, it moves around just a little. Okay. Okay, hey, Chief, we'll see if we can't find out what it is. Oh, okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh -huh. Right. Senator? Yes, uh, I'd like to report a UFO I saw last night about 1.30. Okay, would you like to describe it? Um, it was kind of like a triangle shape, whatever, well, more like a, I don't know, oblong, whatever, and then a, an eerie light in, in in front, and two blue and red uh, ones in the back of it, whatever. And, um, I don't know, I... It was weird. I mean, uh, I, I, I live here out in the uh, thousand miles over, and the thing didn't make any sound at all, whatever, you know. And so it was about 1.30. I was, I was coming home from, from the show, whatever. Now, was that 1.30 yesterday or this morning? Uh, 1.30 last night. You know, in, in, in okay, then that would be early this morning, early right? Morning, yes, okay. Right. Okay. Okay, now... Uh, can you estimate how big these things were? Uh, I'd say it's about a hundred yards wide, maybe. It was huge. It was huge. Okay, could you see a definite shape? Uh, kind of like a, kind of like a, a triangle shape, whatever. Okay, now how are those? And and, and and the nose was was kind of kind of round rounded, whatever, because because it was the light. Front. Okay. Now how are those lights positioned on this thing? Um. Okay, there was two. Okay, there was two lights on each corner of the end, remember? Okay. Yeah, you, know, you know how you know, like like planes have you know flashing lights? Right. Well, this was was doing the same thing, but it was on on the very very rear, remember? And 
And uh, it's not crazy, <laughs> whatever. But I, you know, I, I, I call the, you know, the police over and they say, you can call you. you know, okay. So. Now, which, uh, which direction was this thing moving? Um, south. Okay. And it was um, as high as these mountains, well, you know, okay. as is in uh, the Kittle Valley. Okay. In which Valley. direction were you looking? I was looking north, and it flew right over me. Came directly overhead. Okay. Overhead, I could miss it, and and I I first I saw it, you know, it was going really slow. I thought, well, heck, you know, no plane or or jet could go, go that slow or anything, you know. And it's kind of like, you know, I don't know how I say estimated speed was blocked, maybe about forty miles an hour, you know, airspeed, I guess, right? right. You know, but it was really slow, and you know, right. and there's no engine. You know, sound or no, you know, jet sound. It's just kind of like a, 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 a whisper of, of the wind. Okay. Any estimate of how high it was? Um, all these mountains I thought I could, could go by. It just give me some mountains above, behind her house. Okay. And they were about, I say, oh, uh, I don't know, about a thousand feet. Okay. Yeah. Did this thing change direction at all while you no, watched it? No, just one direction. Okay. And I just, you know, went straight in the line. And now uh, you say the object was huge. Can you compare it with anything? Would it be as big as an airliner? Uh, no, a little bit bigger. Bigger? Okay. Bigger, yeah. Was anyone else there? <laughs> that just did. I, I, there, there was nobody. Okay, now that was 1.30 this morning, right? Uh-huh. Okay. And I was, you know, and I don't was was there any you know objects flying you know I mean did you get any you know record of any objects flying at, at that time you know going south no no not uh, uh -uh. did you see this uh, as it came uh, what I'm trying to get at is was this quite a ways to the north when you saw it uh huh and I I I, I sat there in my car. For a good 50 minutes just watching it because, uh, you know, I thought maybe it, it might have been a plane or something, you know, but I looked real, real good. Okay. And there was no question in your mind There's about no the shape? There was no question in my mind. Okay. Well, because, like, one well, thing, I, I, I never believed in UFOs. Uh huh. And never. And then, you know, I see this thing, whatever. You know, now I, I guess I know, you know. Well, we haven't had too many reports lately. Things have been real quiet. I mean, like, did, did you, like, prank calls or whatever stuff and, you know, saying, like, whatever? Because, you know, this, this is the truth. You know, I wouldn't lie to you. No, occasionally we get a prank call. Yeah. But, um, you know. Okay, well, if we need additional information on this later, it'd be okay to get back to you. Okay, yeah, sure. Okay, thanks again. Okay, I'm sorry, whatever, you know. There'll be any more. No problem, problem. thanks. Okay, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. This is the UFO Reporting Center in Washington. Uh huh. We understand you saw something in the sky tonight. Uh huh. I wonder if we could get a description of exactly what happened. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm kind of shook up. Um, let's see. I went out to move my hose in the front yard, and I looked uh, see at the west of my house, and I noticed this really gorgeous white light and you know how sometimes when an airplane is coming towards you you see the white light but then after a while it turns and you can see it's you know it's it's headlights kind of yes well 15 minutes and about 30 seconds went by and it didn't turn it didn't move and i kind of got a landmark from the house across the street's um tv antenna and it was in the same position, and then all of a sudden, it started to the left real quick, and then it went uh, to the right up, though. You know, it went back to the right in a diagonal upwards motion, and then went back to the original place that I had seen it by my landmark of this antenna. And then um, it started moving like, oh, see, it'd be east over like directly over top of me and it was moving slowly and it it, it, it was frightening because it, it appeared that I could reach out and grab it 
However, I know it was, you know, a lot further up than that. And what it was, when it got over top of me, it was, and I was looking straight up, it was perfectly round, and it, nothing was moving on it, but it had four red lights, like um, uh, one in, say, in the, the front of it, and one in the back, and then one on each side, and then the white light that I, I guess, had seen from the distance was like, maybe like on the top so that the haze of white was coming down from the top of it so I could still see, you know, I saw the perfect outline. Yes. And it was perfectly round and it made um, a sound, but it wasn't an airplane sound. It was um, more of a hum than anything else. Okay. And it, I, I can't even tell you how long that it was up there because I was really numbed by it. You know, I was... I was frightened, and then all of a sudden, it took off again, but not as fast as it had darted originally. It took off to the east, uh, east-south, I guess, because I landmarked again by the high school that's right east, due east of us, so it was a little bit south of that, and I watched it, and I turned, and it, it, it kept going, and it just, it vanished out of sight toward, you know, towards the, the foothills there, like, say, Sequoia area, Kings, Kings Canyon area. Well, you watched it until it just moved away out of sight, then? Well, no, it just, it disappeared. It suddenly disappeared? Yeah, it just vanished. Okay. Just like turning off a light? Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay, now let's get back to when the object was hovering overhead. Mm hmm Could you see an object, a surface of an object, or were you just looking at plain uh, light? No, it was, I don't want to say the substance was metal, but it was a hard physical substance. It okay. was, you know... You could see a body of something there then. Right, but it was perfectly round. Okay. Because I was looking like from bottom straight up. Okay, now... When you say round, you're not talking like round like a ball. You're talking like circular. Right, like um, would it be the the radius, the the right, right, right. Okay. Now, did this object appear flat, or could you tell? Was it an, at at an angle that, where you could tell the exact shape? No, I when it was coming towards, you know, when it was going east, all I saw was the the light, and it, and it. it it was frightening because it looked like it was coming at me. Right. And there was no blinking lights, no nothing to indicate that it was a, um, um, uh, even a, gosh, one of those blimps, you know, anything. And I remember seeing a shape and thinking to myself, what is that like? But I was so scared that I think I must have just, <laughs> my mind must have gone numb for a few minutes or something because I, I remember thinking that I thought of something, but I don't remember what I thought. You know what I mean? Right. Because I, I, I couldn't move, really. I was really scared because it's the first time that's ever happened. And, um, but when it, when it finally got to where I remember seeing it again over, directly overhead, looking up like if it was directly overhead, I was looking straight up. And like at the bottom of it, I remember seeing the, the metal or whatever it was surface, and it was in a perfectly round radius round shape okay. with the white glow uh, maybe say on the top of it shining down it was just a perfect white light was this glow did it have a hazy effect around this object hazy effect I mean it wasn't was it, it wasn't a solid light was it mm, it was it was solid when I saw when I first right. saw it. But I mean, when it was directly overhead. No, it was hazy, right? Okay. Like I was looking um, at a silhouette, maybe with a light behind it, kind of like. Right. You know what I mean. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fine. And uh, and you didn't see anything else other than that the white and then the red lights. Right, and, then... and the red lights were just in comparison to what the white light was. The red lights were very small. And there were just four of them, and they did not move at all. They didn't flash or blink? No. Okay, and did you, were those red lights st 
still on when the object started to move away from you? They stayed on constantly. Okay, until it just suddenly vanished. Right. Okay. It just disappeared. Okay. Now, can you give us an estimate on the altitude when it was directly overhead? Hmm. Like I said, it felt like I was right there, like I could touch it. But I know that I was frightened, and that's why it seemed so close. Um... estimated is like for a city block. It seemed like it would have been like a city block or maybe even two away, but not too much further. Okay. Now, if you were holding, if you took a 12-inch ruler and just held it straight up into the sky where that object was, uh, how many or how wide would that be in inches on that ruler? Uh, like about two of them. About two inches, okay. Or maybe, maybe more. Gosh, I remember what it looks like, but I... That's very difficult to make those estimates. It really is, because all I remember feeling is just a total fright, like everything was drained out. I was so scared that I didn't have any saliva left in my mouth to call my mom. Okay, when that was overhead, did it at any time appear to come closer as it was directly overhead? Did it appear to descend towards you at all? Uh, no, not that I know of. Okay, and it was, uh, when it was overhead, was it stationary at all times? Yeah, it was just right there. Okay, and you could definitely hear that humming sound. Yeah, it was like a, um, I don't know what to... How about a turbine? Well, I don't know how that sounds. It was not an airplane. An airplane, okay. you know, as you hear it going through the sky, you can hear it the... Right. You know, the, right. but this was like a... It hum. was steady. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay. Did that sound change as it moved away? Did it increase or decrease no, in volume? No, but it, as soon as the thing was out of sight, it was gone. The sound was right. gone. Right, okay. And that white light, did it maintain its constant brilliance at all times while the it was overhead? Time. Okay. Do you have any pets around? Your area? Uh huh. I have my two dogs and a cat. How did they react? Um, that, you know, that's really funny. You should ask that because um, uh, my my one dog. Well, let's see. My my poodle was out. My poodle was outside. No, my poodle was in the back bedroom, and he was carrying on high. But I thought that that's maybe because I was outside. He's just a yapper, anyhow. But my other dog, my cockapoo, is in the living room because she just had a litter of puppies and she was in her little cage and she was just carrying on too. But then I have a, a little cat who was out with me who didn't, it didn't even, you know, phase it. So probably the dogs were barking because I was out front. Did they calm down after this thing left? Um, no, they continued barking until I came in the house. Okay. What time did you spot that? Oh, let's see. Uh, the only way I can associate the time, my sister was watching sitting here. Um, I went outside to move the water. Approximately, let's see, sitting here started at 10, so say approximately between 10.15 and 10.30. Okay. And that's when I probably saw it the first time, and then... For about 15 minutes and 30 seconds approximately that, I sat there and watched it until it started, you know, the, it first of all, it darted. And it was a big enough dart uh, in distance. It was far enough that you knew that your eyes weren't doing that, you know, how you focus on something so long. Right. It actually went, in the sky, it went three houses long, the houses that were directly in front of me across the street. So, it, it you know, it was three houses long, the dart. So it made it a pretty decent thing. Okay, now this uh, <clears throat> this numbing effect you had when you were watching that, do you feel that it was strictly because of fright? I don't know, honestly. Was there any, did your body have any tingling sensation at all? Yeah, in fact, I felt like I was, um, uh, like heat rays, you know, that, um, uh, 
like rubber or something, like I was about ready to either pass out or something. Uh-huh. <gasps> like heat rays were going all through. That I was, I was sitting here thinking, you know, who, who's who's to say that they didn't do something to me? Uh-huh. <gasps> but that's well, kind of far fetched, I guess. Did you did you have the feeling that you were singled out by this thing? No. Okay. Were well, there any electric power problems in your neighborhood at the time that you noticed? Not to my knowledge, okay. no. Were you wearing a watch? Yes. Did you check the time on that by any chance? Yeah, but but the only thing I remember as far as time was the 15 minutes and 30 seconds. Okay. Approximately 30 seconds. But you didn't feel there was any loss of time while you were watching this, did you? No. Other than... I know the 15 minutes, but when I came back in at 11.15, I had been gone um, longer than when I realized I was out there. In other words, when I left, Sunny and Cher was maybe into it, say, a half hour rather than 15 minutes. And then when I came back in, my sister had been watching the news for 15, but I hadn't seemed like I had been gone that long. So I must have really been scared. You came in about 11.15? I, yeah, around there, yeah. Okay. And then I called my mom right away to tell her, and I asked her if she'd call whoever you call to see if, you know, something weird is up there. How I, long do you feel you watched that? Well, like I said, the, the brilliant the... light, when I singled it out in the sky, because it... I. It isn't something that you had to take a second look at. It was just right there, just right. brilliant. Right. I mean, the North Star sticks out, but this is, was just immense. And I watched that for 15 minutes and 30 seconds until it did its little dart. And then as soon as it darted and went back to the same original place, then it started going overhead. Okay, and then you... I've got a headache. <laughs> okay, then from the time you first spotted the light till the time the thing disappeared how long would you say that was you got into the house about 11 about 11 15, 15. You know. um or 11 10 well no it had to have been later than that because the new the weather was on and that was the last thing so it was about 11 15 okay. um do you feel that you were watching it at all that time or that you might have lost some time there I don't know. I, I'm really, I, I don't know. I'm okay, really afraid that's, to that's say. Fine. That's fine. All I know is I've, I've never felt so scared in my now, life. I understand your neighbor saw it also. Yeah. Did he watch it as long as you did? Uh, yes. It's really weird, though, because the whole time when he was there, I still felt alone. Yeah, Are you on a busy thoroughfare by any chance? Oh, no. Okay. But we're on a residential, you know, quiet. It was country, but they're building up around us. Okay. Is this the first time you've ever seen anything like this? Anything like this, yes. <laughs> what was your opinion time. of the subject of UFOs before this happened? Um, I didn't really care. <laughs> Uh-huh. It was really too deep to get into. I don't understand them that much. Okay. What's he barking for? Okay, if, uh, if we could get somebody in there to talk to you, to get some diagrams and so forth, would this be uh, permissible? If you need them. <laughs> okay. Well, we sure appreciate your talking to us. And... Uh, if we come up with any information on this object through our investigation, we'll get back to you and let you know about it. Okay. Well, all I know is that whether anybody else knows what it was, all I know is that it's something that I've never seen before, and I hope I never see it again. Well, it fits the description of things that they're seeing all over the world. Which probably are not what we think are little things in and flying saucers, but something else. Well, we know that they're not from this planet. I don't know whether they got little green women, men or women or what. <laughs> well, you know, I I really hesitated even calling my mom because I 
I don't know. I, you know, I don't want anybody to think I'm crazy, Steve. Well, we understand that. Of course, you know, one of the big problems is we we have uh, trouble convincing the public that uh, this is very, very important for them to report these things. So you don't have to worry about that. Okay. And if we need further information, could we feel free to call you back again? Sure. Okay, thank you again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, well, uh, this is a FAA control tower. Yes, sir. Uh-huh. Okay, sorry to keep you waiting. Okay. Uh, yeah, well, I had a call from a young lady this afternoon. I kept trying to get through to you, and it was always busy. Okay. Uh, this took place last evening at Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh-huh. And uh, she was traveling east out of Lancaster to uh, Paradise, Pennsylvania. And that's not a very long distance, maybe about 10, 12 miles. And this was between 1, or she was leaving town at 1 a.m., and she watched this for uh, an hour up until 2 a.m. It was ahead of her all the time she was driving, and when she got home, it was like almost right over her. And what she saw was uh, a large round object. It was very bright orange, and it had lights on it, and they would go off and on. Yes. And then there, and sometimes she would see one, and then sometimes she would see two. Sometimes they would be individually, and then together. Uh, she said there was no sound when well, she was standing outside and watching. It was a very clear night here last night, by the way. Yes. Uh, there was no sound, and it did seem to her as if they were having like a dog fight. They would, they would make passes at each other, and then she would see like little white traces going between them. Okay. Did you get her name? Yes, I have it. Uh, her name is... I asked her if she had been drinking. She said no. Okay. <laughs> How about her phone number? Okay, her phone number... Uh, she has a number at work that she can be reached uh, from, uh, I guess, 9 to 5. Okay. And that is area code 717. Okay. And she is 25 years of age. She didn't give you a home phone number? Uh, she said she didn't have a home phone number. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, uh, let me think if there's anything. Oh, I asked her if she could estimate the altitude. She said she was unable to. <clears throat> it was it was high. And she did say that as far as she could determine the uh, saucer that she saw was a diameter, had a diameter of between 15 and 20 yards. Oh, boy. Okay, is this the Lancaster Tower? Yes. Okay, we sure appreciate this. Okay, you're quite welcome. Anytime we can help, we'll be glad to. Thank you. You bet. Right. Bye. Tell us about the thing you saw in the sky the other morning. Yeah, sure. Um, did you get the report from the Federal Aviation Authority? Yes. Okay. Well, I was driving at Route 30 East, coming from Lancaster, and I could see off in, into the distance toward the east um, two balls of light and in the sky, they were bright orange, and they were flashing on and off. And as I was driving home, um, and I was getting closer to home, they, you know, I was driving like toward it. And when I got home, I lived up on a hill in Paradise, and it was right above me. And there were huge round objects, and they were bright orange. And sometimes when they flashed on the sky would light up and there would be like some type of current or something that would be flashing from one to the other and I never saw anything like it in my life and I didn't think I thought it couldn't be lightning because it just, you know, it was there for so long and there was no noise um, Now when they got over you there was just the, still the two objects? Yeah Okay, now were these, uh, did you stop the car? Yeah, I stopped it when I reached home. Oh, okay. I did stop at one point um, before I reached home, and I was wondering if I should just turn back, and I just decided to go on, but I never, I didn't get out of my car. Okay, now did these objects follow you home? No. Okay. Were they quite high? They were... 
really couldn't tell how high. Um, can you give me some sort of... Well, this is very difficult to do at yeah. night. Yeah. Okay. But uh, now, is there any way of you estimating the size? Can you compare it with something? I think it would be about twice the size of a full moon. Okay. And they were orange? Yeah. Now, would this be a deep orange or a bright orange? Bright orange. Okay. Now, did that brightness and in color intensity remain the same at all times? Um, yeah, I think it was the same color every time I saw it. And then, like, parts, sometimes, like, the first part of the globe would appear, and then it would be and go on in layers, like, uh -huh. really fast. In layers? Yeah. It would, like, zoom on top layer and then the middle layer. Oh, I see. Okay. <clears throat> now, at any time that you were watching this, could you see a solid object? Or was it just always light? It was light. Light, okay. Now, you say that there were beams coming yeah. out of these? Yeah, it looked like um, lightning passing through them. They, they were going from one to the other? Yeah. Okay, now were these? Yeah, it looked like, I don't know, it looked like something out of Star Wars. Two ships with that one. Really weird. Well, they were, well, the, these solid, uh, straight shafts of light? Yeah. Okay, was the light uh, a white in color? No, that was orange. That was also orange, okay. <laughs> and I, you know, I've been calling places to find out if, Maybe um, some tests were being made, you know, uh -huh. and nothing. Okay. Now, you got home, and then how long did you watch these after you got home? About 20 minutes. Did you continue to watch these until they just went out of sight? No. They, they were still there when I was driving back to Lancaster. Okay, now... Were these operating more or less overhead or in a certain part of the sky? Yeah, they were in the same part of the sky. And when I was driving back 30 west, um, you know, they, they remained up in paradise. Uh-huh. To the east. Okay. <clears throat> what type of maneuvers or motions did they make while they were up in the sky? Well, they would, like, flip from one part to another. Then go a little ways and start. Were these movements quite fast? Yeah, real fast. Okay. Have you had any other reports like this? No, no, I haven't. Did you hear any sound? No sound. Nothing at all. And it was really weird because there were no fireflies out. And they usually are millions. How are the sky conditions? Clear. Okay. Okay, now I want to get this picture correct. You were driving from Lancaster to Paradise mm -hmm. when you first spotted those. Right. And what was the highway number? 30 East. 30 East, okay. And then you got to Paradise and you watched them there for a while and then... And I went back to Lancaster and stayed with my girlfriend. Uh-huh. And then you drove back from Paradise to Lancaster. Right. And they were still up there then. Right. Okay, now what would you say was the total time that you saw those? An hour. An hour, okay. And they were still up in the sky when the last time you saw them? Mm hmm. Okay. Were they still shooting those beams of light when you. Yeah. Well, I saw them. Yeah. Now, were they doing that when you first spotted them? Uh-huh. Hmm. Did these objects, in their maneuvers in the sky, did they separate? Uh, I mean, was the distance between them um, a great distance as well as being close at times? 
yeah, they would um, be apart. Um, I can't. I'm really bad at measurements. Um, well, the measurements aren't necessary. Just to, uh, they wouldn't. They wouldn't ever be that far apart. Uh huh. Did at any time did they come together? No. Okay. In other words, the only connection was this shaft of light. Yeah. Well, now were they? Was there more than one shaft of light at any one time? Well, it would sort of um, shoot out and then go back and then go over again. I see. Like, uh, uh -huh. like a Z. Yeah. Like a Z between them. Yeah. In other words, you could see that. Could you see the whole Z at the same time, or was it just a series of it flashes? Was, it was, uh, I think it was both. Okay, okay. And were these lights, uh, how about the shape? Are they, did they have a defined shape? Yeah, very round. Very round, okay. Well, no, we sure appreciate your taking the time to talk to us about okay. this. Okay, I, I would really like to find out what it was. Uh huh. I'm really scared. Excuse me. Well, we'll check into it, and if we come up with any information on it, we'll get back to you and let you know. Oh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Uh, this is Sheriff's Office, Malthus. Yes. Uh, I'm reporting uh, this. UFO for uh, one of the city marshals in the county. Uh, he was sighted at Duke. If you want to write down Duke, Oklahoma. Duke, okay. And uh, I'll give you a description he gave me, and uh, uh, any further information you need, you have to contact him, I guess, later. Okay. And uh, he called it in to me earlier. Oh, uh, what time was it? About half Yeah, I got tied up here at traffic in the... Uh, in a jail, and I couldn't get to you any sooner. It's about a half hour ago. Okay. Okay, he said he sighted the object uh, approximately 150 feet long, and uh, it was about 250 feet off the ground. Uh-huh. And he thought at first it was uh, an airplane uh, trying to land in a field out uh, just the outskirts of Duke, Oklahoma. And... Uh, and then he noticed it wasn't making any noise, so he didn't know what it was. And he said it was moving about the speed of an average helicopter. And he thought maybe that's what it was, but it wasn't making any noise. <laughs> There's no helicopter that big. Right. Anyway, uh, it's traveling northeast from Duke. And he watched it uh, several minutes. And it traveled the same speed, and it gradually faded from sight. Uh, he thought the last he saw it was possibly a little north of... Uh, of Victory, Oklahoma. Yes. Okay, can we get the man's yeah. name? Okay, his name is, and he's a Duke City Marshal, and uh, I don't have his home address. It's just a small town. He's a city marshal. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> I see a little more here. He had uh, three lights he could see. A red one appeared to be on each end of the object, and he didn't. I guess he couldn't see a definite shape. It had been dark, but it appeared to be on either end of it. Uh -huh. And a white light in the middle. Okay. And that's all I have. And uh, like I said, uh, if you want to call him, you can probably reach him. It's either his office or his home. Okay. What was your department again? This is the Alta Sheriff's Department. I'm Alta, sure. okay. We sure appreciate your cooperation. Yeah, thank you. Bye. It's the UFO Reporting Center in Washington. We understand you saw something in the sky tonight. All right. I wonder if we could get a description of that. Yeah. It's uh, approximately 150 feet long. There's a red light on each end and a white light in the middle. Uh -huh. And it was about uh, oh, 150, 200 foot off the ground. I've seen it about three quarters of a mile from it. Uh huh. Moving to the north east. Oh, I couldn't say how fast. It's not not very fast, but it was moving away from me, so it's hard to say. Okay, now could you make out a definite object? 
I don't know. I couldn't tell, you know, shape or nothing of it. Uh-huh. But it don't, it wasn't making no sound. I see. We was all within a, oh, quarter mile from it. When we seen it, we thought it was an airplane fixing to go down out in the field, what it looked like at first. Yes. Okay, now did you determine the length of that by the position of the lights? Right. Okay. Did this move away from you just in a straight flight path, or was it maneuvering in the area? Well, it uh, turned, but uh, how much, I don't know. You know, when we seen it, it looked like it was going, you know, just the airplane going in for landing on there. There wasn't a landing field out here. Right. And uh, and it kind of veered off to the from from the north to the northeast. And when it turned, did the lights remain visible? All of the lights? Uh, yes. Okay. You could tell that uh, you know uh, difference in the width of them, but you could see everything. All three of them. Okay. Did this? Uh have any any type of illumination around it at all, other than the lights that you could see? Uh, no. Okay. Were those lights steady, constant? Uh, yeah, they were just a uh, steady light. No flashing or blinking? No. Okay. And absolutely no sound? Right. Okay. How were the sky conditions there? Oh, it's clear, as bright as can be out here. Uh-huh. How many witnesses to that? Just one other one. Okay. All right, sir, did you watch that object until it disappeared? You up for reporting center? Yeah, this is Sergeant Cunningham, Newman Police Department. Yes, sir. And one of my officers about three days ago has spotted the thing. I'll let you talk to him. Uh, he wasn't too sure he wanted to report it, but I told him he'd probably better. Okay. So I'll let you talk to officer. Thank you. Okay. How you doing? Yes, sir. Uh, but, uh, let me see. What was the date? What was the date? Uh, Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, the 14th. Yeah, it was July 14th. It must have been about 9 o'clock. And uh, I was looking, I guess it was east. And I, I was looking at two planes that were flying on top of each other. They looked like they were flying very close together. That's uh -huh. what brought my attention to it. And I just kept staring at the planes, you know. They had their lights on because it was getting dark. And as I stared at the planes, all of a sudden, I, I right above the planes were uh, was this big craft. It was huge compared to the, uh, the planes, the size of the planes. And... Uh, it looked like it was just kind of gliding, going right along with the plane, uh -huh. staying right with it. And uh, and I was with a group of four or five people, and right away I told them, I said, look at this thing, you know. And I grabbed my best friend, and I grabbed him, and I pointed at it, and he couldn't see it. The, the funny thing about the craft was that it was, it was almost the same color as the sky at that time, and I think that's what made it really hard to see. Because, like, I stared at those planes for uh, a good two minutes before I even realized that that huge craft was even above them. Uh -huh. And uh, the planes had lights, and this craft didn't have any lights. That was another difference. And this thing was, it was cigar-shaped, but it had fins on both ends. Okay. Now, what time was that again? That was about... Uh, uh, 9 o'clock in the evening, 9 p.m. And it wasn't completely dark then? No, right? it wasn't. Okay. Right? I think the sun was just about down, but it still wasn't completely dark. Okay, now I need a few details on that vehicle. Do you have any estimate on its size? Can you compare it with anything? Well, see, I really can't because uh, I don't know how big the planes were. Now, if the planes were what I think they were, I, I would estimate it to be uh, uh, maybe... Twenty-five yards, maybe. Okay, but these did these twenty-five appear... yards, maybe longer than that. 
Did those aircraft appear to be private aircraft? Yeah, that's what I thought they were. Okay. And did the uh, the object itself have any lights on it? No, it didn't have any lights at all. Okay. Did you see any openings? No. The only thing I noticed was the fins and the uh, the shape. Uh huh. And like I said, it was almost the same color as the sky. And that's, but I didn't. I I just I never took my eye off of it. Okay. And I never took my eye off of it, and I never seen no lights. And the, I stood there for about uh, a minute and a half trying to. Uh, get my uh, my buddy to uh, see it, and he couldn't see it. At that time, right when I was trying to get his attention towards the craft, the planes went one way, and then the craft decided to go the other way. And so I couldn't say that they were right above the planes anymore, you know. Right. I was pointing in a different direction, and it was moving very slow. And then when it started moving, it kept moving and moving, and he didn't spot it till it looked like a star. It was gone, and it was... It was uh, too far away. It must have been moving at a tremendous rate of speed. But then it just looked like a star real far away. Okay, now which direction were you looking when you spotted that? I was looking um, east. East, okay. And which direction was the object moving? The, well, at first the object was moving south. Uh -huh. And uh, I, uh, maybe at 30 seconds after uh, I spotted it, it changed directions. You see, it was following the planes. It was right, right. above the planes. And... Uh, but 30 seconds after I spotted it, it, it just it went the opposite direction. Okay. How about sound? No sound. Okay. I, I can hear the planes, though. Okay. Any estimate on altitude? Um, I'm not really too good on that, but uh, I'd say it was about uh, 15 story high. Stories high. It, it wasn't real high. Okay. It wasn't real high at all. Okay. How were the sky conditions? Clear. Okay. Wasn't a cloud in the sky. In total, how long do you would you say that you watched that? Uh, I would say about three, four minutes. Okay. Did you watch it until it went out of sight? Yeah, I stared at it even as it looked like a star when it far away. Okay. At any time, other than when it looked like it started, it, did you notice any light glow around it? I didn't notice any light glow until it, it, it started to look like a star, okay. you know, when it got real far away. Yeah. There wasn't any light glow at all. Just a, It was the, the color of it, I guess, would be sort of a silver-gray color. Uh -huh. And in the evening, I guess it's almost the same color as the sky. Okay. Did this, did this thing make any motions or maneuvers while it was in flight? That is, I mean... No. Deviate from a straight line course at all? No, it didn't. It just went uh, in a horizontal type of movement across. Right. And it went, uh, it was following the planes and then it changed directions and then uh, it, it took off. It looked like it was going from, you know, like left to right. Right, okay. From A to B. Did the department receive any other reports on that? No. I was the only one. We, okay. I think we had a, a report uh, about a month or two ago. Okay. It, and they spotted one. It was, uh, I guess it wasn't too far away from where I spotted this one. In fact, this one must have been about, uh, uh, I would say approximately a half a mile east of the uh, PG&E plant there. Oh, and, yes. and the other officers that were on graveyard shift there's two officers we had on duty spotted one, and it was right above the uh, right above the same PG&E plant. Yes. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate your reporting this, and uh, if we get any more information on it, we'll get back to you and let you know. All right. We really appreciate your cooperation. Fine. Thank you. Bye. Bye. UFO Reporting Center. I had a collect call for anyone from an air traffic control specialist. Will you accept the charge, sir? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. Hello. Good morning. I'm uh, calling from Albany, New York. Yes. Okay, uh, I see uh, we got a letter in our facility. I work in an air traffic control facility, facility a flight service station at uh, Albany County Airport. At yes. New York. And I just thought I'd call you. Uh, I don't have a UFO to report at this time or anything, but 
I was involved in a UFO incident uh, that took place in our area here back in 1974, and uh, I thought maybe I could, I don't know if you have any record of it. I refer to it personally as a Round Lake incident. Okay, let's hear about it. Well, uh, this was back when I was on duty uh, one evening. I've got the dates here. I'm calling partly. I don't know if I can shed any light on the, the situation because it happened so long ago. Part of the reason, actually, I'm calling is uh, maybe you could help fill in some stuff, some okay. information that I have. So I'm still curious about it. Uh, let's see, August 20th. Hey, that was yesterday. So that was back in 1974. Uh-huh. And we received a call from the state police, uh, New York State Police, up around uh, Round Lake, which is, uh, oh, I'd say about 20 miles. 15 miles north of uh, Albany, New York. And it's just south of, uh, you can find on your map, the Saratoga Lake. Saratoga Lake is a fairly large lake. And uh, Round Lake is a, a town and also a, literally a round lake that's situated just south of Saratoga Lake. Yes. And we had uh, the troopers called up. Uh, they called our facility and ta- spoke to me and asked if we had anything, any strange uh, uh, objects uh, or anything on radar in the vicinity of Round Lake. So I told him that I wasn't working in the radar room, but I would check. So I called over to the fellas, uh, my associates over there in the approach control facility, and they said, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, they did see some objects uh, that were uh, occurring very strange over the Round Lake area at this time. This was about, though, 7.30 in the evening, I think, when I first got the call. 7.30, mm-hmm. 8 o'clock. And uh, I asked them uh, what the targets looked like, and they said, uh, well, they had... Anywhere from one to up to four uh, targets at one time over the lake itself. And uh, I asked the troopers uh, what they saw down there, the reason for their call. He says, well, they had reports from concerned citizens up there about some strange objects occurring over the lake at that time. So they had sent up uh, a couple of cars, and uh, through the course of the evening, there were no less than four units uh, that were up there at one time observing some strange objects. Anyways, I'm getting ahead of the story a little bit. But uh, the earlier part of the evening, they had uh, two or three cars at this time situated in strategic locations around the uh, perimeter of the lake. Some of them are on the north, another one is the southeast, and another one is uh, in a similar area, I think. And it reported uh, some sort of object, which is hard to describe, over the lake. Mm-hmm. And they said that at some time, the object would uh, break off into several smaller objects. And these objects would move around and then merge back into one object again. And this thing was moving around at various areas of the lake so that the state police over the north end of the lake would be observing it and describing it over the radio to their dispatcher while the people at the south end of the lake no longer saw the object. Uh-huh. And then sometime later on, the object would appear over the southeast end of the lake and disappear over the north end of the lake. So I asked the troopers, I says, oh, here's a unique experience. I says, finally get some, a really good description of these things. So I asked the guy who was uh, very perturbed. He happened to be a helicopter pilot, and he was cursing all those guys up there. He said, I should be up there watching these things, you know. He said, I expect now I'm a veteran, I guess. So he was really interested in this sort of thing. He was stuck on dispatch that night. So anyways, I asked him if he could get a description from these guys. He says, uh, he says well, there's roundish-looking objects, he says, with lights on them. That's all I know right now. He says, yeah, well, I'd like to find out if does it appear that the lights are on the objects or inside the objects or the objects themselves appear to be glowing or they solid or pure translucent or anything, you know, something really detailed. So he says, wait a minute. He says, I'll get a description. Here, listen. So what he did was he called the troopers, and he put the... And uh, in the course of the evening, it was getting... started to get kind of dark. I think it was... Uh, I lost... Uh, I, I think he uh, had to hang up or something like this, and then uh, he called me back later on again because this shenanigans was still going on. So uh, I think it was uh, sometime later. I can't quite remember. It was about 9 o'clock or so, I think. And he called back, and uh, he said the objects were still around there. He says he had about four cars up there now, including the, uh, one of the BCI investigators from the local area who was on his way up there now to check out these things personally. So uh, he was en route up there uh, from the southeast. So I called the radar room again. I says, uh, let me see if we can get an aircraft uh, up in that area there. Maybe the guys are working somebody who can go up and investigate these things. So I talked to the guys in the approach control in the radar room again. And they had been watching these things, uh, you know, continuously all this time, too, and they were they were kind of astounded. They had never really seen anything like this on radar before, as far as, you know, targets acting like this. As far as the distance of uh, the object, 
objects or the targets from uh, the center of the scope, that is what they call the main bang, like the radar unit itself is physically located at Albany County Airport. Yes. So the distance from the uh, radar antenna up to Round Lake is fairly close. Uh, you have to look at my map. I couldn't tell you offhand what it is now. But I'd say between 15 and, and 20 miles, probably no more than 15 miles. And uh, at this range, still it's awfully difficult to discriminate individual targets, and they're very close together. Uh, in other words, like if you get, I don't know how much you know about radar, I'm assuming the, it's the person, you know, someone who doesn't know too much about it, that's if you get two targets that are very close together, uh, the radar has a certain beam width, and depending on the, the width of the beam that sweeps across the targets and might pick them up simultaneously, it only appears one target. Right. Whereas in this case, they actually had as many as four targets at one time, which was interesting the way it coincided and you know, confirmed what the state police were saying. So they must have been fairly dis good distance apart or a fairly large sized object or something, but the distance apart would have to be something of significance in order to pick up four targets. But the guys are convinced they saw something very strange up there. They couldn't quite make out what the heck it was. And uh, anyways, uh, they said they did have an aircraft uh, that they were going to try and maneuver up in that area. I guess a private pilot just flying around. I think it was a Cessna 172, if I remember correctly, a light signal engine aircraft. And he was someplace down to the southwest of this area. And they said that they were going to send him up there to investigate. So they started back this, <clears throat> this aircraft up there. And I told the state troopers, this as well, tell the guys uh, up there now that uh, we're going to have a light aircraft coming up from the southwest to investigate. So by now it was getting... Uh, starting to get uh, pretty dark. So I said, uh, it was just twilight. So I told him, uh, look for an object coming up from the southwest with uh, red and green position lights and possibly a landing light. So this will be a light aircraft, uh, not to confuse it with uh, the objects if somebody does. So they saw the aircraft come up and, well, lo and behold, as they would have it, of course, the object disappeared as soon as the aircraft got up there and he circled around and didn't see a darn thing for some time. But as soon as he went away, the objects came back again. Yeah, that's <laughs> a common. The troopers. Right. But anyways, uh, let's see. This received press coverage in the papers uh, that evening. It was on television, as a matter of fact. So I guess everybody was out there by this time of night. And uh, one fellow, I remember correctly, was watching it on TV, described it as uh, a pancake object. He says it was a very elongated object when it was over the lake. But he says the thing would come up overhead, and then it would be perfectly round. To describe it, something like a cigar-shaped object over the lake, and then round when it came overhead. And, yes. Uh, I think this one fellow had even drawn pictures of it. He drew some sketches or perhaps uh, described it to someone else who drew the sketches and confirmed it or something like that. So they had the sketches on TV, too. And uh, let's see, I think the whole thing was over with about uh, 10.30 at night or something like that, because I called the troopers back just before I went off watch, about 11 o'clock or so, and uh, there was no more word of these objects at all. But uh, one other interesting thing occurred, sort of the coup de grace to the whole evening. It was about 10 o'clock or so that uh, the uh, radar controllers were working a uh, twin-engine uh, prop aircraft was the uh, Air Force, uh, one of the older transport aircraft, I guess probably used for training flights, a T-29, it was like a twin-engine Convair uh, 340 or something. And the aircraft was in the vicinity. It must have been uh, coming up over the Saratoga Lake which is just a short distance to the north of Round Lake, because he was on an airway, and he was heading due west, just coming up on this area. So he would be looking sort of in the vicinity of the Round Lake, Saratoga Lake area. And he was at 8,500 feet, and he called over the controllers. I don't remember what anybody told me. All I can do is this one particular case. I can quote from, uh, they had an article in the Inquirer, I don't know how accurate it is, but uh, just what the report was. Well, I got it written down here myself. Because I put down here. Oh, he described it as a red streak traveling from north to south very fast, extremely fast. So some object was uh, in the sky ahead of him, and I think it was slightly above him. Uh -huh. And uh, the controllers confirmed this. They picked up an object coming from this area, which is the vicinity of Saratoga around lakes. And uh, where they picked it up, good, here's confirmation of the distances. I got down here 17 miles and 16 seconds. So uh, that means that the Brown Lake area would be about 17 miles, more or less, between, like I said, 15 to 20 miles. And they clocked it on radar, and it's 
speed would have to come out to something like 3,500 miles an hour. So it was seen visually and picked up on radar, and the object disappeared. It was heading, in other words, from due north to due south. Uh-huh. And uh, in 15 seconds, that would give about three or four sweeps of the uh, radar antenna. And based on this, they clocked at about 3,500 miles an hour, and it disappeared over Albany. They lost it right over the airport. That's clipping right along. Yeah, I, that could have been a meteor. It could have been very coincidental, which is very appropriate to the evening. But they could, you know, uh, they could pick up a meteor being a solid object. Uh, low in the atmosphere would be burning like that, and visually, and also could be picked up on radar without any problem, I don't think. Does, uh, would your uh, radar there go up that high? Well, uh, I talked to the technicians to find out just what the pattern was, how high it is, and uh, the radar stretches more or less from horizontal at the... Uh, at the set of the antenna, and it actually it goes up to about uh, pretty close to 50,000 feet, between 45 and 50,000. Mm-hmm. It's uh, it's an approach surveillance radar, so it's not actually uh, designed to uh, work effectively or detect aircraft up that right. high because they're only really concerned with uh, aircraft in the terminal area, which is only 10,000 feet for Albany. So that's what all they're concerned about is the accuracy of the uh, and the working to the radar up to 10,000 feet is all they're right. concerned with. But the beam itself, I know, does go up to about uh, very high altitude. About high altitude, anyway, is 50,000 feet. When the troopers were watching those objects, did they ever report any sound? No, soundless. Uh, just like the description I got from that one trooper in the car, he says, absolutely soundless. Oh, Perfectly round, absolutely soundless. I okay, wrote that down here. Some place I've got all my little junk sheets here that I wrote down things down there. Here's, uh, here's another thing. It's 15 to 20 feet in diameter, circular. Now, I don't know how they judge the distance or judge the, uh, the width of the things. I've got uh, two or three circles down here, 15 to 20 feet in diameter. And I've got uh, five dots down here that, uh, I don't know if this means that there were five. Didn't do a very good job of uh, documenting all the stuff at the time. It was kind of hectic that night, and I made a mistake by not writing it all down, you know, everything that I could. But... Uh, as time goes by, it seems I'm getting more and more curious about uh, this particular incident, and I've always threatened to go back and talk to the troopers or something like that. Which brings us to, to another point, too. I'm just wondering, I don't know uh, what your organizational structure is and all that sort of thing, but uh, I was wondering uh, if you have any field investigators, uh, I'd be willing to volunteer. We'd be more than happy to have you. Yeah, if you have uh, any uh, incidents or anything that uh, pops up over here, I'd be in a pretty good you know, position to pick them up first from... Uh, Either law enforcement agencies or pilots or something like this that spot something very strange. I could go up on my own time and uh, wouldn't mind interviewing people and talking to them. And I'm fascinated by the whole thing myself. And I would uh, enjoy doing something like that. I have a pretty good background for it, too. I've uh, always been interested in photography and astronomy and uh, been a sky watcher for some time. I'm a certified weather observer and I'm a rated commercial pilot and flight instructor. So. I mean, a lot of sky watching time. I've seen a lot of strange things, but nothing I couldn't explain before. Yes, okay. Before this time. <laughs> Getting back to that, uh, the sightings by the lake, so when the objects disappeared from the area, that is, uh, according to the ground observers, did they also disappear from the radar simultaneously? I couldn't say. I didn't, uh, I didn't run across that. I don't remember. I didn't write that down. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, the trouble is, you know, I couldn't stay on the phone with him. It was kind of hectic. He had to leave. He had other calls and stuff that he had to go away. And sometimes as soon as he came back, there was something, there was some detail I had to take care of, so I had to leave him. So it was kind of hectic. I couldn't, you know, really work quite right with him and right with the guys in the radar room. So Very difficult to do when something like that. Hard to pause, you know, right. Three parties on the line at one time and trying to coordinate all this. So all the guys in the tower had other traffic that was busy, too, so... We're all just kind of kind of hectic trying to put all this stuff together and everything. I asked the guys. Uh, we have we're co-located with uh, the Weather Service. Uh, National Weather Service has a uh, forecasting office uh, <coughs> that's uh, co-located with my facility. I asked one of the meteorologists uh, what kind of uh, atmospheric conditions would have to prevail to uh, produce a target like this that could be seen visually and on radar, something that obviously was, was solid to be picked up on radar. Well, solid in the sense that they got a radar return. So temperature inversions, of course, uh, are known. Uh, they can, radar will pick up, uh, uh, it's very tricky. It can pick up ground objects and it can pick up uh, 
temperature inversions too, like uh, even a, uh, a coal front moving through the area or something under just the right conditions can cause the temperature uh, change in such a way that will bounce back a signal and you will actually see a line on a radar scope. I know I've seen that. And uh, the radar beam itself can be either bent down or bent up. If it's bent up, it can shoot over the horizon, pick up objects that are much farther away. And uh, it's called a super refraction or sub refraction, which uh, bend the radar beam down under certain circumstances where it'll pick up ground targets. Matter of fact, up in this area, there is it's, it's kind of prevalent in one certain section, and we have the North Way, which is Interstate uh, 87, which goes from uh, Albany up to uh, Montreal. It'll pick up automobiles occasionally down there. They'll give a, a target uh, to an aircraft to play out something uh, that is, say, 2 o'clock position, slow moving southbound. And I look and say, well, there's nothing out there. It's just a, we got a bus on the North Way. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, well, we sure appreciate your calling in this report. Okay, well, it's kind of sketchy and it's pretty old. I thought maybe I could just uh, shed a little bit more light on it in case you had something like that in your file. And I uh, thought maybe I could get some information, too, in case you did have something that you could uh, let me in on. But I just wondered uh, what's, uh, what your organization uh, like and what your setup is there. Okay, the uh, name of the organization is Phenomena Research. And uh, we're operating the UFO Reporting Center as part of gathering data, making contact with people who've had UFO experiences. And we're conducting a very active research program, an overall study of the UFO phenomenon and any possible related events. It's a very small organization, which we like to... That is, it has a small staff because uh, we feel we get more done that way. And uh, we have investigators scattered around the country and in Canada. Not too many people have heard of us because we kind of frown on publicity. It uh, acts as an interference to the time that we do have to work with the subject. But we're very active. We're getting a lot done. We feel that the mystery just isn't as uh, deep as it was five years ago, simply by some of the things that we've learned out here. We're convinced that uh, we're dealing with objects which are not manufactured on this planet. I know that there's a lot of theories as to where they're coming from, but uh, we haven't made any conclusions in that field yet. I'd be interested to uh, get some of the information that you're coming up with uh, one way or another. Right. Uh, we, <coughs> we publish a periodical uh, phenomena research report, and we'll get you on the list for that, and along with any other uh, information that we put out, you'll be sure to get that too. And of course, if we hear of anything in your area, we'll get to you right away by phone. We feel that uh, investigations, uh, on the spot investigations, are an absolute must in this field, and we try to get our investigators going on it as fast as we can. What, uh, what information have you come up with uh, recently? Is there any significant uh, development or something that's trying? I mean, I have followed this stuff in the last several years. I kind of know what all the, the feelings are, the opinions. Well, right now we've seen a very radical change in the pattern of uh, activity and behavior. There's uh, very little being seen in the sky. Most of the uh, events are taking place on the ground in the form of... Uh, landings and occupants. Uh, we're getting more and more confirmed cases of abductions around the country. And <clears throat> this, uh, we feel, is an entirely new uh, phase of activity on the part of the so-called aliens. We're watching this pretty close. Uh, who is, uh, how 
How is your organization uh, financed? It's self-funded. The uh, the members of the staff uh, put up quite a bit of money, and then we have uh, a small input from donations. We don't have a paid membership because we just uh, don't want to be bothered with uh, putting out publications on schedule and all the other red tape and paperwork involved. Who are the, uh, the people that comprise your uh, your directorship there? They're residents of Seattle. A uh, portion of them have uh, scientific credentials. Others are laymen who have a uh, very deep interest and background in the subject. There's only about 12 on the staff, and uh, they do all the investigating in the local area. They do all the research work and man the reporting center. They're all volunteers, very dedicated people. Well, let's see. That's about all I can think of right now. I will have a few more questions. Probably going to be called some other time or something. Maybe that get some more information or maybe have some information for you, too. Yeah, we're going to be in contact with you by mail and give you all the information that you're going to need. And uh, But uh, we sure appreciate uh, the, this report and this information on this one event. Yeah, if you'd like to, just out of curiosity, if you want to dig back, about the only uh, thing that I've seen that's published other than what I've given you here is uh, an article that appeared. Uh, someone interviewed the controllers up there in a... The Inquirer had an article in here, the National Inquirer. Let's see if I got the date saved in this darn thing here. I just ripped out the last page before it got thrown out. I don't think I have a date on it, though. Uh, so I can't tell you if, it, if this article appeared uh, in the latter part of 74 sometime the same year the, the incident occurred or not, but it was on the back page of the Inquirer. Okay. It's got a picture of the controllers here. and. Uh, I don't think there's any uh, special. There, there is a little information, maybe. Well, if you want, I can make up a copy of this thing. I'll run it off at work and just send you the copy of the uh, clipping anyway, so at least you get some information from it. Very good. Great. Anything else I may have uh, left off here, so that'll at least supplement uh, the information I've given you here. All right. What are your working hours? Well, uh, basically, I'm on two shifts. Uh, of course, we cover the facility 24 hours a day, so... Uh, uh, I'm a supervisor there, so I get off uh, the hook for mids. Uh, I work uh, either 8 to 4 or 4 to 12, and I rotate. Oh, I see. Okay. So there's no way you can tell offhand without looking at my schedule or right. how, if I might be there or not. Uh, and then days off in between to take a leave and stuff like that. So it's just potluck. You probably try my house first and check with my wife, and then uh, she can give, get in touch with me wherever I might be. Very so good. If there's something that you got, you know, if I'm at work, well, you can uh, you can call me at work also. If she, she says I'm working, that'd be perfect way to call me there. Very good. So if I get a hold of something here, too, then uh, uh, I could do a little investigating on my own. Uh, I'll just uh, use the name of your organization and say I'm just a representative of the uh, Phenomena Research. And Fine. We'll get, a, we'll get an ID card off to you, too. Okay. That'll be good. Yeah, something like that. That's probably good. Uh, I, I think people feel a little frustrated in cases like this. So the first place they call is uh, usually the police. And then the next ones they call, I guess, are possibly the airport. Just out of uh, not knowing who else to call. Nobody really isn't anybody else to call. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh... You know, nobody can do anything about it. Uh, but at least uh, I'd be in a better position to uh, decide what to, uh, what to do in a case, whether to check with the radar or I could check with the Weather Bureau and get information at least on the uh, atmospheric conditions or something like that and put it all together and come up with a little bit more completed Okay, well, once again, I want to thank you for the call. We sure appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Bill. It's been nice talking with you. Same here. Okay, doke. We'll be in contact. Good enough. Right.
landing lights on it, and the landing lights were very bright, and they shone for maybe three, four minutes. Uh huh. Then the landing lights went off, and the thing uh, literally backed up. And now I'm not one to believe in all this focus focus, but uh, it was there for real. Now you say backed up, you mean it went, started climbing? Started climbing, uh, literally climbing backwards. Uh huh. Upstairs. Okay, what time did you spot that? Oh, let's see, uh, that was about uh, 10 15. Okay. Now, which direction were you looking at the time? I was looking westerly. And this thing came straight down? It uh, came down at a, a steep angle, not straight down, a steep angle. Okay. And it had, uh, was pouring uh, flames out of the top deck or the rear deck as it, as it came down. Then it hovered, and landing lights went on. And the landing lights were on for maybe three, four minutes. And they went off, and it uh, backed up, literally backed up. Okay, then, then it just went straight up and out of sight? Right, right. Okay. Now, did this thing have a defined shape? I couldn't see it. Uh, it was uh, after dark here. Okay, then it was just nothing but light? It was light. Yeah, yes, it was light. Okay. And what color was it? Well, it was the color of flame. Okay, fire red, okay. And the lights were like the landing lights of a, a commercial aircraft. Okay, did it have any color lights mixed in? No, I didn't see any color lights, no. Okay, did you pick up any sound at all? No, it was too far away. Okay. But how long did you observe that? Oh, I would say four or five minutes. Okay, could you give us any estimate on size? Well, it was uh, a little too far away to, to do that. Okay. I would say it was maybe two, three miles away. Okay, was it as big as an aircraft? Well, as I said, it was uh, after dark. Yeah. Okay. I don't believe in these things, and I know I have, but uh, I had to see it to believe it. Where did you get our number? Uh, I got it from a friend of mine who was with the FAA. Okay, is that the local airport? Okay. 
Uh, with the two reports there in the Jacksonville Sheriff's Department here in Jacksonville, where the three I've got reporting it now. Right. Very, very, very similar in what they're saying. All right, sir, thank you very much. Okay. Reporting, sir. Yes, uh, this is uh, Chief of Police of Condon, Oregon. Yes. And uh, I just had a young man come up to me and report a UFO. Okay. Uh, took some information from him. Uh, he was out here north of Condon at the uh, park. It's about uh, two miles north. Yes. And he was looking north or being a northwest and over one of the farmhouses that sets out there he said it appeared and it had uh, a flashing lights it was red and clear uh, but in some of the times they just stay on uh, this sighting occurred about 9 30 p.m this afternoon okay and the uh, female com companion with him was uh now, uh, he said this thing stayed in uh, sight about 15 seconds, and he said that was at the most. He said it was uh, flying. Ex he said also there was a aircraft, uh, airplane, flying. Uh, he said if you remember right, it was uh, flying west. And he said uh, they, uh, the this flying object came underneath the aircraft and then went way high and then came back down. And uh, it's pretty bright around here tonight. Uh, he said there's a knoll that you can see out there. Uh, and he said the thing just uh, went down over that knoll and disappeared heading towards the Columbia River. Well, okay, sir. Well, we sure appreciate this. We'll get in contact with the man and uh, see if we can find out what he was observing. Okay. Good enough. And we sure appreciate your cooperation, Chief. You bet. Thank you very you much. Bet. Thank you. Bye. I'm calling for the UFO Reporting Center in Washington. Yeah. And we were advised by the uh, Chief of Police, Econon, that you had a uh, UFO sighting. and we'd like to hear about it. Well, Something you saw on August 3rd? Yeah. We were out north of town, and we saw a red light, and we didn't think too much about it, and it started jumping around really sunny in the air going up and down and around and it was really quick and then there was this airplane up there flying around and it was you know going pretty slow and this thing object it kept flying toward it and it was stopping and going and pretty soon it just when it got underneath of it it just uh, just went right up to the airplane and went down and then just shot off Oh, this thing seemed to be toying with the aircraft? Well, it's, it just kind of popped up to where the aircraft was, uh -huh. and back down to where it was going across the sky, and then took off. Okay, now did this come relatively close to the aircraft? Yeah, I would say very close. Okay. <laughs> I know the aircraft probably had to see it. Okay, now how long was that uh, flying around that airplane? Do you have any idea? Probably about 15, 20 seconds. Okay, and uh, at all times this thing just uh, remained a bright or a red light? Well, it, was, it was really sporadic of when it would blink. And it kind of like had yellowish and red. Okay, did it have any kind of shape to it? Uh-uh. We couldn't see it. Okay. But it was blinking or flashing? Well, it might blink twice red and then once, you know, that kind of yellowish color. Uh-huh. And then sometimes, you know, it wouldn't blink, but you know how you could kind of tell when something's blinking and moving? Right. You can, you know, you can judge about how far it's going to go. But this thing would jump a long ways and then it'd stop and it'd go up and down and it's really weird. Now you say it 
to jump a long ways, would it be like actually jumping across the sky or just moving across the sky? It was, just, it was, it was so quick when it was
when we first saw it, we noticed it in the clouds. You know, and then we could see it jumping up and down and started watching it. And then once in a while, it would go backwards. That was, that was before it approached the aircraft? Yeah. Okay. I so many weird things. I was just shocked when I was watching it. Okay, now when it was jumping up and down, could you compare anything to that movement? Would this be... Uh, you ever seen an oscilloscope? What? An oscilloscope? Uh-uh. Okay. But sometimes you could you could definitely see it going backwards. Uh huh. And then when sometimes it is it had moved quite a ways. It just it's like snapping the fingers. Just kind of just kind of just really take off. Just a streak across the sky. Yeah. And then it would stop. Go backwards. All sorts. Of stuff. Okay. Now when it was jumping up and down, when it was near that cloud, was this? Did it just? jump up and down in that one area or was it jumping up and down as it moved across the sky? Well, it'd be jumping up and down and move backwards and shoot ahead all the way. Oh, I see. Okay. And then when it got to that underneath that airplane, you know, we could see it heading towards the airplane and then when it got by the airplane, it just really jumped up the airplane and then back down and just took off. Uh-huh. Okay. Did that light was when you first saw it? It was in the cloud that you saw. It was just, you know, I said there was an airplane up there, and, and then just happened to be watching it, and it started doing some backwards and then up and down. And uh huh. Whatever I was and when it went, when it did that, when it went up to the airplane, that's when that's when it really got excited. Okay. Now, could I get the name of the party that was with you? The girl. Uh-huh. Did you get any uh, reports of UFO up here in Day Creek last night from Cedar Woolley? No, ma'am. Well, I've Did got three boys something? that come in about 12.30 last night, and they really swear the thing was, they thought at first it was a meteor, but it seemed to follow them, and... Uh, him to get up off the ground, and I'd like for you to talk to them if you want to. Yes, I'd like very much. They were pretty shook up, and they're pretty reliable kids. Here he is. Okay. Hello. Hi there. Would you like to describe what you saw last night? Yeah. Uh, we was turned up on a day trip road about 12:30, and we seen something like a meteor flash in front of us, and we seen it hit out in the field. And about a quarter of a mile past, past where we seen it. Well, it lit up behind us. I seen it in the rearview mirror, and a friend was with me, seen it out the back window. I seen it light up, and then uh, um, about another mile, I guess. Well, then it lit up again right in our back window. It was acting like it was trying to trying to catch us, and then we took off as fast as we could go. That's just how it was. Okay, which road were you on? The Day Cook Road. Okay. South and Gadget Highway. No. Where was that in relation to you when you first spotted it? Uh, it was off to the right-hand side of us, about 200 feet. Okay, which direction would that be? The south. Okay, you feel it was 200 feet away from you? Yeah. Okay. And as you proceeded down the road, this thing swung in behind you? Well, it, it acted like it jumped from one spot and started, it jumped from south to north right behind us about a quarter of a mile away, but we could see it light up. Now you say jumped. Did it literally look like it jumped? No, or we did it just jumped, move? we seen it light up again behind us because we were taking corners at the time, you know. Okay. And then it lit up behind us. And then about a mile after that, it was right behind us. Okay. But you didn't see it move from the first point to the second point? No, I didn't see that. Okay. It moved when it first hit. Okay, now when you watched, when you first saw it to the right of you, did you, uh, did you just drive out of sight, or did this thing just suddenly go out or away from you? It didn't 
No, we didn't go down the side. It went out and then it lit up again. I see. Okay. In other words, it went out like a light bulb. Yeah, kind of, kind of a flash. Okay. Then it appeared in another spot, right? Yeah, right behind us, and it was very bright. Okay, now did it remain? Did it uh, keep this close proximity to you? No, not after we took off. It didn't. Okay. We was almost home by then. All right. Now, but how long did this entire encounter last? Uh, probably three minutes. Okay. Did you hear any kind of sound? Yeah, I did. When it first came in front of the car and it landed out in this field, we heard kind of a, I don't know, between a sizzling sound and an air sound. It's kind of a, I don't know how to explain the sound of it. Okay, now you say it landed. Did you actually see it settle to the ground? Yeah, I seen it hit the ground once. Okay, now do you remember where that was at? Yeah, I know right where it's at. Okay. And did this affect your car at all? Yeah, it did. The radio turned on full blast. That's what scared us the most, because we had the radio turned down. And it, the volume went up all by itself? Yeah, all by itself. And, this, and another thing that really scared us, too, is that the stars were just thick when we was coming. And when we got home, there wasn't any. And we seen them. We weren't asleep. <laughs> okay. And you figure this happened about 12.30? 12.30 to uh, 20 to 1. Okay, and uh, you could account for all the time that you were on the roadway driving home? I sure can. Okay. Did this affect your engine at all? The ignition system? Well, uh, I wasn't really paying much attention to the car. I was just had it floorboarded. I, I was see. coming home. In other words, you were pretty scared. We were petrified. Okay. Did, it, did you notice any unusual physical sensations? Yeah, I did. Um, we, well, we were just driving along, we were fine, you know, we were listening to the radio and talking, and that flash, and we swore, oh, God, we swore something was crossing the road. It looked like a, like a tree was crossing the road. We couldn't figure out what it was. Just a dark silhouette? Yeah, and, oh, man, I, I just, it sounds unreal, but it was real, it was plain as day. And it lit up behind just like it was daylight. Did it just like, did it actually light up the roadway? Yeah, it lit up the roadway. Okay, and this uh, this illumination continued until you just outran this thing? Yeah. Okay, now this dark object that went across the roadway, about how tall was that? Oh, God, it's tall as a telephone pole anyway. Okay. And now, uh, how many people were in the car? Three. Okay, now, was anyone actually watching this while you were driving? Yeah, and I was watching it, and my friend me was watching the whole thing. Now, how did this thing finally disappear? Did you just sort of move out of the area and away from it? Yeah, after it flashed once, way back, and then after it flashed in our back window, well, that's when we chomped on it, and then it did flash after that. Okay, did that illuminate the inside of the car? Yeah, it was, yeah, a little bit, in the back part of the car. Okay. It, it was kind of acting like it was trying to keep up with us. Did it actually come right down the roadway behind you? It sure did. Did this thing uh, remain uh, over the roadway, or did it veer from side to side? or? It could, we, well, when we seen it light up way behind us, and then we didn't see it until it hit right at the back of the car. And then after that, we didn't see it anymore. Okay, now at that point, uh, do you feel that it was any closer to you than it was when it was out in the field? Well, you bet it was closer to us. How about how close would you say? Well, probably 15 feet. Okay. Now, did this light have any defined shape of any kind? It was just round. Just round like a big bright light. Yeah. Shining. Yeah. Okay. Now, how big was it? Can you uh, give us an estimate of the diameter of it? Well, it was, when we first seen it come across the front of the car, because it wasn't right in the front, it was quite a ways away, we see it out in the field. It looked like it could have been as big as a basketball, but then, you know, the distance, it could be huge. Uh -huh. Then when we seen it light up, it looked like about as big as a golf ball in the back of it, because it was so far back. Uh -huh. Then when it lit up behind us, we couldn't tell how big it was, because it lit up the whole back window. Okay. All right, sir, can I get your name? 
Yakima, Washington. We're over here visiting. It's okay. Right. Now, can I get the names of the other parties? Did all three of you gentlemen agree on what you were seeing? Well, me and Des, the one was in the back seat, and he seen it shoot across the sky. But he didn't see it in the back of the car because he was so scared. He, he, he jumped under the covers in the back of the car. Okay. And the, my friend, well, he had his bike, motorcycle up here, and he was supposed to have brought it home last night. And he was so scared he wouldn't do it. Okay. How long are you going to be there? We'll be here until Saturday. Okay. But I'll be here all day. Okay, now if we can uh, get somebody up there to talk to you boys and get some sketches, would that be all right with you? Yeah, you bet. And we'd like to get out and take a look at that spot where that thing came down. Well, boy, we know right where she's at. Okay, now you say you're going to be there till Saturday. Is that tomorrow or yeah, next Saturday? Yeah, that's tomorrow. Oh, okay. Okay, where did you get our number? We got it from uh, Mount Vernon Police. Okay. State Patrol. The State Patrol Office? Yeah. Okay. Okay, we'll get back to you and let you know if we can get up there. What time are you going to be leaving tomorrow? Probably sometime in the morning. Okay. He knows where that uh, spot was? Yeah, pretty well. He wasn't really sure how it went, but he was in the back seat and he couldn't see out, you know. Uh-huh. That means we should have seen her. Okay, well, we thank you very much for calling, and uh, we'll try to get back to you right away. Okay, thank you. Bye. Bye. Uh, I've got one for you guys. We've been watching it since 1.45 Minneapolis local time. Uh-huh. Its uh, location at present is about 45 degrees west of Polaris at approximately 45 degrees above the horizon altitude. Uh, it appears to be a pin-shaped object with the brighter portion towards one end. It's generally blue-white of approximately the first magnitude or better. It uh, traveled, when we first picked it up, it was traveling from south to north. It's made several rather intricate maneuvers, including corkscrews, spirals, and 45-degree uh, laterals from, uh, uh, you know, apparent direction of flight. It doesn't appear to be a skyhook, balloon, or satellite. From what we can see through our telescope, it uh, is radiating five different colors at various times. There's a central white portion surrounded by two blue, a red, and a green light. Okay, and these maneuvers are quite positive? Oh, definitely. We can see, well, you can see it maneuvering without the aid of the telescope. We're only using the telescope to get a, try to get a closer look. That's how we've got the, the colors. It's pulsating, and like I said, we can, there are six of us here, and we can see it maneuver with the naked eye. Okay. And how long have you watched that? We've been watching it since 1.45 Minneapolis time. Okay. It's still there, and we're still tracking it. Any estimation of how many degrees of arc that thing has moved so far since you spotted it? Oh, Dad, it's moved. Uh, uh, I'll get to our astronomer here. Ask Jeff how many degrees it's moved since we first spotted it. If you were to take a, this is very unscientific, but if you were to take a uh, yardstick and hold it out at arm's length from you, right, it would have moved, in my opinion, about 24 inches. Okay. Does this thing seem to uh, gain or lose altitude? Uh, it, uh, our astronomer in our group here says it's moved at least 20 degrees. Okay. And uh, it's gone from a point where it was about the size of a quarter when we first spotted it. It's down now to the size of about a penny. Okay. And it, like I said, it moved from south to north, and then it looks like it's going away. It's, uh, we've been tracking it in relation to two other stars. At first, we had a, it was an equilateral triangle, with it being the base, yes. and now it's more like an isosceles triangle. Okay. And like I said, from that particular point, it sat still for about five, six minutes, and then it started doing crazy maneuvers. Corkscrews, 45-degree uh, laterals, uh, up and down, sudden stops. 
Okay, were those corkscrew maneuvers on the vertical, vertical plane? Uh, vertical or horizontal plane? Yeah, it appears to be. Well, here, I'll let you talk to you. Okay. Um, from what we've been seeing, it's moving in pretty much of a horizontal plane as we're facing, as if it was on the surface of a plane that we were looking perpendicularly down upon. Uh-huh. And um, it's moving in an area about five degrees wide and about five degrees of altitude, where it's sort of a, sort of a fairly uh, small area, as if it were jockeying for position or something. Okay. Are you watching that behind a uh, clear sky? Yeah. As a matter of fact, the sky is uh, crystal clear. Okay. And uh, as, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five. There are seven of us here that have seen the thing, uh, ranging in profession from deputy sheriff to unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Where'd you get our number? Uh, I... I called the uh, FAA office to report it here in Minneapolis, and they referred us to you. Now, would that be the at the airport? Yeah, out at the airport. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this thing, and uh, we'll check it out, and if we come up with any more information, we'll get back to you and let you know. Thank you much. Thank you. Bye. I'd like to report a UFO sighted just north of Grand Rapids. All right, sir, would you like to describe what you saw? Well, we seen, first of all, we seen a, a fighter, you know, you know, Air Force fighter. We yes. It was an Air Force fighter. Wow. Okay, it was flying south. It was flying north, out of the south. And when it was, it went into a cloud bank, just a little down towards the horizon. You know, we lost sight of it in the clouds. We were looking around waiting for it to come out. We saw this disc object fly out and that bank up and towards the right. And then it kept doing these odd maneuvers. And that's when we noticed that it wasn't the fighter. You know, it was silvery and it was disc shaped. That came out of the same clouds that the uh, aircraft went into? No, a smaller cloud bank down towards the right. Oh, okay. About what time did you spot that? About 1.30. This uh, afternoon. This afternoon, okay. Which direction were you looking at the time? North. North sky, okay. How far was this uh, cloud that the jet went into from the one that the object came out of? Uh, about a mile to a half mile. Okay. And then just after we seen it, we, we were watching the UFO for about, oh, two minutes. Yeah, it was making all kinds of maneuvers right in the same spot. And then real weird that a plane could make, and then just after, <laughs> just, just after it went into a cloud bank, we lost it. Two more, we think, fighters came out of the east and west and converging about, about the same point where um, we saw the UFO. In other words, these fighter aircraft and the UFOs were all operating right in the same area? Yeah. Okay. Now, would you describe those maneuvers the object was making? Oh, it, it banked off towards the right, climbed like an airplane, then it stopped, then it hovered there, go into the clouds, and come back out, just, just like it's peeking out at us, you know? Uh-huh. And then it'd go back in, then we'd lose it, come out, swirl around and it stopped. It gave us it gave us a profile a couple times. It was making these like thirty degree turns. They were they were sharp turns and at a speed that I think it would just destroy one of our jets. Uh huh. It was they were sharp, fast turns. And it's executed real smoothly too. Okay, and you could definitely make out that this was a disc? Yes. Yeah. Uh, like a brushed silver too. Okay. Did you notice any lights on that disc at all? No. Okay. About how long did you watch that? Two minutes, two to three. Okay. Now, was this disc traveling at a pretty high rate of speed while it was making those maneuvers? No, oh, just a medium one. It wasn't real fast. No, it wasn't real fast, but we're... It was about pretty... as fast as a jet plane, but it wasn't super fast. Okay. Yeah. Was that disc as large as the jet? Yeah. 
Okay, men, where did you get our number? Oh, uh, from, we called the air, um, the control tower at the Kent County Airport. Okay. Now, were you the only witnesses? Yep. As far as we know, so far, we're the only ones. Was there a pretty heavy cloud layer there, or was this broken? It's clear. Okay. It's broken, but we, when they when they come out into the clear, you, you know what's that there and there. Uh, and you felt that you saw at least three jets in the area? Yeah. Okay. They were right after it had happened, and one was just before. Uh-huh. Okay. And there was no doubt in your mind that you were watching a uh, metallic object of some kind? No doubt. Okay. Okay, men, well, we sure appreciate you reporting this, and we'll check into it. And if we come up with any more information on it, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, bye. Bob Yes, sir. Jerry Phillips. How are you, Jerry? Raining in Seattle? Nope, sun shining. Oh, God. That hasn't got up here yet. Got a hot one here for you. Okay. Uh, brother-in-law just called me from Montana. This is a large, hairy creature sighting. Okay. Occurred last Saturday about 2 a.m. in the morning. Last Saturday, and that would be the 20th. Right. Okay. And there was about five people involved. The guy that reported it, his name is... And he's a desk sergeant at Malmstrom Air Force Base. Uh -huh. And him and some other people were out camping at, uh, let's see, the Belt Creek Canyon Campground. That's B-E-L-T Creek. Okay. And that's about 20 miles southeast of Great Falls. It's miles southeast. Okay. Now, uh, according to them, they were camping, and it was starting to rain or something, and they were thinking about leaving when this uh, big thing, they noticed it standing off in the distance, like up against a willow tree or something there. And uh, scared the hell out of them. They said it was really hideous looking. And let me see here. They estimated it as about 15 feet tall. And they said it had hair all over, just like that deal in Star Wars, you know, that guy. Did that hit the papers? Right. It's in the Missoula this morning, and they're going to send that to me. And they haven't been able to get a hold of the Great Falls one yet, but they're going to get one of those and send it over to me. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, they said this thing had... Uh, Austin. So they got scared and they fired a couple shots with a shotgun in the air to try to scare the thing out of there. And apparently it uh, made him mad. And he charged them. And they said he was taking what looked like about 40 foot strides. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> so they said it was just like a semi truck bearing down on him. And they described it as having a flat nose and had canine type fangs in the mouth and the head was oblong and then with hair all over it. And uh, let's see. At any rate, they were about 500 feet from the car and they made it back to the car and this thing was pretty close to them at that time when they took off. And they looked out the window, and the thing was still standing there uh, uh, looking at it right where they had just come from. So there was no noise. It made no noise whatsoever, that, according to this article, you know. <laughs> but it scared the hell out of them. And they didn't know what to do about it. They were afraid of ridicule and all that, apparently, and they didn't report it until a couple days afterwards. That just hit them as well in this this morning. Right. Okay. And it also said in the article something about they've had uh, quite a few sightings within the last 18 months over there. 
West said somewhere up along the Bitter Root, up towards Great Falls, that he's heard of quite a few of them lately, so there should be some articles come out over there. Okay. I was re- well, reading that one out of uh, down at the uh, Keys, Florida, too, again. And obviously they were looking at something about 10 to 12 feet tall down there. Yeah, yeah. I read a complete story about that somewhere. I think it was in one of the latest uh, UFO books. It was a complete article. You mean on the recent case in Florida? Yeah. Well, that same, I think that same family has had problems before. Oh, I see. And I think that, if I remember, I'll look it up, but if I remember, I think it was just this last month I read an article on the happenings around that particular farm down there. I'll look it up and see if I can find it. I got a new theory on these hairy creatures, especially since they're getting taller and taller. Uh, what if there's a universal government and they decide that we need an occupation force here? Yeah. Which cannot, with that one which we cannot destroy. Yeah, right. <laughs> that would be the logical one to send. <laughs> <laughs> kind of seed the planet slowly? Slowly, yeah. Well, they're getting bigger all the time. That must be from eating all those special bits of meat off of our steers and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But I told him to get that stuff right off of the mail. Yeah, and I'm sure he'll get it over here as quick as he can. He's also going to try to find a great fall paper and everything. So I would imagine they'll have some backup articles to go with it. Yeah, I'm going to see if I can't get a hold of this one. All right. Yeah, that sounds pretty good for an Air Force guy. Yeah. To come forward. He probably told his commanding officer first. Maybe the commanding officer told him to go out and tell him. Yeah, right. Uh, you know, you'd think that he would uh, question somebody before he jumped. Now, they describe this thing as hideous. Yeah. Yeah, uh, anything that tall would appear hideous to me, even if it was female. Right. right. <laughs> Fifteen feet, God, that's twice as, more than twice as tall as I am. Yeah. Well, they said it was just like a, a semi-truck bearing down on them. A huge, massive thing. Uh, well, that's like that one out here at Mount Rainier, uh, Joey figure 12 to 15 feet. Yeah. Well, I'll get on this right away, Jerry. Okay, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I doubt if I'll be able to get any more information until we get that stuff over in the mail. Okay. Okay. If I don't talk to you before then, I'll see you at 10 o'clock on the 3rd. Okay, sounds good. Very good. Okay. Bye now. Morning, Center. Yes, I'd like to report a UFO sighting of last night. All right, sure. I'd like to hear about it. Okay. Well, let's see. I guess it was about 11.30, and we're, me and a couple of my friends were just sitting around outside, and out at the west end of the sky, it just looked like an airplane was coming, you know? And just kept getting closer really quick, you know, in about a minute, it was right over us, and it stopped over us, and then it tilted and was, you know, had a really long beam of light. And it tilted, and it was a plate disc with a, like a cone with a flat top on top of it, and it had red and green and white lights. And then it just uh, came level again and came down, and it landed on a street like about, you know, a few hundred feet from us. And um, it hummed like gyros, you know, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? But when it was in the sky, it was like a deep-sounding jet, you know. But, wow, you know, it was, it was pretty scary, you know. <laughs> okay, how long did you watch it? Uh, let's see, I guess it was, we saw it on the ground for, like, probably five, six minutes. Then they went over there in a car and couldn't find it anywhere. So, you know, I called... Uh, the local large airport around here, and they gave me this number. So okay. 
on it. Now, when this was in the sky, you say that it was shaped like a disc? Yeah, it was round. It had a round cone with a flat top on top of it. Mm. But a friend of mine started waving at it, and it, you know, it tilted so it could look like like it's a, a window or something or whatever. I don't know. It was on the front of it, like so they could look down at us or whatever, but, you know... <laughs> It was pretty wild. And okay, now there was, you said there was a beam of light coming yeah, from it? like, uh, see, that we saw it, I've seen it in the sky plenty of times, and it just looks like a huge headlight on front of it, you know? Uh-huh. But, it, you know, it wasn't a plane, because uh, it was about 100 feet up in the air when it stopped, and it was, you know, moving around from different sides of the sky, like hell, you know, so. Yeah, you feel that this thing was a metallic or solid object? Yes. Okay. Very much so. Do you have any estimate of size? Uh, it was larger than a car. Okay. Now, how far away from this, did, or from you, did the object land? Let's see. Uh, probably about 400 feet. Okay, now, did this this have any kind of a light glow around it? Let's see. It seems when we, it landed, it, we could just see like a glow against the houses that were around there, kind of like a really whitish green glow. And it came down in the street? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and it moved around the street. A friend of mine said that while it was sitting there, the sudden came out and came down, and then the ship came down. So... Said that somebody came out? No, not somebody. Just Something? It, uh, another, some sort of object. I didn't... Oh, I see. Okay. I don't think it was any kind of creature or anything. Just that, you know, something or other. And that came down in the area where it landed? Right. Right near it. You know, just like 50 feet from it. Okay. And you definitely heard a sound from this thing? Yeah, right? it went like... Ooh, 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 like uh -huh. that when it was coming down. But, it, you know... It roared like a jet when it was in the sky. Okay, and then uh, when you went over to the area to investigate, it was gone? Yes. They drove around through the streets, and it wasn't anywhere. But I know I saw it on the ground, because while it was sitting on the ground, it was quiet. Uh -huh. It made that hum noise again, and it moved over just a couple of feet. You know? Okay. And where did this... Uh, what was the... Was this within a, a city or town? Oh, or? yeah, right in the rural areas, right? Like, there were houses just all over hell, you know. You know. Just, oh, okay, now, do you, do you know the cross streets area so you can pinpoint the exact location? Let's see. I don't know the name of the streets because, you know, it's not in my neighborhood. It's over in a friend of mine's neighborhood. Okay. <clears throat> but, you know, I, we went over to the area again this morning and looked around, but, you know, nothing there. Okay, and how many people were there? Three. You all agree exactly what you saw? Yeah, he, a friend of mine described the exact same thing before I even said it. He said he saw him move over, too, and heard the noise and everything. It was pretty wild. Now, if we get one of our investigators, field investigators, in uh, to take a look at that, would you direct him to where this thing came down? Sure. It was just like, you know, it was right in the neighborhood, you know. There were just houses all over the place, you know, uh -huh. normal neighborhood. Reporting center? Yes, this is Dodge County Sheriff's Department, Fremont, Nebraska. Yes, sir. We've had several reportings of UFOs in the area of the east part of Dodge County, which would be by Arlington, Nebraska. Uh huh. And one of our deputies has an object in sight three miles east of Fremont, and the object is northeast of him with red and green lights. They've also observed the object over by Woodcliffe, which would be in Saunders County, with a glow around it. Just devising it. Oh, okay, sir. Well, we appreciate that very much. Okay. Thank, thank you. Bye. Mm -hmm. yeah, is this the UFO Reporting Center in Washington? Yeah. We understand you're seeing things in the sky over there tonight. Uh, not our office. Uh, uh, Dodge County is. Strictly Dodge County area? Uh, I think so. Just a minute. Welcome to Dodge County. Can you advise your public service number? Uh, 
Southern. Okay, uh, you can contact Dodge County by calling. All right, sir. Thank you very much. No. Yes, this is UFO Reporting Center in Washington. Yes. Are you the gentleman we talked to before? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, uh, what's the uh, standing of those objects that uh, were seen by your deputies? Are they still stationary? They're still in the area, and they're observing them now. Uh-huh. And uh, from what I can gather, they have red, white, and green lights rotating, you know, off and on. Okay, now are these stationary objects? As far as I know, they haven't moved very much at all. Okay, very good. Do we have your name again, sir? All right, sir. Thank you very much. And we're also trying to check with Off now if they've got any aircraft in the area. Uh-huh. And so far, I haven't got a response back from them. But the CBs are going nuts out here. Uh, are, are they seeing, has everyone seen stationary objects? Well, stationary and moving. And uh, we did have a report of one landing uh, out here in the eastern part of the county. There's a deputy checking that out now. And uh, so far, we don't know if it's actual or not. But uh, Okay, if that is confirmed as a landing, would you let us know? You bet. You can call Collect if you like. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome, sir. Bye. Bye. I have a collect call for anyone from the Dodge County, Nebraska Sheriff's Department deputy speaking. Will you pay for the call? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. This is Deb calling you back. Is this the same gentleman? Yes, sir. Okay. We have uh, four witnesses that observed an object come down a mile and a half south of their residence, which would be the east corner of Dodge County. Uh-huh. And they saw it come down, and they did not see it leave. I've had deputies out checking the area, and they can't find anything. And uh, the rest of the objects were moving the objects, but moved very slowly. I see. Okay. Now, do you have the names of the witnesses, those who saw that come down? Not handy with me. My deputy's still out on the road on another call right now. Okay. Would there be a possibility of getting those when he gets in? You betcha. I can have him give you a call. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks You're again. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Bye. This is from Dodge County, Nebraska Sheriff's Office. Will you pay for the call? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. It's deputy. Yes, sir. Uh, reference these people that say they saw the item come down. Uh-huh. Uh, see, I've got four names here. Okay. Okay, the first one is, uh, the second one is, uh-huh. Okay. Uh, third one is, he lives in Kearney, Nebraska. And, let's see, the last one I've got doesn't have a phone number either, either at home or business listed. Do you want his name also? Yes, please. Okay, it's, and, mm -hmm. He's listed as Washington, Nebraska. Okay. What did they see precisely? Uh, they say they observed the item with flashing lights uh, going from red, blue, and white. And they're pretty sure it came down about two miles directly south of where they were all at. And they just kind of watched it for a while and they say an airplane went overhead and all the lights on this item went out and they never saw the lights come back on they never saw it go up in the air or anything I drove around out there for well, about an hour and a half but it's pretty dark I couldn't see too much on the ground were they able to see any kind of an outline of this object? Uh, no they didn't no shape or anything no at first they thought maybe it was somebody out in the field and uh, they went over to the farm where they think it was checked with them and there's evidently was no one out there uh -huh. okay. but we got more flashing lights going around this area and we know what to do with now but they're all stationary they appear to be I, I watched uh, about seven of them at one time and uh, about a 20 minute period I couldn't determine if they were moving at all uh -huh. well, are most of these in the north northeast and east sky uh, that's where I first saw them uh, to the northeast and uh, I went over to Armington and talked to the city officer over there and while we were there we come up with five or six of them uh, two of them to the north and the uh, rest of them all in the south yeah, the only reason I ask is because as the early morning we get into the early morning hours now we uh, there's more and more of these 
what is known as magnitude one stars showing out in that area. Mm-hmm. And of course, the atmosphere causes these things to flash multiple colors. Yeah, I was kind of wondering if that's what it was, but uh, CB people up here just going nuts. Yeah. Uh, well, when one call goes out, you know, then everybody looks. Yeah, we had. Uh, I listened to the CB. I couldn't get any names or anything, but there's a lot of people that claim the items came fairly close to them, and they swear up and down they weren't stars, planets, airplanes, or helicopters. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate this report. Well, if we come up with anything on it, why we'll get back to you and let you know about it. Yeah, curiosity's killing me. Right. (laughs) Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm calling from Maple Heights, Ohio. Yes. And I got your number <clears throat> from uh, a, out at uh, Cleveland Hopkins Airport. Okay. Uh, as I called the airport for what I saw, uh, I guess it was about, for what it's worth, about uh, quarter to one is when this happened. My wife just got back from, dropped my boy off from school, and uh, she says, come on the house and says, hurry up, look outside. So I looked outside. And uh, it, was an, it was a jet airplane. And I told my wife, I said, well, it's just a plane, you know. And what I didn't see, for a couple seconds anyway, that there was something behind the plane. It appeared to be, from my line of vision, about 500 to maybe 1,000 yards or so behind the plane. And it appeared to be a silver disc, for, for what it's worth. And I saw it for about maybe seven or eight seconds. And then I ran to the car to get my camera take a picture of it, and then when I got back, it had already turned to the north. The, the plane was going west toward uh, Cleveland Hopkins Airport, and the, whatever the object was, uh, went after a distance after it went west behind the plane, it veered off north and went north. So, okay. Now, was this a commercial airliner? Yes, right, uh-huh. Okay, now, how big was that object in relation to the airliner? In relation to the plane, I would say it was about a third possibly a quarter to one-third the size of the aircraft. Okay, and it was definitely silver? Yes, definitely silver. Was it reflecting light at all? Uh, it, it appeared to be, um, okay. re- you know, reflecting the light. You, can you estimate in any way how close it got to the airliner when it was following it? Uh, I can't really say exactly. Uh, it appeared to be, like I say, uh, 500 yards to a thousand yards behind it, but possibly not directly behind it. It could have been further north of the plane as I was looking, because I was looking uh, northwest. So okay. it could have been, you know, uh, more north of the plane, but have the appearance that it was directly behind it. Okay, now which direction were they both moving? Uh, both moving west, which would not happen. To west, okay. And did this object just veer off and just follow a straight line away? Uh, well, it, it followed the aircraft for a while, and then it turned off north. And, and to the north, okay. Down, until I couldn't see it anymore. Because I, I, I looked at the plane, uh, I guess, because I told my wife it was just a plane. It must have been about 10 seconds I was looking at the plane. And then I looked behind it, and uh, there was a side view plane. I'm, I'm watching it, and I said, that is not a plane. Um, I, I possibly could have been watching it for as much as 10 or 15 seconds, actually. And then it hit me. I got to get my camera. Uh-huh. Get the son of a gun loaded all the time. Uh, and I ran out to the car and I ran back. And then I looked up and the plane was way far off west. And the object had already went north. Okay. Were they quite high? Uh, it appeared to be maybe. I could only guess at about maybe three thousand feet. Okay. <clears throat> Did you notice anything unusual about the surface of this disc, or was it just smooth? It was just smooth and uh, shiny. Okay. Do we have your name again, sir? Sure. And you got our number from the airport? Uh, yes, what I did is I called the operator, and she gave me a number. And he was uh, very, very, uh, very nice. He didn't think I was some kind of nut or something. I told him, I said, for what it's worth, you know, I said, this is what I saw. Right. He was very understanding. He said, they do get, you know quite a bit of phenomena on their uh, radar scope. 
Okay, sir. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this, and if we come up with any information on it, well, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, this is the uh, UFO Network. Is that what that is? UFO Reporting Center. Reporting Center. Right. Are you affiliated with uh, APRO or anybody like that? We work with APRO. Oh, good. I just, uh, I was receiving their, you know, their bulletins and their flyers uh-huh. and things like that and uh, reading up on it. Uh, so, for what it's worth, that's what we saw. My, my dad saw it also, and so did my wife coming back home from taking my boy to school. Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Who am I talking to? Uh, this is Robert Gribble of Phenomena Research. Yes. I'm really interested in hearing about your experience last night. Um, would you like to talk about it now? Yes, I would like to very much. Okay. I guess I could start from where it all took place. I was out with a friend of mine. He was uh, 7 or 18. And uh, we went out and they were going to have a concert. Like a live concert recorded on the radio. Yes. That night. So we went out and parked by Sloan's Lake. We were going to listen to that and just talk. Or Stanley Lake, yeah, with the Sloan. And uh, as we were sitting out there, we saw a light in the sky, like a star just sitting there. But it would lightly but noticeably change color from a light to a green to a red, but not exactly all in that same order sometimes. Like it would just keep changing, like a rotating. Like it would be white turning to a green instead of white and a green. And uh, we went over on this dirt road down farther to see if we could get a better look at it. And we traveled down these dirt roads and made all these turns. And we didn't know where we were going. We ended up in this field. And that's where they started building these new houses. And we went out. We got out, turned off the lights, went over, stood at the corner of the slot and looked up at it through the trees. And we noticed it was just sitting there. And we were closer to it, and it looked like we could see the colors change even more vivid. But it was still a long ways away. We figured it was just a star with a lot of atmosphere in front of it or something. Yes. And so uh, we took off and started driving away. And my friend looked back at it again, and he said it was moving. So we stopped the car, and when we stopped the car, we looked out through the trees, and it kept going through the trees for maybe about, oh, five seconds the rest of you and then it stopped and it didn't move again so we turned around and we tried to go back to the place we were before but it was seemed like it was at a different area like more north so we headed up northward along these streets and well geez there's so much that happened and I forgot to tell you another thing when we first uh, went out in the field where we went to just before we came to a stop in the middle of nowhere was a big like dust pass of uh, we just thought it was dirt we really didn't think nothing of it we thought maybe a car had been zipping by but then we wondered how come it was only for about oh maybe a 30 area foot span of just like dust but we didn't think nothing of it and then when we uh, tried to follow that thing back we took a whole bunch of different roads like paved streets onto some dirt roads again and we went past the exact same place where we were before, looking up at it. And the dust was still there, just that one patch. And so finally, we figured maybe something was going on. We got out of the car to see if it was dust. And we smelled it, and it didn't have no smell or no odor or nothing to it. And it wasn't dust. You, you could brush it away with your hands when we had the lights on. You could, like, if you moved your hands, it would blow away to it. Yes. But uh, when we got out in it, it was like a, a, a static feeling, kind of like it was, I don't know, we both had the chills, maybe just because we were scared, but when we got out, it was like, a, I don't know, really like a light feeling, I felt not lightheaded, it would be hard to describe, just my whole body weight felt lighter. And so we looked at it, and we figured did it did it move or not? Did it go more north? And so we figured we'd go back and stand at the corner of the lot again, you know, where we were before, looking at it through the trees. And this time, it wasn't even close to the trees. It was probably another probably 20 degrees higher than it was before, up in the air. And so then that's when we figured it must not be a star, and it was still just sitting there. So we didn't know what to do, and we figured every time we drove off and came back, something would happen, and this was in a hilly territory. So uh, 
we drove off and went to the end of the road, and he said it was moving again. So we would stop, but when we would stop, we, you know, we'd look at a telephone pole or something that's next to it, and it wouldn't be moving anymore. But we would see it move very lightly once in a while when we were stopped, but nothing distinct like we did the first time. And uh, this, this took place in about maybe a half hour. And then up next to the little star was a flashing white light, just like it came, like a strobe light. And it wasn't going real fast, like maybe three beats a second. And then it just disappeared, and that was gone. So we stayed, watched, watched it longer, and nothing happened. We, we started to get bored and started to leave to see if, it would, if we could catch it moving again. And we just get interested again, and we turn around and go back. And the third time that we went back for it, we saw a big red cubicle, like it was oblong, a long square with a, a pretty definite shape to it. And it was a really bright, intense red, probably 300 yards, just over a few of the hills, just sitting there. And it started to go lower, and then go off toward the left till it dropped behind the hill. And we went over there, took the roads out as close as we could find, and when we got out there, we, we timed it every seven seconds. There would be a flash of white light, and we could tell no distinct place it was coming from. And we'd sit in our car, and the light would flash every second, and we'd look up at the at the little star again, and it would be the same place. Nothing changed with that. So uh, we got out of the car to see if we could find out where the light was coming from. As soon as we got out and started going around, the light would flash. Like it, it was like it was almost even time with us. We got in the car and it would like flash five seconds later and then seven seconds from that it would flash again and start a regular flash. So uh, we had the radio turned off. So I always thought about, like I read a lot about UFOs or heard about that they messed up here reception. I wasn't even thinking about that, which we should have had the radio turned on. But we did have the car going once. And the night before, I just had it tuned up and thinking how good it was running. When we were sitting in it, it, it started to get a vibration, like not a shaking vibration or a really loud noise, but like a... Oh, it would be hard to describe. It wasn't a hum. It, it was like vibrating, but the car wasn't vibrating. And it was kind of a low, not too low pitch noise, but it wasn't a real high pitch. And I shut off my car, and it still did it for about two seconds after my car was turned off. And we got really scared then. We uh, <laughs> didn't know if we should stick around. We were hanging on to each other. And uh, so we went time the light again and figured there's nothing we could do when we get out of there. So we left. And uh, just had that strange, like, a, you know, eerie feeling like we didn't know what was going on. And we got to the phone, and I called my mom, said I'd be home later because we wanted to go back once more. So when we came back over the hills, took the dirt roads again that we took the very first time. And when we got over the hill, there was a white, it wasn't red, it was a bright white intense light that was, it didn't have a definite oblong shape, but you could tell it was like a square, but it didn't have no definite really size to it. And it went straight up, and then it just was gone, like it moved up a little to the left, just going straight up, and there, like, we didn't see no trace of where it went or how it disappeared, like it just wasn't there. And then we saw that bright, white flashing light again, and it was a really high intense, like it, it seemed really close, like it was directed at us because when it would flash, we couldn't see anything else except the flashing light. It was reflecting off the car and not the light up the inside of our car. And then that disappeared as suddenly as it came on. And we sat there for a while to see what would happen again. And the star, that one we saw in the first place, was still sitting up there. And we took off, not knowing what to do, watching the star. And that little bright, intense strobe light again was up next to the little star up in the sky. We could barely see it blinking up there once again. 
and we went home. And as we went home, we uh, drove through the city and went to the lights. And we noticed that when we got to a stoplight, like there, they got pink lights out here for street lights, that the glare would cut out every star except for uh, the one that we thought wasn't the star. And that would be up higher than most of the other stars around, the lower stars. It, none of the stars would even show up. And we went home. I took him home. And, and I took myself home. And we watched. I was watching all the way home. When I took the corner on my street to go up the street, it wasn't there anymore. It, when I came up the corner, it was out of view behind the trees, but from the corner. And then it, it just wasn't there when I came up the street. And then I came home. And this took place between uh, quarter to 10 to 11.30. Mm -hmm. Which part of the sky was that uh, star like light hanging in? Um, um, northeast. Okay. Now, when that bright light went into that vertical climb, was that a uh, perfect vertical climb? Ah, uh, yeah, it was. It, it didn't have no tilt to one side or another. Okay, did that, was that a high speed? Um, no, it wasn't. When we both saw it, it was, it was traveling very slow. We saw the red light at the first before it went down. It was a bright, bright, focused red light that we could really make out. And the white light was a lot more blurred, but still held the same shape, but with a lot less detail to it. Did you ever see the source of where this flash was coming that was directed no, at the car? That, that, that's how come we got out of the car to see where it would be. And it would light up the trees all along the side of us and all, all the grass in the field. Uh -huh. But uh, when we got out and tried to locate it, we couldn't drive around because the road was limited. But when we got out of the car, the light would stop flashing. So we okay. couldn't locate it. And we were scared anyways to go walking around through the grass. Did that flash illuminate the inside of the car? Yes, it did. Okay, did you have, while that was going on, did you have any unusual physical sensations? That strange feeling that we had that first time, it was a, like a really light body, like light-headed. We had a tingly sensation, like my hair would feel like it was standing up. I'm sure it even was. And it was a light feeling, like I wasn't... I wasn't thinking my own thoughts, really, like I was in the days with what was going on. Okay. Like we would be grabbing each other and saying, look, look, because we weren't sure, I guess, ourselves that it was going on. And finally, we, we calmed down and started just trying to talk about it, saying that it really was happening, because we were both seeing it. Okay. Did anything unusual happen to the car while that was going on? Ah, uh, just that one time where I got the strange vibration. Okay. Which, uh... But did that vibration, in your opinion, feel kind of like a high-frequency sound wave? It, it wasn't high. I can remember that. It wasn't a high piercing pitch. It was... I know it felt more internal than external. Uh-huh. And, uh, I guess that's the best I can describe it. It wasn't a buzz or the closest it yeah. Okay, well that flashing was going on. Did you have any mental sensations of any kind? Uh, we had that, just that constant feeling all the time going through this. And we did notice when we left the area, the feeling would go away and when it came back and start to get to us again. That's not knowing if it was just fear or if it was something else. Okay, did you notice any unusual odor in the air? No, there wasn't any odor. Okay. Check for that. Oh, also during the, the second time we went up to it, I drove the car up on a hill. I have uh, one headlight out, and I would leave one headlight on. We were pointed up toward the sky where that star was and I'd flash the one light on to the brights and then turn them off. Uh -huh. And then I'd hit the one light and then flash the brights and turn them off. And I did that for a series for a minute, probably about. How close do you feel any one of those objects came to you? Oh, the area we were in and the area it lit up, it would have to be within 100 yards. Okay. 
Okay. You didn't pick up any sound while all this was going on? Just that one time. We had a window thrown down. Parent turned off. Okay. And when you were driving home, did you have any problems with the car? Uh, no, I didn't. Um, this morning, though, when uh, my mother came out to the car, she noticed that the tires had them, like, bleached to a white. And, uh, like, I just bought the car a couple of weeks ago, and I liked it because it had uh, nice black tires and come in and you tune it and now it looks like somebody took uh, some light spray paint, light spray paint gone over my tires and she took a picture of that but uh, they're up, they were coated with some kind of white and it wasn't dust. We tried to take it off and taste it. I tasted it and it wasn't there. Okay. Do you feel that uh, during that entire experience or at any time during the experience that you had any loss of time involved? Time went really fast, I know that much. It was 11.30 before we even knew it. It seemed like it took place within 20 minutes, really. Okay. So much kept going on. Now, your mother said you uh, chalked up quite a few miles last night. Do you feel you traveled that far? Uh, no, I didn't at all. It was kind of a fact driving home, I know. I didn't have any gas. I just put in six dollars worth yesterday. But I didn't think we drove that much. Did you have a wristwatch on? No, I didn't. We uh, knew what time it was by a uh, concert we were listening to. It started at nine o'clock, and the first album I just got over with. And they had a few commercials I gave the time, which was about... 943 or something, and we used to find the start of the other side of the album. Okay. Do you have any problems with the radio while that was going on? We turned it off. Okay. I thought about it, actually left it on. Okay. Oh, we sure appreciate your talking to us. Okay, I'm glad to have somebody listen. And uh, if anything unusual comes up through it, back to your memory that uh, you haven't mentioned, why write it down so you don't forget it and we'll probably get back to you later on to see if anything new has come up. Okay. Can I talk to your mother again? Yeah, here she is. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Yes. Well, we yes. sure appreciate the opportunity to talk to your son. He seems fairly uh, intelligent. Yes. Uh, he appears to be rather relaxed this evening. Yes, he is compared to you. Okay, now I have uh, one question. When you called the uh, command post at Lowry, did they mention anything about uh, other reports coming in? You know, I've stopped asking that type of thing for uh, having worked uh, in government things. See nothing and yet tell nothing. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I didn't ask them because uh -huh. I know there is mute. If they had 80 reports, they wouldn't tell you. Okay, did they have information on our organization at the command post? Yes. Okay, fine. See, now, uh, let me see here. Uh, I wrote this down. You know, a funny thing, many years ago when Orson Welles put on that program, I was in college at Ohio University. Right. And uh, I made a report on that. I took short story writing, and at the time, I got, I was with some of our friends, of course, it was all by radio, and this was in New Jersey where they were landing, I believe, and the people were out there, and the panic was terrific, and all of a sudden it occurred to me, I'll switch to another station. If this is a national emergency, uh, every station will carry it, and the moment I switched to another station, something else was on, but you know that these friends were crying, many of them, they were very frightened. And to tell the truth, I was a little frightened, too. But I just used my, my brain because, of course, as I, as I just told you, if it were a national emergency, of course, every station would do right. that. But that's probably how I got into this work. I might tell you I passed a test to work on the direct overseas communication, the hotline, during World War II, to the direct line to the front. Now, that's quite an honor, but I turned it down. Foolishly, I turned it down. This would have been in Arlington, Virginia. Oh, I see. Yep. 
I should have taken some of these opportunities, but they were really marvelous <coughs> opportunities. Now, what else? Can you make a... Is it possible that he can get a little report on this? I think he'd find this interesting for future, or you uh, don't. You don't like to reveal any of it, or could he have? Oh, well, if we, if, yes, if we, uh, once we get the, all the data together and uh, get it put into a report form, we'll see that he gets a copy. Would you let sure. him have it? You do have the address, don't you? Yes, I do. Uh, now, let me see here. You still want me to get a sample? Oh, that makes me shudder to think of him touching that stuff, uh, trying it out. But uh, probably it's normal. I can sh send you the pictures when I get to Fine, that would be great. Sure. Well, they're different. Believe me. It's different. Uh, as I say, I ordinarily would put my glasses on. You do get little, you do get nearsighted when you get to be 58. And, of course, I knew time he got out and around a little bit, it would wear off some. Yeah. Now, where is it that I could send the picture? Okay, our address is... Did you notice him telling about he wasn't sure about the time? Or right. it seemed like time passed differently? Right. This is uh, the usual thing? The passage of time is... Uh, they're not able to relate it to it? Quite us. often, yes. All right. Have you had any from the Denver area lately? No, ma'am, we haven't. Well, when I talked to them here at Lowry, they tell me they, that it sounds like they were out in the area of the arsenal. Uh-huh. Well, if we come up with any more information on this, why, we'll get back to it and let you know well, about it. Well, there really isn't any information to it. It's just that you, uh, uh, you there's nothing that you... It's a compilation, isn't it? Well, if we come up with any additional reports, well, I'm sure you'd but like you to But you haven't heard it. anything from Denver then, maybe. No, no. No, but uh, someone said that last Friday there was a report on it. So there have been sightings here. Uh -huh. It was on TV, on Channel 4, in the news. Right, okay. Yeah. Well, I will get these pictures developed. Do you want me to send them your attention? Yes, please. Yes, I just hope they work all right. I think they will. I took them around 8 o'clock this morning. No, 7.30 this morning. Yep. Okay, thanks right. again. I sure thank you for calling. Okay. Bye. Bye now. Hello, this is Cortez, Colorado. Yes. And uh, I would like to report an object that I saw in the sky this morning. Okay, we'd like to hear about it. Uh, it was sort of at the north end of the La Plata Mountains. Uh -huh. Looked like it was maybe north of Dolores, Colorado, and it was a very long, bright object, and uh, didn't move for about ten minutes. And then when it did move, uh, it never did change uh, shape. It never did get littler or bigger, you know. But it changed color. Uh -huh. It was bright orange, and uh, it would sort of fade out and then come back bright orange. And then about uh, the same time, a Frontier airline uh, took off, an aircraft took off, and it was headed directly for it. And then it leveled off, and uh, the plane went, was so far away that it went out of sight, and this thing was huge. In comparison to the plane? In comparison to the plane. Okay. And uh, looked like at that point, uh, it looked like it had a bright light on one end, and then maybe a vapor trail on the other end. But it was still the same shape. The okay. vapor trail was very small, you know, short. Now, you say that this was long. Did it have a defined shape of any kind? Uh, it was kind of a, a fused light is what it looked like. Uh -huh. You know, it, it wasn't really definable. Okay. But when it would fade out and come back, it would flash a light, like on the front of it, on one, you know, one end of it. Yes. And then the vapor trail would appear on the other end. So it was really strange. Okay, now, which direction were you looking at the time? Okay, I was looking northeast. Northeast, okay. From Don Woodard's trading post at the east end of Cortez. Okay. And did this object move across the sky, or did it stay stationary? It stayed stationary for about 10 minutes. 
and then it began to move and it would move a little ways and then stay there for the longest time you know like maybe well, i say the longest time maybe three minutes yes and then it would move again and it would stay there and uh, so i had a good comparison this morning i had a plane that flew right under it and the plane was about the same distance from the ground as it was from the thing up above it okay what time did you spot that? Uh, that was about 10 minutes till 7, about 12 minutes till 7. Now, did you watch this until it disappeared? No, sir, we didn't. We were on our way to work, so we uh -huh. <laughs> we didn't feel like we could stop. Uh, there were five of us that saw it. Okay. Now, at any time did this thing, did the light uh, decrease to the point where it looked like it might be a solid object? No. Okay. Not really. Okay. How are the sky conditions? Uh, it, okay. I saw one about three weeks ago. These are the first. This is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. You know, uh -huh. two sightings, and it was in the same general area, only a little bit south and east of this one. And uh, what was your question now? Or the sky conditions? The sky conditions, right. okay. They were the same general sky conditions. Clear sky, kind of grayish, um, green and pink okay. sky. Okay. Now, how long do you feel you watched that total? I think, I, I think we probably watched it for about 20 minutes. Okay. And during that entire time, it, other than the period when it was stationary, it would just move and then stop and move and stop? Yes, right. Okay. And twice it faded out and then came back with the bright light on the front, and the rest of it was orange, bright, bright orange. Okay. How about that bright light on front? What color was that? That was a white light. White, okay. Like. Do you feel that was quite a distance from you? Uh, yes. I felt like it was north kind of north of Cortez. Now, I don't know um, how, in comparison, that plane that took off this morning and went under it, um, like I said, the plane went out of sight, and there was that huge thing above it, so uh -huh. it had to be huge. Okay. Because the plane went directly under it, and the thing was still huge, and the plane disappeared, or, you know, went out of sight. Right. Okay. How many times much larger was the object than the fuselage of the aircraft? Okay, I would say it was about ten times bigger than Okay. The and where did you get our number? I got it from the local sheriff's department. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting the sighting, and uh, if we come up with any more information regarding uh, the object, well, I will get back to you and let you know. Oh, okay. Well, fine. I'd really appreciate that. I did call Frontier and ask them if they had any report from their pilot. Uh -huh. This thing was quite a bit higher than their plane, but uh, the pilot, they're going to have him call me back this afternoon, so we might hear something from him. Okay, and if he did see something, you might suggest that he give us a call. Okay, I surely will. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes, Center. Yes, this is Collette from Sergeant with the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. Can you accept charges? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, sir. Good morning. Yes, sir. Heard from uh, L.A. County Sheriff. Yes, sir. Got uh, uh, an experience Sunday night on the lower California desert where I think uh, I spotted uh, a UFO. Okay, let's hear about it. Well, uh, I've got to believe that there's a logical explanation, and yet I can't find one. We were uh, driving on uh, the old Highway 66, uh, just south of the new highway. Yes. Uh, 14 miles east of Amboy. And all of a sudden, it, uh, you know, not, not something that flashed on, but all of a sudden we were just conscious of a series of lights, yellowish cast to them, uh, that go, you know, went up into the air from uh, what appeared uh, pretty close to ground level. Yes. Uh, 
more up into the air, bending to the right, and then back to the left and up at the top uh, like a, a, a point. Uh, depth perception out on the desert at night. This is uh, 20 minutes of night at night. And our depth perception is, you know, is practically nothing. If it was, uh, if it was uh, something on a structure, the structure would would, would have had to have been within uh, a half of a mile of us, okay. and probably 500 feet tall, three to 500 feet anyway. Mm -hmm. If uh, what we saw, if the lights were further, say 20 or 30 miles, it would have to be on a 5,000 foot mountain. And uh, the lights, we saw the lights for, oh, probably 30 to 40 seconds. Mm -hmm. Then the, uh, the middle section faded slowly. They didn't just disappear. It faded slowly. The bottom section faded out. And then the lights on up to the top of the point faded out, uh, and the, uh, the point was the last one to fade out. Okay. And uh, there was a full moon. And I, you know, as I continued to drive west, uh, I looked out to, you know, to, to the left where, where we thought we saw these things. I, I could see no structure out there. And there isn't a mountain within 20 miles. <clears throat> okay, did you have a chance to count those lights? No, I would guess that there would be uh, around 20 to 25. Okay, now did they hold a straight line? Uh, stationary. Stationary. Absolutely okay. stationary. That's what makes me think it's on a structure of some kind out there, although I didn't see any structure. Okay. They didn't uh, didn't go up, didn't go down. They didn't change in relationship to each other. Okay. What was the date of that again? This was uh, Sunday night, which would be uh, Fifth. the 25th at uh, uh, 8.40. Okay. At 9 p.m. How were the sky conditions? Uh, very clear. Uh, there was some scattered uh, high clouds, but a full moon and uh, extremely clear. Okay. In which direction were you looking again? Uh, we were looking almost directly uh, west. Okay. Maybe, maybe 10 degrees south of uh, directly west. The size of those lights, can you compare them anything with anything? Well, there again, it's, it's hard to uh, say because I have no idea how right. far they were away from me. Okay. Uh, they could have, if, if say it was on a structure that uh, was uh, uh, oh, a half mile away, they, they, would, uh, they would have been probably 300-watt uh, bulbs. Right. But, of course, if it was, you know, a, a distance... Uh, of several miles, they uh, they would have to have been quite big and quite uh, quite powerful. Okay. And my wife also saw this. And you agreed that what you both saw then? Well, we didn't talk about it a, a great deal. Uh, I purposely didn't because I, uh, you know, I, if. If what we did see is, is unexplained, uh, whoever investigates it will want to talk to us separately. Uh -huh. Okay, you're with Los Angeles County? Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department. Okay. Mr. Sure, well, we sure appreciate your reporting this, and uh, if we get any further information on this, well, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, it's uh, it was a uh, big enough... Uh, uh, phenomena, whatever you want to call it. So somebody else uh, in that area, probably out on Highway 66 itself, uh -huh. the new highway, uh, must also have seen it. And there again, of course, if, it, if it's a structure out there in the desert that I couldn't see or didn't see, that's well, explained. Well, of course, if, they, if it had been a permanent structure out there, it would be the most likelihood that these lights never would have went out. Well, that's, that's the thing that... Uh, it gets me. It's they, you know, they, it, they didn't turn out like you would a light bulb. Right. It did not, you know, they they went dim and took, uh, oh, you know, four to six seconds to disappear when they started to dim. Right. And they did it one at a time. Okay. Were they bright enough to illuminate an area around that section? I don't, I, I couldn't really say. <laughs> There again, it uh, it was it was something up in the in the air, 
but uh, appeared to go from, uh, there was a, a mound in front of us, so uh, we couldn't see all the way to uh, desert floor level. Right. But it appeared to go from, uh, you know, pretty close to the ground up, and it, it it's no telling how far away it was. It, uh, there, there was, there was nothing that you could see in between the lights. Yes. If that's what you're driving. Right. Yeah. Uh, no, I could see no, uh, no structure, no form of right. any kind between the lights. Okay, good enough. All right, sir, we thank you again. We really appreciate your cooperation. Okay, thank you. Right. Bye. Bye. Even though I have people to call, but uh, LA Center referred me to you. Yes. And uh, are you? Do you work for the Air Force? No, sir. It's a private uh, scientific organization. Does the information help anybody? Yes. Because nobody else seems to care what I saw. So I, I... Yes, it's all. It all goes into uh, various research programs in this field. Oh. Okay. Well, uh, I'm a pilot for IBM. Yes. And we're at flight level four five zero. And. Uh, about 20 minutes ago, uh -huh. and we were uh, coming from Hawaii, and we were about 100 and, uh, well, right when I saw this guy, I, I took note of where we were about 150 miles uh, off the Santa Barbara, uh, off the Santa Barbara 195 radial. Okay. And uh, I thought about 450 on this, this uh, the target comes up, you know, right sort of right next to the wing, and um, I, he was getting closer and closer. And I said to the, uh, I said to LA Center, I said, "What's the distance and uh, the speed of that target?" And they said, "There's no target." And I said, "Well, there is." And they said, "No, there isn't." So I just let it go. I just thought that, you know, either it was an Air Force guy or something that wasn't on a flight plan or a primary target without a transponder. Are you a pilot? No, sir. But you know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yes. Okay. And um, it got closer, and uh, it, it was not an airplane. I can guarantee you it was not an airplane. It, it hovered right at our airspeed right next to us for about, uh, well, not next to us, I'd say a thousand feet away, but the same altitude, for about uh, eight or nine minutes, and then took off at the same altitude, about triple our speed. He was a speck in about... Uh, Less than 10 seconds, we couldn't see him. The visibility is perfect today. And then he, uh, he, he was sort of a speck and stayed in front of us, and we waited there, and then we caught up with him. And then he kept with us again for another two or three minutes, and then just climbed almost straight up. And uh, no thrust, no wings, uh, no visible, no sort of no direction to control it from. It just sort of just operate. No. Uh, no jet engines, no propellers. Okay, what was the defined shape? The saucer about uh, 80 feet in diameter and had floodlights on it, recessed floodlights that weren't turned on, but you could see the lenses. They were green, yellow, and uh, red. And... Were those around the perimeter? Around the perimeter, yeah. Okay. It, it didn't, th it didn't uh, rotate, it just... You know, it's right. stationary, station, right? But you could see there were lights. I mean, it looked like lights. And uh, no uh, no way to see out of it. No opening, no door or anything on it. It might have been a door on the underside. No thrust, no noise. And they couldn't see it on radar. And if we have radar on our plane, and we couldn't see it on our radar either. Did you pick up any turbulence from it? No, no. Okay. How about instrument interference? Uh, uh, everything worked fine. Okay. Okay. I know it sounds crazy, but I, I mean, okay. I, I've been in the Air Force, and I've flown for a long time, and I've seen, you know, I know what things look like, and this is broad daylight, and my co-pilot and myself are the only two in the plane. Nobody else is in it. Uh -huh. Okay, sir, how long did you have that under observation? Uh, the first time for about eight minutes, and the second time for about two minutes. Okay. Conservatively, because we used to have to... Uh, we used to have to gauge uh, gauge distance pretty accurately. Okay, did you get the uh, feeling that you were being watched? Mm, not really. I think whatever it was, it would be more interested in the airplane than in us. Okay. 
I don't know why I get that feeling, but I mean, there's no, there's no, uh, no windows or anything in it, so there's no way anything could look out of it. Okay. Did you get any more input from Los Angeles Center? We just told them what we saw, and they said, oh. That was, oh, I see. And they said, they don't. And they said, well, it's not on radar, and it's not a threat to you. And they said, it's probably just a reflection or something. And so I said, well, what should I do? And he said, well, don't do anything. Just stay there. So, so then, uh. When we landed, the med guy called off on the phone and said, do you want to, you want to report on me? He said, no, we don't care about that anymore. So he said, just call this number and they'll take the information. Okay. So I, don't know why they, I don't know why they don't care, but they don't seem to. Could we get your name? Yeah. London, WC2, England. Well, I fly for IBM. I'm, I fly one of the three aircraft we use for world... Uh, World transport. So I, if I'm not at lunch, I'm usually in the air somewhere. Oh, okay. If you have any trouble reaching me, my co-pilot has an address in the United States. Okay. What is his name? Well, sir, we sure appreciate you reporting this. I know it. It doesn't. Um, it's only you know his and my word, you know. But. Um, oh, no problem. Because the majority of these UFO reports uh, all come from single witnesses anyway. Oh. Or, Two at the most, in the, that's about the majority catalog. The thing that surprised me is we just, you know what the ADIZ is? Yes. The Air Defense Identification Zone? Right. Well, the radar at that point is very, very, you know, precise, and it can go all the way down to the surface for Russian aircraft. And they always, always tell you whenever you cross that to let them know because they'll send fighters after you if you don't tell them you cross it. And uh, we had just crossed it about five minutes before this and so I figured you know we're still inside that zone and they've got to see this guy but they didn't and so he, he went right through that that area without being uh, the speed conservatively I would say it was at Mach 3 okay is there any question in your mind about uh, or any doubt in your mind about this being a metallic object yeah there is I, I couldn't say it was metal because mm -hmm. it did, the sun didn't reflect off of it and you could see uh you can see it rippling the way canvas does on wings, on older airplanes. Mm -hmm. You can see the air had an effect on it. I can almost say for sure it wasn't metal. Okay. And uh, if it was a metal, we have a, a, uh, we have a particle sensor in, uh, in the airplane that we use for, uh, well, the airplane we just bought from Shell Oil. And Shell used it. They were using part of it for geographic, uh, geological things. Oh yes. And had metal sensor in it, and which can sense something to do with the earth. They can sense when you get into areas of higher metal, you know, metal content in the ground. Right. And it didn't register anything because we had it turned on. All right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate this very much. And if we come up with any more information on that, well, we'll get back to you and let you know. Neil, yeah, what do you do with the information now? Well, of course, we break it down, go through a data reduction system, then we feed it in or catalog it into the data bank, and then we use this data for the various research programs in our study in the uh, field of ufology. Well, the idea, though, I mean, you and other people believe that they, they're not from this planet, don't you? Right. I mean, that, there's no doubt about that, is there? No, we, we feel they're not manufactured here. We're, well, of course, it goes further than that. There's scientific organizations and uh, kind of off the total off the record unofficially I guess NASA's convinced they're coming from deep space they are so it's still a uh, very controversial subject but uh, we've been in this study for 22 years and we feel that they're coming from space yeah well this I said that this thing is very very maneuverable like it moves sideways once very rapidly, and I, I think it sort of had the power without too much trouble at all, just pushing us out of the sky. It's, I sort of got that impression. Uh -huh. I mean, it seemed, it seemed like it, it could, if it could move laterally, if it wanted to, you could have just sliced the ship in two with no trouble at all. Was that movement toward you? Uh, yeah, it uh -huh. was. It moved laterally, I'd say about 100 feet, and stopped, moved laterally back. But I mean, it was instant, like, you know, as long as it takes to blink your eye. Right. 
and the uh, acceleration was not because you know I, I used to when I used to chase uh, MiGs during the war, which are the MiG 25 is fairly powerful, and uh, when they get full thrust and full afterburner, it was fast, you know, but there was that momentary uh, delay while it, what it takes for the power to for the output to uh, have an effect, you know. Right. Well, this didn't have any, there's no uh, hesitation. It just went from R speed, which is about Mach uh, 9.4, to uh, about triple that. I mean, instantly, no no hesitation. No noise, no interference, no thrust. Stopped without slowing down. No, no, it sped up without. <clears throat> oh, yeah, then, then when we caught up with it, he was just sort of waiting there. I think he was, might have been hovering there. Uh-huh. Because we caught up to him pretty easily. I don't know why he went ahead and stopped. Well, that fits the pattern of other reports. And he stayed on the left side and the pilot side, my side, the whole time. He didn't he never crossed to the other side. Uh-huh. Which I don't think it sort of surprised me. I wonder if they know that the, the pilot commands it on the left side. Well, they pull, I think so, because they pull the same trick when they, uh, we have what we call close encounters involving vehicles on the roadway. The majority of the times they'll always come in on the driver's side. Yeah. But I had the feeling, I, I had a feeling of weakness there. I had a feeling that it would have been very easy for them just to, you know, have some sort of energy to push us out of the sky. You sort of I, get those feelings. You know. I think you're right. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, I decided to tell you, so you can know. Uh, and there was, there was a United Jet, uh, 4,000 feet above us during part of this, and they didn't see it at all. Uh-huh. We asked them, they were looking for it, and they didn't see it. So. All right, sure. Well, we thank you again. Okay, fine. Bye. Morning, Senator. Yes, this is in Union City, California. Yes, sir. And uh, I'm seeing something here that's uh, a lot of uh, small crafts that looks like they're letting out a... Uh, a screen that floats down like a spider web. Can you tell me what it is? No, would you explain that again? Okay, there's a lot of what looks like small planes, or a seagull that would be way high, uh-huh. and then they're letting out a smoke screen, and it, but it floats down like a spider web would float down, and it's one string, uh, like one strand of a web, uh-huh. and they're darting around in the sky, and then they'll seem to stop and just glide with a current. Um, I can see at least a dozen of them. And I just called Oakland Tower, uh, Oakland Airport, and they said they were getting a lot of reports of just spider webs in the sky in there, coming in, you know, from their pilot. Uh, now, is this like a a, uh, a white substance? Yes, uh-huh. like a it would be a film or something like a soap set film, but uh-huh. it, it hangs together like a uh, like a spider web would, and just kind of turns with the current. And drift down, it'll drift off. None of them seem to be landing close by where I can identify it. They seem to be drifting off to the hills. I see. Well, does this appear to be coming from an object or objects? Yeah, I can see the the object, but they're too high to identify at all. They're just little white dots. Okay. When did all this start? Oh, I've been watching it for about half an hour in the same area. Okay. And I just to verify that I live next to a park, and I went out and got one of the park maintenance guys who's mowing the lawn to. Uh, See if he saw the same thing, and he did. Okay, is this stuff falling nearby? No, uh, it seems to be drifting and not falling nearby, but you can see it very clearly with your eyes from where I'm at. I, I can see uh, 20 pieces of it just floating down now. Okay, which that. direction are you looking? Uh, almost straight up. Okay. In Union City, about the middle of Union City. And about which direction is that floating? Oh, it's floating over towards the hills, which would be uh, out towards the Pleasanton Fairground, something like that. Okay. And some of it seems to be going the other direction, out towards the bay. But most of it's towards the hills. Okay. Uh, how are the sky conditions? Clear. Uh, okay. A couple jet screens. That's all there is. And these objects up uh, up high, are they just white dots? Mm, yes. Okay. All right, sir, can we get your name? And where did you get our number? Uh, I got it from the uh, open uh, power. Okay. Where are you located? Where's 206 at? In Washington. Washington, D.C.? No, no, state of Washington. State of Washington, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay, well, we sure appreciate you reporting this, and 
We'll see if we can't find out what that stuff is coming okay, down. I did, see a, I did see a plane that looks like a military plane up there now, a light uh, jet. Around the white dots? Mm -hmm. It's just going across there now, but so possibly they're checking it out. Uh -huh. How many of those are there, do you know? The dots? Yeah. I'd say about a dozen. I can, and they seem to be in groups of three in three different places in the sky. Okay, can you actually see this white stuff emitting from those dots? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, sir, thanks again. Okay. And yeah, we'll uh, get back to you if we come me, up. Uh, drop me a card or something and let me know if you find out anything about it. Will do. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks again. Michigan. Okay, would you like to describe what you saw? Yeah, we was, out, we was outside playing in the, in the yard, uh -huh. and, then, uh, and then there's some clouds over over our house, and then there's some openings in the clouds, and, and big, we seen a beam of light shining through the clouds, uh -huh. then, and then the light was shining through the clouds, and it was passing by, and it saw us, and then a big light was shining down from the clouds, watching us, us. And then I, I looked up and I got scared. So I came inside. And then a after that, we, we, it looked like this. Who is this? And then after that, just, just a minute. Are you still there? Yes. And then, and then, and then, uh, it started moving over to Kent County Airport, but they didn't have nothing. No radars, they said. They didn't see it on the radar. Uh huh. Then, uh, and then it had no engine. It didn't even, didn't even make no noise. It, it, was, it was just watching us for a while. It was just a big beam of light coming down out of the sky. Yeah, yeah but but then, that, then when it started taking off, we seen a big, a big object. It had two blue, two big blue, uh, things. I think they were blue or black things. Uh huh. They was looking at us too, and then, then they stopped and they was looking at us. Okay, now this big object, where did that form at the at the end of this big beam of light? No, no, look, wait now. I, I, it was, we first look up and saw it coming through, coming over us. Okay. It was coming real slow, and then it stopped and it saw us. Okay, and at that, that, that time it looked just like a beam of light, right? Yeah, well, 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 but it stopped for about right. a couple seconds. Okay. Looking at it. Right. And then pretty, pretty soon this thing just turned into what looked like a big object? No, yeah, wait. When the light was shining down us, we could look up at it, and then we seen a big steel thing. But the light was on, was in this like socket. Oh. And then, and then it was looking down at us, and then, and then we seen around it, and it was round kind of. Another, okay, was that light actually coming from the steel thing? Yeah, it was coming from that socket that the light was put in. Okay. And it, it didn't make no sound or nothing, and it moved real slow. My mom seen it too. Okay, did you hear any sound? No, it was no sound. Okay, what time did you see that? Ten to eight. Okay. How long did you watch that? For about a minute. I mean, four seconds. Okay. And, and then, we, and then, and then I, I went back out. My brother said he seen it again. But this time it was sitting up in the sky, and it, it had, like, it, you know the airport thing where it goes round? Right. Well, well then, that, that had, had a big light, like, on top of it, but we didn't see it. I mean, it's guessing, and then it had, it was going round. We were slow looking for things. Okay. Now, do you, was this fairly low when it was over you? Yeah, it, it was just it was just above the clouds. I think they're called cumulus clouds. Okay. My mom seen it too. Okay. So did her friend. And and, uh, and right when that happened, right about a half hour that happened, a brother and his friend was back in the woods. Uh huh. And they they thought they seen a monster back there, a brown monster. What would that look like? They they say it looked like a brown monster. Oh. And, and one time I was back there, I seen a brown monster with yellow eyes. Oh, was that anywhere near where this object was at? Yeah. It, 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 the object is over uh, over in uh, Stopper Street where we live. Uh huh. And then and then uh the this all happened late earlier, a lot earlier. Before the object went over, and then it went over and looking around for us. And that was today, though. Yeah. Okay. Was this a fairly tall monster? A tall monster? Uh-huh. The one I seen was about eight feet tall. Okay, what about the one they saw today? The one they had, just a minute, how big was the monster you seen today? He was about eight feet tall, he said. Just a minute, I ain't got hold of the car. And it was almost dark. But the one I seen had yellow eyes. Okay.
Okay. And nobody believed me. Okay. But you... What color was the eyes of the one they saw today? What color was the eyes you see today? They, they just seen a black thing coming toward them. Okay. What's your address, Matt? That was Michigan. And I've seen the monster a whole bunch of times. Okay. But he don't scare me. Where'd you get our number, Matt? The Kentwood Airport. Kentwood, okay. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this to us, and if we get any more information on your sighting, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. Thanks a lot. Hello, sir. Yes. I'm mother. Uh-huh. And um, I did, there was definitely something in the sky, and it was not an airplane, it was not a helicopter. And I have another adult friend here that saw it also. It was just right over our house. I've never seen anything like that in my life. Did this thing have a defined shape? A defined shape? It, no, I couldn't say that it had a defined shape. It was a huge, well, a huge circle, and this huge beam of light was coming down. Straight down from the circle? It yeah. appeared to be I, straight down. Okay. And I'm about the at that time, when that beam was coming down above us, it was it, it was going slower, but that thing was really, um, once it started up again, or I say again, that's the way it appeared to be. It was going at uh, a faster rate of speed. Okay, now this uh, this light that came down from the bottom, was that in the form of a beam or a flared-out cone? A flared cone? It was round. It was round all the way down? Yeah. Okay. The, 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 the light, it, it started it started from a cone, and it got bigger like an ice cream cone, because it shined down around us. When the big part was on the bottom? Yeah, when it was shining on us, we all, I, I got started to get hot. Okay, now what color was that beam of light? Like a flashlight. Just white? Yeah, it's a white, that would be a white light. Yeah. Okay, did it actually illuminate the ground? Yeah, it was on the ground. It, it was shining from the sky, but it got us. But it was beam, it was okay. And then I came in, and then it didn't shine on us through me. Yeah. I didn't see that coming all the way down from the ground, but it was coming down from the sky quite, uh, quite a ways. But okay. there was not another light, nothing like a light you'd see on a plane or... Or anything. It just it was it's strange. Okay, then it came right down just from a circle of light. Yeah. That's all. That's all. Okay. About how high was that above your home? Ooh, when you say how high, I... I just it was an above estimate. The clouds, because it was shining. It was above the clouds. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate your uh, report. Could I get uh, your name? I was just wondering if the county, uh, Kent County Airport had received other calls on a white day at uh... I tell you, if we get any more information on this uh, particular incident, why, we'll get back to you and let you know. I gotta tell you something about, about that monster. Uh huh. Well, well my, you know the monster? Well, 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 when I seen him, and then, and then I was looking again, well, after I left, well, there was only a couple of footprints of where he was standing, and, and there was no other footprints of where he started walking away. It was like that. That you are so grabby or took him back up in the station. Okay. Okay, we thank you very much again, and if we get anything on it, we'll let you know. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. The floor reporting center. Yeah, um, I got your number from uh, L.A. Center. Yes, sir. And they said you might be interested in uh, something I saw. You bet we would. Okay. Um, I have my own jet on a Lear, uh, Lear 35. Yes. And uh, do you know where the thermal VOR is? Yes. Okay. We were just there about two hours ago, and uh, at flight level 430. <laughs> and uh, it's fine to sound nuts to you, but there was something, I mean, not very far away from us. Um, for about 10 minutes. Um, about double the size of the 747. It was uh, round, cigar-shaped. No thrust, no wings, no cockpit. Um, had no trouble at all moving. And we saw it off in the distance. It's not a full moon at night. We saw it off in the distance. And there was no lights on it. We weren't sure what it was. And as it got closer, we saw that it was you know, something. Yes. And um, he followed us along. He, he got close to us, and we asked uh, 
the center what that target was. And they said, there's no target there. And we said, yes, there is a target. And they said, no, there's no target. So then we asked them to switch on to the primary radar, you know, which can pick up targets without a transponder. And they did, and there's still no target. And so we didn't say anything else because we just got handed off to another section. And uh, he, uh, or Ed, was uh, right next to us for about 10 or 15 minutes. Okay, what was your altitude? 43,000. Okay. And what was your destination? Uh, San Francisco. That's it. We're from uh, Panama to San Francisco. Okay, now, did this, were you looking at something that was lighted, or were you looking no, at a, a solid object surrounded by light? No light. All we could see was a reflection off the moon. Okay. A dim outline, no light. Was there any question in your mind that this was metallic? It wasn't metallic. <clears throat> Because we, on the wings, we have, uh, on the wingtips of this airplane, we have uh, ground clearance lights, which shine out and yes. they shine up. And so when you're going and taxiing around an airport, you can see at the end of the wings. And we turned on those lights, and uh, there was no reflection. It was, I mean, it wasn't, we could see the skin for maybe about 30 seconds. We could see the skin. It wasn't metal. Uh -huh. It was like uh, foam rubber, something that was porous. But we only saw it for a second. It was a clear night, but the moon wasn't very full. Okay. And then as soon as he got within range, he, he was going parallel to us. He sort of got a little further away. He stayed about 50 feet from us. Okay. I'm not, I'm serious, 50 feet. Now, is this on the, your left side? Uh, on the pilot side, yeah. Pilot side, right. Side. Okay. And because um, I was a fighter pilot in Korea, and I know, you know, distances. Okay. Did you have any uh, turbulence at all while that was around? None. How about interference with uh, instruments or radio? None. Okay. Now, we didn't really see him come up on us. We saw him in the distance for a little bit, but we, wa we weren't sure what it was. The only reason we even knew what it was because... Are you a pilot? No, sir. Okay, well, on the back of a jet or all any, you know, jet aircraft, there's a red rotating beacon which is required, and, uh, you know, out of the corner of your eye, you see it reflect off the wing every, every time it revolves. But it started to not reflect the way it had been. And the reason was because this thing had come, uh, you know, is interfering with the light. And that's how we even know it. We wouldn't have noticed it if it wasn't for the, it was different on the wing, the reflection off our beacon. Right. So uh, that's how we noticed it. And then we thought it was just darkness. We didn't really think it was a shape, and then they got closer, and it was a shape. And we were absolutely positive that both, both my pilot, my co-pilot and myself saw it. How long did it maintain that 50-foot distance from you? Well, it was near there for about 15 minutes. It was only within 50 feet for about 10 minutes. Okay. Did you actually see this object move away out of sight? Yeah. Okay. Which direction was it moving? Ahead of us. Directly ahead, okay. At probably triple our speed. No acceleration problem, no uh, no buildup of speed. It just was at our airspeed to, I mean, almost... Instantaneous? Instantaneous, yeah. Okay, what were you traveling at the time? 0.82. Okay. You know, you know what that means? Eight. 0.82, that's mock, yeah. mock right. Mm -hmm. Okay, could I get your approximate location again? Uh, 23 miles north of the thermal VOR. Okay. Can I have your name, please? About what time did this occur? About two hours ago. Two hours. Okay, sir. If we need any additional information, can we feel free to communicate with you anytime? It's a lot easier in writing. It's right. almost impossible to call me. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this. And if we come up with any additional information as to what you've seen, why, we'll communicate with you. Yeah, what um, will you do with the information? Well, okay, this uh, goes into research. Now we'll gather all the data that we can on this particular report, then it goes through a data reduction system, 
and that uh, data goes into the data bank and is used in our research program and relating to the field of ufology. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, I can assure you this is not an airplane. You know? Uh huh. He's just too maneuverable and too fast for. Um, and also, that it wasn't. They didn't see him on radar, which surprised me. We all. We have also in cockpit radar. We have weather radar. And we had it turned on. There was nothing there. Still nothing there. Okay. Did this thing maintain its uh, density during the entire sighting, or did it change its glow or brightness at all at any no time? No glow, no brightness. Just reflection of the moon. Didn't change at all. No. Okay. I say the closest consistency would be like a maybe. A, it looks like a brownie sort of. You know, I couldn't see the color, but it, it looked like a porous, like styrofoam or something. Yes. It was brown. Well, I don't know if it's brown. I think it's brown or black in color. The, the color that we both of us saw for the instant was sort of a grayish brown. But it wasn't metal. Okay. How many years have you been flying? 25, 23. Long, long time. And I, I own a company of my own. We have our own. We have four jets of our own. And I fly myself every day. I was a pilot in Korea and a pilot in Vietnam. And I worked for United as a, as a co-pilot for a couple of years. All right, sir, we sure appreciate you reporting this, and like I say, if we get any more on it, we'll let you know. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay. Bye.
know there about it. That made it go the way it's about not. Uh, where we were, it looked like it was a lot faster than that. But anyway, it's, uh, all we can tell was just the connection of the market was a fairly fast rate. Yes. So I don't know, I'm still not convinced it was, uh, what's up? I thought maybe it might be a supersonic jet, but it didn't have any wings or tails back then. Frankie, go ahead and tell me what it's going to do about that story. Uh, it happened on October 26th, and we're about 50 miles west of Dallas-Fort Worth. Uh, our navigation equipment and our distance measuring equipment was unreliable, and the distance measuring equipment didn't work in a 180 degree area in front of us and our navigation equipment in front of us was way off uh -huh. while the object was in front of us and other than that that was about uh, the size of it on uh, on whatever happened but I guess it was about 15 20 minutes he was out there and when he heard, or whatever it was, when we started talking about it on the radio, that's when he started leaving the scene. I see. So, uh, and as soon as he left, we got all of our uh, radio gear back. Our navigation came back, and we were way off course. And the military pilot was supposed to call, too. Did, did you tell us whether or not he gave you a report on it? Pardon? You tell us whether or not the military pilot gave you a report on it. Uh, I don't uh, recall any such report, no. Mm -hmm. Well, Sunner's got the information. I don't know who was working it. Uh, but Fort Worth Sunner had it. It didn't take the time to say. And they relayed the message to us that the military pilot had made pursuit, had made contact and tried to make pursuit. Uh, he gave us the numbers of 430 knots. Uh -huh. That'd be about right for one of those trains. Uh, we just done uh, that. Uh, okay, I want to double check on, was that the uh, October 26th date of incident? Right. Okay. About, that say it was about 5 o'clock. Okay. And this thing was uh, dead ahead of you? Right. It was dead ahead, and I thought it was a, a, a light with the sun reflection on it, but it was just right out in front, and it was staying out in front of us. I'd say, uh, well, I don't know how big it was, but he was probably a couple, three miles ahead of us. And he stayed right there, right at our 12 o'clock position, until he started talking, until we started talking about the object. And nobody else saw it but uh, the military aircraft. And as soon as we started talking, it got smaller and smaller. And finally, it went straight up. But as it got smaller, it just went straight up. High speed? Mm-hmm. Okay. At a... Gosh, it was just like somebody, well, a 90-degree angle going straight up. So, and that's when we lost. Did that thing have a defined shape? Yeah, it was uh, like a like a ball. A Sphere? Ball. Okay. Sphere. Did it appear to be metallic? Well, it's far away. We could, so, I mean, it appeared to be. Yes. I'd say it, uh, the orange, orange glow on it, it probably was metallic. I don't know, though. Okay. The fair pilot got a close look at it. We did what Sunner told us. Of course, immediately, we tried three stations forward on our distance measuring instrument. Couldn't lock on to anything within 50 miles. We could swing it back behind us and lock on to 130, 125, 140 miles. Uh, yeah. At that altitude, we'd reach out 150, 160 miles easy on that DNA. If we couldn't get, we could get way cold, Fort Worth, or anything else. Uh, another thing, when the object started moving away from us, instead of an orange glow, it went to a white. So it started to increase speed? Okay. But anyway, I, uh, we just felt reluctant to call in. You know, anybody uh, supposed to be about two-thirds committed before you call and report something like this. Right. I told the runner, I said, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's something I mean, we can't both be imagined. Of course, the military pilot saw it, too, and he promised me that he'd contact the military pilot. I said, I'm not going to report him unless he does. He said, well, he had contacted him, and they had committed to report him. Okay. What was your visibility range that day? Uh, 50 feet. 
60 miles. Okay. It was clear. Can you compare any uh, this uh, object uh, for size with anything? Oh, no, because if it, was, if it was 3 to 5 miles, it was small. If it was 15 to 20 miles, it was big. Mm -hmm. Okay. You get many nut calls like this? Oh, this is no nut call. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to look back, uh, Robert, and check to see if anybody else sighted it on that date or yes. in Dallas? Yes. Uh, you bet I will, and if I find anything, I'll get back to you by mail and let you know. Okay. I would appreciate it if you don't hear anything. If, if Sunner doesn't, uh, there'd be no trouble finding out the Sunner man on this freight. And he, he insisted that we contact you. Right. And I said, well, I'll do it if you, if you tell me. If you contact a military pilot, come back and tell me that he's going to report it, we will. And he came back and told us that. Okay, did that the military pilot uh, give his uh, uh, base? He was on a different frequency. You see, he made us switch off. Uh, I don't, and I don't. I was glad he did. I don't want to hear a lot of people talk about this. But he switched off of us off on a high frequency. It would have to be somewhere around Waco or Dallas, Fort Worth area. Okay. Carville, Carville, or some Carville, New Mexico, or somewhere like that. But he knew who the pilot. He had the ID number on the military aircraft. Oh, great. Okay. I'm sure they still got their record. And it was Fort Worth Center. Okay. FAA's got the information. Uh. In fact, I don't know how long they hold tape, but they hold them how long for it? I think about 30 days. They've got the tape on it now. They've got a lot of, you know, anything like this, they'll destroy it. You said something about Nixon, well, they can still take it so they can just set it to New York Times. Right. Do y'all have some kind of mailer or, uh, uh, that comes out like a magazine or something like that once a month or quarterly or something like that? Uh, we, we have a... Uh, periodical uh, news sheet that we send out when there's, you know, enough information to put together and send one out. Would you like one? Yeah. Okay. Mark, you've, uh, put us on the mailing list. And what's your uh, mailing address, Frank? So you can put the same one. Same one, okay. Yeah. How about your telephone number? The same one. Same one, okay. Something yeah. in the office. Oh, I see. Okay, great. Something here, Chris. Uh, at the time, were you uh, uh, gentlemen flying due east? Right, the way we're flying to east. Well, let's see, no, we're 88 degrees, 85 degrees. Yeah, something, something like that. Okay. We're Midland to... Uh, we're on the jet route out of there, I think. Mm -hmm. Out of uh, Midland, Odessa. To about, it was 50 miles, about 50 miles west of Dallas, and we are probably more like 70. Uh-huh. When uh, the object first appeared. Okay. Well, I thank you again, gentlemen, and if we come up with any more information on this, we'll get back to you and let you know. I you appreciate it. know whether or not they, you get a report on that military aircraft because uh, they promised us that, and I think we might be able to uh, maybe get a hammer on that for you. Okay. Um, if you don't get it, would you let me know? Yes, sir. I don't mind raising a little help because uh, they promised us they did that. <laughs> Are you all a government organization or? Uh, no, sir. This is private research organization. Oh, private research. Right. Yeah. Okay, no, Robert. If you'll let us know if uh, if y'all are private research, just call call me back, collect. Okay. Call me first to person and let me know. And if you don't get that information from the FAA or from the center, uh, I've got a couple of pretty fair country congressman buddies up there. Maybe I can help if you get it. Okay, sir. Thanks again. Okay. Have Bye. a good day, Kevin. Right. You have a reporting center? Uh, yes. Uh, I'm calling from New Mexico. Yes, ma'am. From Farmington, New Mexico. Uh huh. And I'd like to find out. The airport told me to call you. Yes. If there had been any more reporting from this area, or if you would know of any UFOs. No, ma'am, we haven't had anything. Did you see something? Yes, I did. I wonder if you could tell us about it. Okay. I was coming from my parents' house last night. It was approximately 10 after 11. Uh-huh. And I seen something, and at first I thought it was a meteor. You know, isn't that the balls of fire that come down out of the sky? You know what I'm talking about? Right. Okay, I thought it was one of those, and I thought it was so big. And I didn't know what was happening. And I didn't realize how close I was to it until it hit just about 30 feet in front of my pickup, okay? Was that on the roadway? This was on the highway, right. Okay. And it hit and it turned blue, just a blue color. And then it just kept going on the highway. It was kind of like bouncing on the highway. 
and it sounded like when someone has a flat tire. Just kept making this noise. Yes. And I sit there and I watched it, and it went back up into the sky, and it would move, and it would stop in a certain place, and it would move again. And it wasn't real big. It was, gosh, I don't... Uh, about the size, I'll say, of a refrigerator, except round. Okay. It just looked like a ball of glowing blue. Uh-huh. And it just kept moving, and it would stop in certain spots, you know. Okay, I remember watching it. And then the next thing I remember is some car lights coming towards me. And I was about 15 miles from the place that I first seen this. And I don't remember getting from point A to point B. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. And I was about 15 miles from where I started off, and it didn't seem like I watched it, but just about maybe a minute or a minute and a half. And then when I got home, it had taken me an hour and 10 minutes to go like 22 miles. And I told my husband, and he said it was static electricity, but I don't believe it was. So this morning, when my little boy came and got in bed with me, he's two, he just kept telling me, light, Mama, light, light. And he must have seen it. Was he in the car with you? Yes, he was. Okay. Okay, now, you feel that it was an hour and ten minutes to go 21 miles? Yes, I asked, you know, I called my mom this morning, and I asked her, I said, it was 11 o'clock when I left your house, right? She said, right. And I did not get to my house till 10 after 12. Now, you've traveled this route many times before? Oh, yes. My parents live out at Chaco, and we live in Bloomfield. Okay, now how long does it usually take you? About, no. about 30 to 35 minutes. Okay. Which highway was that? Uh, highway... Oh, it was off of Highway 44 when I first seen it, you know. Uh-huh. And it... it was, all I know is that I can just tell you it's just a little highway off Highway okay. 44. Okay, okay, fine. And you watched this object as it came down out of the sky? Right. Was that coming straight down? No, it was going at... Um, it was coming at like an angle. Do you understand what yes. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It wasn't coming straight down. It was coming like an angle. Okay. And, it, you know, it just looked like a ball of fire. Right. So it hit the pavement the first time. And it was just a blue color. And it bounced down the highway in front of you? I don't I don't think you'd say bounced because it didn't, like, bounce like a ball. It hit the highway. It looked like it hit the highway and it would come back up, and it would hit it again. Okay. And then it just went right back up, and it did not go straight up. It went kind of more or less in an angle. And then I just watched it, you know, and it just, it'd go, like, in different motions, and it would just, like, stop in a certain place. Yes. And go some more. Okay, do you remember that object leaving the area? No, because, like I said, the last thing I remember is the car light. I was watching this, and then I seen the car light, and I was like 15 miles from where I first spotted it. That's when you saw the car light? Right. Okay. And I don't remember, you know, seeing it leave or anything. I just remember looking at the car light that was coming towards me. Okay. In other words, you watched the object, and then... The next thing you remember was the car lights coming towards you. All right. Okay. And then there was a loss of time. You feel there was a loss of time in there. Between right, the two. because I don't remember okay. leaving, you know, getting from how I got there. It was more like, like I was in a daze or something. And then when I got there, for that, you know, where I was at, I just thought, how did I get here? And I just didn't know because I don't remember driving it. Okay, did that take you beyond your original point of destination? No. Okay. But were you on the same highway? I was on the right highway and everything. Like, I have a turn-off 
Off of, I first seen it on this little highway, okay? Off of Highway 44. Yes. And I was on Highway 44 when I finally seen these car lights. Okay. Was there quite a bit of traffic on that Highway 44 after you saw the tra the headlights? Uh, maybe two or three cars. Okay. How old was your, uh, was that your, your son? Yes. Well, he's, he's two. Two, okay. Did you have any problems with the truck later? Not that I've noticed. Okay. Has anything strange occurred to you since this happened? No, I've been a little upset. Well, I'm pregnant anyhow, but, you know, nothing has really happened strange to me. I just didn't sleep last night. Okay. You got our number at the uh, Farmington Airport? Yes. Okay. Can you add anything else to this? Yeah, I want to... You asked me if anything different if I've noticed anything different about my vehicle. Well, when I got into, well, right out of Bloomfield, I noticed that it, you know, it didn't have the power that it did. You know, and it just now dawned on me when I was thinking about that. When you said that, it didn't quite uh -huh. hit me, but I, you know, right, not too long before I got into Bloomfield, it was, it wasn't picking up speed like it usually does. Okay. Uh, you were driving towards Bloomfield when this occurred? Uh, I was, yes, I was going to Bloomfield. Okay. Okay, would you be willing to talk to somebody if we could get them in there to see you? Uh, yes, I would. Did this uh, ball of light, did it to maintain its color and brilliance at all times while you were watching it? Yes, it did. This is, this is what is odd about this, is that it seemed like when it went back up into the air, it did not go back into fire like what it come down in. But it seemed like it went a long way off. Uh -huh. And I could still see it. And it didn't seem that big when it was in front of me. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. Uh huh. Okay. Sure appreciate your reporting this, and if uh, we'll try to get somebody in there, and if we come up with any more information as to what has happened, why well, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. Thanks a lot. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Morning, sir. Yes, my name is. And I live here in Walnut Creek. Uh huh. And I don't know if you ever heard of Rossmore. It's an elder retirement park and it's back in the hills. Okay. And I just came out of the hills in prison with my friend. And um, we saw an unidentified flying object land man. Okay, would you like to describe it? Um, it's like a saucer shape, right? And it's glowing bluish. Uh huh. Uh, did you see this in the sky? No, it's on the ground now. Okay. About what time did you spot that? Just now. Just I just took ten minutes to run down here and use a phone call in the pub here. Okay. About how close did you get to that? About fifty feet. Okay. Could you actually see a vehicle? See the, could you see the surface of an object? I could see it. It's plain as day. Okay. It's about 50 feet in diameter all around. Uh-huh. And it's about, it stands about six, six feet high off the ground. And it's on four prongs, right, on sticking into the ground. Okay. Was it still there after you left? Yeah. Yes, it was. Okay. As a matter of fact, a friend of mine is still up there watching it now. You didn't have a camera with you, did you? 
No, but it's still up there right now. Where'd you get our number? Um, I called the police station down here, and they told me that they gave me your number to call. Okay. You think that thing is still up there? Yes. Okay, are you camped up in that area? No, well, I live down in Walnut Creek here, and I was up there visiting a friend. He's still up there. Well, he's right by the, the thing now. Uh-huh. Is this pretty close to a roadway? Uh, no, it's, it's like, it's Rossmore sits up on top of the hill. And down in, in on, before you get to the road, it's about a mile. It's all hills between there. It's just a path we go up to walk to his house, though. Oh, I see. To Rossmore. And as we were walking back down, we saw it down there. Oh, you saw it when it was on the ground. You didn't see it right. come out of the sky? No, it was just sitting on the ground. Okay. Okay, well, we sure appreciate this, and we'll try to get a hold of somebody and possibly get them in there. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Hello there. How are you? Just fine, thank you. I am an Air Force pilot. Yes, sir. I saw something last night that I cannot explain. I was talking to Oakland Center, and they gave me your number, so here I am talking to you. Okay, we'd like to hear about it. Okay, what do you need to know? Full description of what you saw. Okay, uh, I was in a C-141. Uh-huh. At uh, 37,000 feet, we were coming from Travis Air Force Base down to Norton, and we were going to uh, Linden... Let's see, it was between the Linden VR and the Fresno VR. Okay. And I, at, at first it appeared as traffic off to, the, to my 9 o'clock. It looked like, uh, uh, it didn't look like standard uh, 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 position lights for an aircraft. It looked like two yellow lights of some kind. So I, uh, I called up there, and they looked close. So I called them up and asked them if I had traffic out there. They said I had a PSA jet going... Uh, south and uh, Navy A-4 going east. Well, PSA usually goes faster than us, and we weren't losing any ground to it. And the A-4 would have been going away from us, and it would have gotten, you know, smaller or dimmer or whatever. Yes. The intensity didn't change, and the object seemed to remain stationary to our position. Sometimes it looked like two yellow lights, and then sometimes it, it kind of came together as one. And the intensity changed, but not with regularity. Sometimes it would be dimmer than others. Sometimes, you know, bright. Right. Uh, we hit Fresno and then made a right turn coming down towards uh, Bakersfield. And as soon as we made that turn, it disappeared. Now, I, it seemed to me once that it came straight up into the, in, further into the sky and then back down. Now, I was the only one that saw that. Uh, the rest of the crew saw the light, and uh, opinion was divided between whether or not it was something on the ground or something low to the horizon. Now, the way I, I feel about it, it was to be that close to the horizon, it would have had to have been far in the distance on the ground. But, and then that, I can't see how it would have been that bright. I asked Senator if there were any kind of fires out there or, or something like that. He said not to his knowledge. Okay. What so, time, what time did you spot that? Uh, it was between 7.15 and 7.30 Pacific time last night. Okay. Any estimate of distance from you? Boy, you know, that's... My first estimate was, say, 20 miles. Uh-huh. But not knowing... Uh, you know, that was just going on intensity with, with what I know that I'm you know, judging with position lights and things like that. But, uh, you know, it could, if it was really bright, then it could have been God knows how far away. And I'm allowed to judge a distance anyway. But, you know, not knowing size or, or, you know, how bright the thing was close up, it's hard for me to say. But it didn't seem like it could be anything on the ground because uh, I don't know what line of sight is from 37,000. Right. But it was, it looked way too bright to be that far out and on the ground. It looked like something that was on, you know, close to the horizon from our perspective, but not exactly on the ground. Now, as we approached Fresno, it very slowly started to fall behind us. But then as soon as we made that turn, it was gone altogether. Did you actually see it disappear, or did you just lose sight of it? 
Well, I, you know, I was flying the airplane. I made, I, I was watching it. We made the turn. I looked back, and it was gone. Gone. Okay. And that was the space of just a several, you know, several seconds. Okay. Any problems with radio communication? No. Instrumentation? Uh, not caused by that because we've had problems. Uh, it had problems all the way back, so okay. nothing related to that. No. Okay. But how long do you feel you watched it? About, uh, between 20 and 25 minutes. Okay. <clears throat> Have you received any other thing like this from last night? No, the only thing we got out of California last night was a uh, object seen on the ground in the neighborhood of the Walnut Creek, which would be just a little east-northeast of the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. What was that described as? Uh, a disk about 50 feet in diameter. Well, we're not, you know, Walnut Creek is right around where Travis is. Right. And, uh, so, geez, I don't know. What, did they talk about any kind of lights on it or anything? No, they didn't. They didn't spend too much time in the area. They kind of scared them, and they took off. I don't believe them. <laughs> I'll tell you, sitting there and having center tell you there's no traffic out there is something that makes you want to go home and talk to your mother. <laughs> but, uh, it, like I said, it was, sometimes it looked like two lights or two objects, and then they would merge. And uh, they remained stationary, and then at the end, very gradually, it, it appeared as though it had fallen behind us a bit. Now, uh, when that appeared to merge, did the objects move together, or did the light just expand and then come together? Oh, boy. Let's see. Which, well, the lights... See, that's all. That's the only objects that I saw were the light. Right. Uh, the lights came together, but when they came together, the, the intensity or the, the size of, of those objects became larger. So it was like, uh, you know what I mean? Right. Okay. okay. I think that's the best way I can describe it without confusing you. Okay, very good. Could we get your name, sir? Sure. How many were uh, aboard? Or how many saw that? Oh, let's see. There was me, my co-pilot, both my engineers, my nav, my load. There was an ACM, so what are we talking? Seven people. Seven. Maybe okay. eight. There's, no, no. He had gotten off before. Seven people. Okay. Did you all agree what you saw? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the first thought was maybe that it was a star coming up, that it didn't rise. And uh, my nav said that it was not a star. Uh, the guy that was just hitching a ride with us down here said that it looked like something on the ground uh -huh. at a great distance away. Well, that I couldn't buy because of the intensity of the light. If it was that far away and it was that bright to me, good Lord, if, if it was close, it would have lit up the whole sky. So, uh, unless there was some mammoth forest fire out there or something. But like I said, I talked to Center, and, uh, and he had no knowledge of any anything like that out there. You were flying due south when you first spotted that? Uh, just a minute. <clears throat> we came out of Travis, and, and we headed down to, to uh, Linden, which is uh, southeast. Yeah, okay. Okay, that's when we first spotted. Now, did you spot that dead ahead or to your left? Uh... It was to our left. Okay. Then, as we, uh, wait a minute, no, I, I, may, I may be leading you astray, because I didn't question it until we were heading Linden south to Fresno. Let me look at my map here, maybe jar my memory, if I can find out where the hell I was at. Okay, there's Fresno. Is Linden a town up there? Do you know? Yes. Okay, well, I find Fresno. Here's Stockton. Okay, uh, I think that, well, the first time that I questioned the controller about it, we had just turned south. Linden going to Fresno. Okay. Okay. And so I'd say that it, it was, uh, that's the first time that I noticed it. And if that's in fact the case, then it was at my 9 o'clock, 9 to 10 o'clock. Okay. And he mentioned the Navy and the PSA jets. And uh, as I watched, neither one of those made sense. Okay. And he pulled up all other traffic and all other sectors out there and didn't have a thing. 
How's your visibility range? That's well, clear to me. Clear, okay. All right, sir. What was your rank? Right now, I'm a lieutenant okay. for five more days. Okay. So I guess I'll give you that one. Okay, well, we sure appreciate your making this report, and if we come up with any more information of activity in that area, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay, I'd appreciate that. Well, I'll hang on to your number, because, of course, I've only been flying for seven years, and this is the first one I've seen, but God only knows. But, y yeah, if you do, uh, you know, come up with some, you know, idea on, you know, verified other sightings or something like that, I'd really be interested. Okay. So if you could drop me a line or whatever, I'd appreciate it. Now, you were talking to Oakland Center? Oakland Center. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. You bet. Bye. Bye. Well, reporting Center? Yeah, are you part of the Air Force? No, sir. Um, if I tell you something, will it do any good? Does anyone, you know, well, will accomplish is, anything? This is a private scientific research organization, and we're gathering all the information we can on this subject. Oh, do you give it to the government, or...? No, it's uh, used for private uh, research. Well, th has it helped any in the, the past? Uh... Oh, yes. Oh, it, I mean, are you starting to see any patterns or anything? Oh, we've seen several patterns for many years. Oh. Okay, well, I'll tell you what I saw, then. You can tell me if it's more than a thing to Okay. Do you want to ask questions, or should I just tell oh, you? Well, just go ahead and describe what you saw. Okay, I'm a... Uh... I'm not supposed to be telling you this, but I fly for the CIA. I'm a reconnaissance pilot. Uh-huh. And I just came from Tokyo. I just landed about uh, about 10 minutes ago at the flight level 510. And about halfway between, <clears throat> I'd say about halfway in a straight line between Tokyo and Hawaii. Uh-huh. I was about halfway, I'm not sure. I was out of radar contact, just on my own alone there. But I was still in radio contact, and this, this is, uh, I don't, is it a full moon? I don't know if it's a full moon or not, but it's very bright out there in the ocean. And this thing came up to me, no wings, about double the length of my airplane. I was flying a Phantom F-411, uh -huh. but double the length, which would be about 45 feet, round-shaped, uh, not circular, but more triangular, but uh, no, no bottom and no top, all they were equidistant sides of the triangle. And they weren't sharp. Uh, they were sort of rounded off edges. And the ends of it were flat. And no noise, no wings, no thrust, no windows, no, uh, you know, nothing which uh, would give it a reason to fly. No appendages of any kind? No, nothing. Okay. And on the sides of a phantom, I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they, we do have uh, very high-intensity spotlights, which are built into the fuselage, which you can see to the side of an aircraft. They're used to, when you're loading up bombs at night at the runway, you turn them on so the guys can see, so they put the bombs underneath them. Yes. And so I turned the lights on the side and saw a very clear picture of it. I mean, it's, it's, it was there. It wasn't my imagination. Did the light have to actually reflect off this thing or illuminate it? No, it didn't reflect it. It was a porous material, probably. Well, it looked like sponge rubber is what it looked like. I, I, but it was not metallic. Uh -huh. You could see pores in it. You couldn't see pores, but it looked like uh, maybe asphalt would look from a distance, something like that. But I mean, is it that light actually illuminated? No. It okay. just sort of went ahead and hit it. Okay. Didn't bounce off or anything. How close did this thing get? The closest it got was about 70 feet from the wings. Now, I have radar, and it was on radar, and uh, the image doesn't, you know, it wouldn't reflect that close, but I, it got up to about 50 feet <clears throat> from the left wing, and then uh, as far as about 200 feet, and it stayed there for about a half an hour. Okay. This is at Mach 2.2, uh, which is roughly you know, 1,900 miles an hour. Did you see this as it was coming in toward you? <clears throat> I didn't see him come up on me, no. I just sort of looked over and it was there. And then I looked and looked and looked, and I thought, well, I just, you know, a shadow or something. So I oh, turned on all the lights on that side, and it was definitely there. I could see the dimension. I could see the top and the bottom and the end of it. The dimensions of the height, I'd say, were, um, oh, I'd say probably 10 feet. 10 feet by 10 feet. Okay. Was this thing laying flat, or was it to have the apex up? It had the apex. It always had the apex up, but the 
it would slowly rotate in the apex. I think in the, all the time it was there, it started from the apex being up to the apex completely rotating around. It took about 15 minutes to do it. I see. And it would move a little bit and stop, move a little bit and stop, move a little bit and stop. It didn't look like that was necessary for flight. It looked like that. I think they just, I think it was just turning for, I don't know why, but it wasn't necessary for flight. You could tell that. And did it maintain the same position uh, in relation to you while it was doing this? Mm, more or less, yeah, I'd okay. say. But it, it didn't stay close to me very long. It only stayed 50 feet for about a couple of minutes. It stayed just out of real good sight most of the time. It seemed, I mean, it might sound crazy, but they seemed to know what was good sight and what wasn't for me. I have perfect vision 20-20, and I'm a, <clears throat> I'm a, uh, a captain in naval intelligence, but I've been working for the CIA for the last two years. Okay. Did you get any buffeting off of this? No, none. No, uh, no buffeting, no turbulence, nothing. Okay, how about uh, instrument interference? No, perfect. Okay. Were you in contact with any ground stations for radar check? Uh, there's no radar in that area. I, I tried three times to see if... I was in communications with somebody and asked if there was aircraft in my area that was, you know, maybe a little off course, and they said, no, the closest aircraft was 400 miles away, they said. And I said, you absolutely paused, and they said, yeah, and there was two radar ships, but they were both out of range. And oddly enough, he disappeared right when, we, when I, he, this guy said, well, you'll be in range in about three minutes. And about a minute after that, this guy pulled away. Okay. Did you get the impression you were being observed? Uh, I think the air. I think they're more interested in the airplane than they were in me. Okay. But I did have that impression. Yeah. I also had the impression that they knew what was going on. I mean, I know it sounds sounds a little nutty, but no one else seems to care about it. I've been flying all my life. I know what an airplane is and what it isn't. There's not that many airplanes that can go as fast as that at that altitude. First of all, you know, two point two is pretty all fast. Right. You bet. Did you have any unusual physical or mental sensations while all this was going on? No. Okay. The only thing that sort of bothers me is I haven't slept for about 30 hours, but that's not any big deal for me. I've done a lot before. I just I just was coming from uh, from two other missions, and I just hadn't got a chance to sleep. And I just wanted to get home, so I I've been flying a long time, but I, like I say, I've done that a lot, so it's nothing. I mean, I. I've been able to do that before, so... Okay. And you would definitely say that the surface of that, or the texture of the surface was pitted? Yeah, not big holes, but uh -huh. it was rough. Rough, okay. It wasn't metallic. And what was your altitude? Uh, flight level 510. I did climb a little bit to see what sort of... I was curious. I climbed up to 60,000 feet almost instantly at that... I don't know if you're familiar with that plane. Are you a pilot? No, sir. Well, that plane can climb very fast. It's one of the best planes we have. In fact, its actual top speed is classified. But, anyways, I gave it full power and uh, put the nose up to 60,000 feet. And there's only maybe eight or ten other aircraft in the whole world that can keep up with that. And this thing kept up with no strain at all, you know. I mean, no effort at all. It kept right next to me. And he started to move almost instantly when I did, like he knew I was going to do that. Moved right left, along. What's that? Moved right along with you. Yeah, no problem okay. at all. Now, when he left me, I uh, I went up to 60,000 feet and sort of stayed there for a while and put into a dive to see if I could outrun him. And from 60,000 feet to about 49, I got it up to about 3 point something Mach, which is really moving. He stayed right up with me with no problem at all. And then the guy said, well, you'll be within radar range in about three or four minutes. And about a minute after that, he pulled away from me going forward at at least triple the speed with no effort at all. I mean, I mean, no acceleration. He just was there, then he was a speck, and then he was gone. Okay. At the same altitude. Do you remember the time on that? Well, this is about, uh, I'd say 12 hours ago. No, about 10 hours ago. Okay. And how long did that whole event take place? 
I'd say altogether about half an hour, 20 minutes, half an hour. Okay. I did get the time, but the time was uh, Korean time. I can't remember whether I... It, it would be an hour off if I even gave you the time. I, it was just... I can't remember if it was 4 a.m. or 4 p.m. It was one or the other Korean time. Okay. I can't remember if I reset the clock or not when I left Korea. Okay. Is there any chance of getting your name? Yeah. Um, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, Anything in case we want to get back to you? You can get to my commanding officer, and he can get to me, but I'm not really tell, supposed to tell you. I'm not even supposed to tell you that I was doing this. Uh-huh. But uh, my commanding officer name is, and he's uh, Chief of Naval Intelligence at the Pentagon. Now, I'm always in contact with him. He's my superior, and... Uh, Okay. That would be just sent to the interior of the Navy Department. No, care of Office of Naval Intelligence, uh, Admiral Collins, uh, Pentagon, Washington, D.C. Okay. But the main thing I want to tell you is he, this thing had no, you know, like you can sort of tell if an aircraft is, is really working to keep up with you speed-wise. I mean, it sort of has characteristics, but this had no effort at all keeping up with me, and there's no lag. I mean, they can accelerate or decelerate as fast as they want to, go up and down as fast as they want to. It was not a, it defied all the laws of aerodynamics. There's no reason for it to fly. Okay, when this thing pulled away from you, was it uh, at high speed? Yeah, it was next to me. Um, within 10 seconds, it was a spec. And uh, it's back on the radar. The radar screen I had is about uh, 150 mile range. I can tell you the speed exactly. It took it uh, less than 10 seconds to get off the ra radar range. Less than 10 seconds to go 150 miles. And I saw it going across the radar range. And then okay. I, then we have a, on the radar you can, uh, there's three modes. There's 150 miles, there's 250 miles, and 500 miles. And so to see it on the 500-mile range, I upped the range from 150 to 500. And the time it took me to flip the switch, which is another three seconds, it had already gone past the 500-mile range because it wasn't on the radar anymore, which means it had already gone through that other ring. You can imagine a circle, 500-mile circle around you. That's what it's like. Mm. And we have intelligence radar, which is the best you can get. I mean, it, you, can, you can pick up a, a skydiver 400 miles away, in, the, in, you know, free-falling skydive, it'll pick up on our radar. Did this thing leave any trail as it took off? You know, we have uh, Hawker heat-sensing missiles, and the heat-sensing missile has a computer which can track the uh, exhaust of a jet. Uh, the exhaust of a jet stays in the sky the same way a wave in water stays in the water. You can track it the same way. Well. That computer was on two, and there was no thrust, no heat, no energy coming from this. Okay. But this thing will sense heat up to 20 miles away at that altitude, and there was no heat coming out of this. And that's very sensitive also. I mean, you can start up a gasoline engine, you know, in a car 20 miles away from this thing, and turn on the missile, and it will find the heat and then blow it up. That's how accurate it is. Okay, did you get a good... Uh a solid return on your radar? Perfect, yeah. Okay. What surprised me? Yeah, it was perfect. Okay, I can tell you that the, uh, just from the research and uh, uh, data bank information that we keep, that the triangular-shaped object is uh, becoming quite common. Uh, Someone else has seen it, you mean? Pardon? Someone else has seen it? The, the OAS, the triangular-shaped object, has been seen many times. Oh. I'm a little surprised that you didn't see some kind of colored light system on it because... Uh, no lights. No lights, okay. But uh, they're getting to be quite a common object reported by witnesses. Do you have an idea where they come from? Oh, uh, no. The, those associated in the field of ufology are kicking around all kinds of theories. Uh, some think they're from outer space and some think they're some sort of a uh, time 
travel or something coming from another dimension or a parallel universe or something. I'm not the only one that's seen these things. No. I mean, other people have seen these things. Well, that's good to know. Oh, yes. Yeah. They've been seen at close range by ground witnesses. Yeah, well, do you have a, a magazine or anything you print? We put out a, a, a publication periodically with to keep people up on the latest events. Uh, uh, could, could I receive that? Oh, sure. Could you send it to my brother? Would that be okay? Sure. Um, okay, why don't you send it to... Uh... Sure, we will do. Yeah, I don't know if it helped you to tell you this, but uh, the people at the approach control in the Navy, didn't, they didn't seem to care. Was this in uh, Honolulu? Well, Honolulu approach control. And Honolulu, the Navy there didn't seem to care. Uh -huh. And the same thing in San Francisco. Okay. Did you get our numbers from the people in uh, San Francisco? Or Honolulu. Honolulu, okay. So, I, you know, I don't know. Uh, well, I think that uh, the people that are associated with the flight controls, FAA and so forth, they... They've been hung up, you know, given so much responsibility in this field, and it's given, given them such a headache over the years. They just, they're trying to get it off of their back. Mm -hmm. It seems like every time the FAA gets uh, in the press associated with UFO sightings and these people at the various FAA facilities are hounded by the public and answering, uh, they're doing more time answering the phone uh, in relation to UFOs than they're doing, taking care of their job. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to speed up and get around him and see what the other side of this thing looked like. But uh, I could not run him. He could slow down and speed up as fast as I could. A Phantom can go from 2.2 .2 Mach to uh, 50 miles an hour in about uh, 10 seconds. That's how fast he can slow down if you wanted to. Uh -huh. And I tried that, and he slowed down just as fast. There's very few airplanes that can keep up with a Phantom. There's no Russian airplanes that can. So I, it either it's one of ours or it's somewhere else. But like I said, there's no reason for it to fly. It has no energy coming out of it, no heat, no power source, nothing. Yeah, a lot of scientists that are working on this feel that uh, these things are associated with uh, some kind of a technology which has a, a laws of physics completely different from our own. Hmm. Well, has anyone ever reported you know, seeing one up close and touching it? Oh, yes. It's not a common thing. Uh, close approaches are common, but uh, having the opportunity to touch one is not, but it has happened. And what does it feel like? Well, uh, all of those that uh, we have on record uh, claim that uh, it appeared to them to be a very solid or metallic object of some kind. Someday one of them has to land and talk to somebody, right? Well, there's claims of that, too. But unfortunately, there's just no physical evidence to back it up. Hmm. And uh, that's what uh, the scientific community wants right now. There's a mountain of statistical evidence in relation to this subject, plus a lot of good photographs, and there's some really some good films around, and... Uh, and qualified witnesses, a testimony who, you know, have seen these at close range, but uh, the scientists and the scientific community in general, they want physical evidence, mm -hmm. which seems to be very hard to come by. Well, I'd rather know I'm not crazy. At least somebody else has seen what I have, so. Well, we sure appreciate the report. Well, good. Well, thank you very much. Okay. okay. Good luck. Reporting center? Uh, yeah, I'd like to report a UFO. All right, sir. Would you like to describe what you saw? Okay, it was a solid white light, and it was moving across the sky, and then it stopped in midair, and it turned green, and the lights were rotating, and then it started moving up again, and then they turned red, and it was over a power station, and about three seconds after that, it started moving across the sky real fast, and in about three seconds it was gone. 
and there was a plane right above it. Okay, what time did you spot that? It was about 10 o'clock at night, 10 p.m. Was that last night? Yeah, last night. Okay. Okay, now you say this was a solid white light when you first saw it? Yeah. Then did you see colored lights on it? Yeah. Okay. About how long did you watch that? Total? It was about three minutes, three or four minutes. We sat there and watched it. And this thing definitely came to a dead stop while you were watching it? Yeah, it was a solid white light, and then it came to a dead stop. Okay. And then it turned green, and then it started moving up again, and turned red, and then it disappeared. Okay. And it gave the impression of, that the thing was rotating? Yeah, it was rotating like a saucer. Okay. Did this light have a defined shape of any kind? Um, which light, the white or green? The one that was white. Okay, the white was like in a circle. Okay. Do you have any estimate of how far it was from you? All right, it was about a half mile away. Okay. Do you have any estimate of altitude at its closest point to the ground? How far up was it? <clears throat> about 2,000 feet. Okay. Now, when it stopped over that <clears throat> power plant, did it uh, stay there very long? Yeah, it stopped about maybe um, t 10 seconds it stopped. Okay. And did you watch this while it disappeared? Yeah. Okay. It took about four seconds and it disappeared. All right. Which direction was it moving when it went away? Which direction was it moving? Heading east when it left. To the east. Okay. It came from the south and then it left to the east. Okay. Where'd you get our number? Um, Quad City Airport. Okay. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this, and if we come up with any more information as to what you observed, we'll get back to you and let you know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Yes, Air Force Weather Observing Center is calling collect from King Salmon, Alaska. Will you accept the charge? Yes. Go ahead. Yes, this is uh, Airman's Week at King Salmon, Alaska. Yes, sir. We had a, on our logbook, we had her had a report of uh, two sightings last night, or excuse me, one sighting of two UFOs off to the north of our station here, reported from last night and the night previous. We just got the number to uh, call you people. Okay, do you have a description of those? Oh, uh, the only thing you put down was that there were two uh, bright lights moving erratically through the sky. Okay, and this was last night? Yes, last night and the previous evening. Okay. Do you have any times involved there? Negative. He didn't uh, say. Okay. He couldn't. He couldn't recall. I, I just gotten talking to him to try to you know, verify. That is your Okay. We also had uh, a uh, guy up in the uh, our control tower here. His uh, daughter saw them also, and they were we used a verification of the Air Force weather observer. And uh, this was just two bright lights moving erratically, right? Yeah. Okay. Moving erratically through the sky. Do you have any names of witnesses there? Yeah. One witness would be, uh, uh, the best address I can give you would be, uh, uh, King Salmon, Alaska. Okay. APO Seattle 98713. All right, sir. And your name again? My name is uh, Airman. Okay. We sure appreciate it. Thank you very much. I'll tell you what, uh, if you try to see anything tonight, uh, I'll be sure and give you a call back and try to get you a better description of them. Thank you very much. You bet. Bye. Reporting center. Will you accept a collect call from the Defense Department? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, how are you doing? Good afternoon, sir. I'm calling from Point Magoo, California. Yes. The Naval Air Station? Yes, sir. <clears throat> we have a... Are you interested in old sightings? Sure. Okay, this occurred on the 11th of uh, December. Okay. And uh, I'm an approach controller. I was working the radar scope. And uh, I'll read you the statement of that prepared. How's that? Great. Okay, at approximately 8 p.m. local time on the 11th of December, I observed three 
to four targets on the radar scope, three to five nautical miles north of the Ventura Vortex. Am I going too fast? No, sir. Okay. Paragraph two. As it was a slow night, I paid particular attention to these targets. The movement, when it could be observed, was rapid, and then they uh, appeared to jump five miles in a, a sweep of the scope. A couple minutes later, there was a light civil aircraft making an ILS to the Oxnard Airport. I called the traffic. One target appeared stationary on the ILS final approach course. And he said uh, he had contact with the target, and I asked him to describe it. All he said was that it had a strobe light and was between seven and 9,000 feet. Okay? Okay, great. Okay, now at approximately 9.15, Golden West flight, which is a commuter airline down here, was outbound from Oxnard Airport to Los Angeles International. I had been out on a break, and when I came back in to work the radar, these uh, three or four targets were still visible on the scope. Okay, when uh, this Golden West flight was a beam of the Ventura Vortex, I called the traffic and told him to look high. He was at 5,000, by the way. Okay. He replied, contact. And after a pause, he said that he saw strobe lights and noticed vertical movement of the traffic. So I asked him to call me on the phone after he landed at Los Angeles. And the last portion, the pilot, I have his name if you're interested. Sure. Mr. Uh -huh. called and said that after he'd been handed off to Los Angeles Center, that the target made a pass on him approximately over Malibu Beach. By this time, I think he was climbing to 7,000. <laughs> he said the speed of the contact was extremely fast. And he first saw it in his 10 o'clock position. He said that he saw a green and amber light, very bright, and that he would classify it as a UFO. Okay. That's it. Great. We don't, we don't have any videotape, uh, <clears throat> you know. Right. It did uh, make a pretty, uh, pretty good impression on this pilot. And he works for Golden West Airlines, so I'm sure you can get all of them. Okay, you didn't give, leave any telephone number? <clears throat> no, I don't have okay. a number for him. Okay. But Golden West, I believe, is based in Los Angeles. I'm not even sure of that. Okay. All right, sir, can we get your name? Surely. My name is Naval Air Station, Point Magoo, California, 93042. And there was... Uh, Another fellow that witnessed the same uh, deal on the scope, you know, that I'm telling you about. Yes. And he's a Navy chief by the name of... Um, Type aircraft, you know. Well, I, the reason <clears throat> that my attention was drawn to these targets is that they were not like any uh, aircraft target I've ever seen on a scope. I see. And uh, then when I had one of them sort of hovering on the ILS final approach course, as and then I got a visual contact out of it, then I started getting a little suspicious. Okay. So you see they were moving on the scope, were they uh, moving at high speed? Well, when they did move, like I said, they jumped uh, radically. I see. Uh, like I, I think I mentioned that uh, one of them moved five miles, and they were very small targets. Okay. Did you compute any speed? No, okay. but uh, we don't have any kind of speed uh, readout system. I see, okay. But I did notice that one of one of the targets jumped five miles in what appeared to be the split second. That's right, sir. Well, we sure appreciate you reporting this. 
All right. Very good. Thank you very much. We'll see you later. Right. Bye. UFO reporting center. What calls me? With Golden West Airlines? Yes, uh, we'll take that. Thank you. Hello, sir. Uh, this is Alan Dredge. Are you uh, Mr. Uh, Gribble? Is that it? No. Would you like to speak to Mr. Gribble? Well, I received a letter from you people uh, January the 22nd regarding a UFO sighting, and uh, it was just a letter that uh, you would like to have me call. Okay. Hold on, please. Yes, sir. Is Bob Gribble speaking? Yes, I received your letter January 22nd. Yes. And uh, I'm with Golden West Airlines, and uh, I haven't called you up until uh, this point. I've given it an awful lot of thought, but uh, I've just kind of been somewhat reluctant to uh, talk about this UFO that uh, my first officer and I experienced one night. Okay, we understand that very well. But uh, what we would like to do is get a description of what you saw and... Uh, did you want that now? Yes, sir, please. Okay, the name? Uh-huh. And I'm a captain for Golden West Airlines. Yes. And uh, on the evening that uh, this happened, I really saw no uh, object as such. But uh, I was with uh, Magoo Radar around the Ventura area. It's about 35 miles west of Los Angeles. Yes. And uh, as I broke out of an overcast of about 3,000 feet, their comment to me was uh, not in normal reporting traffic. They said, by the way, Golden West, do you happen to have an object at your 10 o'clock position? And at the time, I did not. And uh, shortly thereafter, of course, it got my curious up, curiosity up. My first officer and I continued to look. And then uh, we saw a lighting system like I have never seen before. It was, uh, oh, several lights, but uh, and they were very circular in... Uh, in uh, the way that they uh, flashed. And uh, about the time I saw one at 10 o'clock, probably two to three miles away from me, I saw another one at my 9 o'clock position. And at that time, I asked Magoo Radar if he had that one. And he didn't have them. And to make a long story short, as we proceeded into the Los Angeles area, uh, we watched these objects off of our left side, and uh, their uh, movement was uh, very geometric, not like... Uh, well, something like a, a helicopter might do, but, of course, uh, when they would uh, move in the different directions, their speed were quite rapid. But in the sky, it's my first impression was it looked like uh, something you might see if they advertise on television, these uh, little uh, games that you have, these little knobs you move around. Yes. And uh, about, uh, oh, I'd say uh, after we first spotted it, uh, I had turned, told my first officer to turn off our lights because my strobes were getting in the way and I couldn't uh, see one of them anymore. And when I turned them off, one paralleled me for maybe uh, 10 miles. And then uh, he headed off in, a, in the uh, northwesterly directions, and I figured that's the last I would see of him. And uh, at that time, he came back uh, across to my uh, 12 o'clock position within the speed of... Uh, like you would just flip your fingers and he was there. Only thing, the lighting system had completely changed. Uh, it was like uh, somebody had just turned their headlights on. And the lights were uh, extremely bright. In fact, it got so close it just scared the hell right out of me. Any estimate of distance between you and the object? I would say it was within uh, a mile, but the light intensity was so light I never saw an object. Uh, at this time, I had questioned uh, L.A. Radar, who we had gone to at that time at least a half a dozen times for some target information. And uh, near the end, and especially when this thing came at my 12 o'clock position very dejectedly, or not dejectedly, but very firmly, they just said, look, Golden West, we have no targets, you have no targets, there's nothing in your area but you. And uh, this whole sequence of events uh, all was uh, probably uh, 15 minutes. Okay. When that object made a, uh, or the light made a close approach and it became very brilliant, did it illuminate the inside of the uh, cabin at all? No. Okay. No, it did not. In fact, uh, this thing uh, stayed, stayed, I would say, uh, at our 12 o'clock position uh, uh, for maybe uh, 30 seconds, maybe 40 seconds, and it just maintained exactly the same relative position to us. And then this thing, uh, it just uh, took off in an easterly direction in front of us. And uh, within a matter of seconds, he, uh, it, it just left, disappeared. And, yes. And that was it. Uh, I saw, uh, to explain this a little better, the lighting system, I saw the movie uh, 
uh, shortly thereafter called Close Encounters. Oh, yes. And the way I can describe the lighting system is in the beginning of that movie, these objects come from all the coast or whatever it was inland, and the lighting system was, it was as though the movie was taken from what I saw. Uh-huh. Kind of a haze in front of the lights. Right. And uh, extremely bright. And the thing that uh, scared the hell out of me, there's just no way that whatever that thing was could move with the intensity and the speed that that thing came to my 12 o'clock position. Okay. Did you have radar aboard? No, we did not. Okay. Did you have any problems uh, with uh, electronics or instruments while that thing was close by? No, not that we noticed. Okay. We were, uh, for uh, probably uh, the last five minutes of this uh, flight, uh, we were both, in fact, I can't even remember how I got from one place to the other, but it was, uh, my interest was so intent on watching that thing that I can sure that was it. Yes. But, uh... I didn't know this until uh, just about five days ago, but the controller, the man, I think his name is at uh, Magoo Radar, uh, he did file a UFO report on it. Yes. And uh, after I got to L.A., I called him back on the telephone and talked with him about it, and uh, he had, he said, in that area for approximately three to four hours, there were three or four objects of which uh, they were... Uh, just, uh, they couldn't, he couldn't identify them once in a while he had them, and then he wouldn't. And uh, there was another airplane, a small one, who identified some, as he told me, some, some strange lights. And uh, when I talked to him, he just wanted a confirmation of what I'd seen in my experience. And uh, that was kind of the end of our conversation. Okay. Uh, while you were watching this, was there, did you hear any other radio chatter from other aircraft that might have seen it? No, I didn't. Okay. Was this object, is, uh, your estimate, uh, on the close approach, uh, was it quite large? Uh, the way that the lights were, when they turned to this bright amber color uh, right in front of me, uh, if I were to guess the size, uh, I'd say it had to be something in the size of maybe... Uh, like a light would come from an airplane in the size of a 727 or something of that order. Okay. It had to be a, a larger object. Okay. Did you experience any buffeting while this was going on? None at all. Okay. All right, sir, uh, could we get your mailing address? Sure. Would there be any chance of getting the uh, name of your uh, co-pilot? Okay. If we have anything to send to him, would it be okay to do it through you? Okay, great. Well, sir, we sure appreciate your cooperation regarding this. Hello, call from the Federal Aviation Administration Air Traffic Control Rapid City Regional Airport. We accept the charge. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, Hello. How are you doing today? Fine, thank you. Hey, I've got a uh, report from our approach. We've got uh, two aircraft, or what appear to be aircraft, in trail in the Rapid City area. It's been uh, pointed out as traffic to uh, some of our inbound aircraft. None of them have been able to see it, but it's been verified on radar, and uh, Denver Center also had it on radar with a speed of uh, starting out 
I don't know anything about it. Let me get to the watch supervisor if I can find it. Okay. Here just a minute ago. They get a hold of it right now. I don't know where he is. Uh, I don't know. And uh, I don't see anything on the log about it. Okay. What do you people get on duty there? Uh, we get off uh, about two more hours, a little over two hours. Oh, okay. Did I add them uh, call you when they come back in? Sure. That's uh, not an FTS number then. No, sir. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, I'll have them give a call here in just a second. Thank you very much. You have 4040, sir? Yes, this is Ray Apple Center calling. Yes, sir. And you called a few minutes ago, reference to report to some sort? Right. Uh, in reference to two objects unknown that were tracked on radar going over uh, eastbound over South Dakota, we wonder if you had uh, picked up anything on that. No, we had nothing on our no to the report this door. What time was this? What 
What was the location, do you know? Oh, okay, and they're returning back our way, huh? Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, we'll see you later. Thanks for calling. Bye. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, well, uh, I hope you find something out on that. Okay, thanks very much. You're welcome. Bye. Yes, sir. This is Phenomena Research again. Yes, sir. Could you give us an update on what's going on? Uh, we got a call from Denver. Our radar has completely uh, quit on us, and we can't find out the reason why. Uh -huh. uh, we've got maintenance men out here, and they, they can't seem to find a reason right now. Uh, uh, we just got a call from Denver a few minutes ago that uh, they had tracked these uh, targets back into our area. So, uh, you know, we're just we're sitting here blind, and I understand from the people over at Rapid City that their weather radar has quit on them now. Right. Uh, I just talked to our weather people. They said they haven't been paying that close of attention, but, you know, they haven't noticed anything like you did with theirs in the last, uh, you know, that's not saying that it won't. I, I really don't know. It's, uh, it's very unusual. Okay, has Denver given any estimate of speed on these things? Uh, no, I have. Uh, let me get my uh, assistant here on the line and she'll check and see what they've got. Okay. Go ahead. It's, it's uh, very strange to say the least. Okay, have you heard from NORAD regarding any military operations? Yes, sir, I sure have. I talked to uh, the local division here, the 24th Air Division. Uh, they have absolutely no aircraft in this area anywhere within, you know, five or six hundred miles. Uh -huh. In fact, the 24th uh, region has no airplanes whatsoever. Uh, I talked to NORAD uh, at, uh, yeah, you know, in Colorado, and uh, they had uh, no knowledge of anything in this area. And they didn't admit of any trackings at all? Uh, no, sir, uh, no. neither would the uh, 24th. Yeah, well, of course, if you probably wouldn't anyway, but... Yeah, I, uh, called him back a second time to ask him if they would look in this area, and he said that they had absolutely... Okay, uh, I'll let you talk to the person you'll talk to uh, Denver and uh, give, her, give you her explanation of what they said. Okay, thank you. Okay, I just talked to Denver, and Denver has no estimate of the speed. They had their radar set on 200 mile range and said the targets were really jumping across their scope on um, 200 mile range, so they had to be moving fast, but they have no estimate of the speed. Uh -huh. Okay. And Denver is not picking them up right now. Pardon me? Denver has no radar with them right now. They're not picking them up. Just out of curiosity, what do you think it is? I mean, I know what I think it is, and, uh, but, you know, uh, I can't say anything about them, but what, do you have any, do you think it's, uh, anything unusual? Well, of course, we always, uh, um, you know, lean to the possibility that this could be classified as a UFO. Yeah. Uh, whatever an individual wants to believe UFOs are, and, uh, but, uh, the thing that really uh, makes it a, a good mystery is the fact that your radar went out on you the way it did. Yeah, our radar and uh, the weather radar were rapid city. Because we've had cases before, they're not a, a frequent thing, but we have had cases before where the so-called UFO was being tracked and uh, all the radar went went out on them. Yeah. Well, I tell you, it, it sure fooled us. And, uh, you know, we're sitting here and then... Uh, the thing that was unusual about it, okay, uh, we didn't tell you this before, but we had a uh, Cessna 310 coming from the south, the complete opposite direction of what the, the airplanes that were targets that went east. Uh -huh. All right, we got this one aircraft coming up in the south from Denver, and uh, we started telling him about where these planes were because we picked up two more that were right in his area. And we started telling him about where these things were at and asking him to look for them. And just shortly after we started asking him to look for them is when we lost that radar. Okay, we had a case the other night where a pilot was flying from, 